very warm welcome back to the Hoi An Golf Resort and Casino here in Hoi An, Vietnam. He's Randy Liu, I'm Henry Kilvane, and we are back for day three of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in Vietnam. It is day two of event number two, the 15K, but Randy, yesterday was all about the GG Super Millions 25K. I know you were in the booth alongside myself for the better part of that final table, got to see a good friend of ours and an OG of the Triton series, Webster Lim, get the dub late into the evening yesterday in that 25K. Yeah, and he, you know, he fought hard. He came in as a chip lead and just really cruised his way to that top to cement that win. And, you know, that was his first no limit hold'em Triton trophy. He had a short deck trophy before. Mm. And, yeah, he, he went he went to bed with a trophy t that <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were showing us just off air the Instagram post of Webster, just, uh, just the trophy in the hotel bed saying not sleeping alone tonight. But, yeah, definitely, you know, love to see. And it wasn't, it wasn't an easy field, you know. It, firstly, it was a record-breaking field, uh, 166 runners in a 25K. kind of feels pretty ridiculous given that it was event number one. People still showing up late because of missed flights, because of jet lag, not playing. So to smash that record um, and then have one of the OGs of the Triton series come out on top also adds a second trophy to his record, which we were discussing yesterday on air, kind of separates you from from everyone else in the in the sense that you prove that the first one wasn't a fluke. Yeah, and it, you know, it definitely not. We know he's a great player. Um, as our field sizes get even bigger, it means even more, right? Getting that second title is so much harder to navigate through 166 players. Um, and you know, Triton's just getting bigger and bigger. And you know, it's, it's good to see one of the OGs like Webster take it down. You know, he's been playing these uh, Triton events, you know, back in Montenegro and Jeju, and you know, several years ago. And it's it's nice. Yeah, love to see it. So, I mean, 32 players made it through to that day too. So we had a long old coverage of Webster's win. Uh, 23 places paid with a min cash of 48,200, I believe. Only eight players made it down to the official final table with a simultaneous elimination of Mario Mosbach and Alex Kulov that I wasn't actually in the booth for. Wow, like madness, what happened there? Yeah, so we were down to 10-handed. We had five players and five players on two separate tables. And on the same exact first-hand dealt, both players did bust in a cooler situation when as short stacks. And because they bust on hand one at the exact same time, what it didn't matter what stack they busted with. Mm -hmm. They just combined the prize pool of those two oh, sweet. stacks and just divided by two, which is fair. You know, because you can see sometimes you try to wait out the other table, but we're kind right. of more of in a hand-for-hand -hand situation. Love that. Well, we're going to jump into the final table breakdown. I'm going to kick things off with our eighth place elimination of Jonathan Jaffe. After having a couple of great scores in Cyprus, he's started things off incredibly well here in Vietnam, but unfortunately running his final 16 bigs into the kings of Seth Davies. Seth way out in front, four to one favorite to knock out a very tough opponent in Jaffe. Let's see the queen at nine six. Did leave Jaffe with some potential back doors, but the ace of diamonds on the turn left him drawing to just two outs once. And the ten of spades sealed his face. Jaffe out in eighth for 121,000. Next to bow out was none other than Triton regular APT CEO, Mr. Michael Soizer. Again, his final 14 big blinds in the middle with ace, jack, a spade, seven-handed. Feels a bit feels a bit harsh, Randy, not going to lie. Cut off V button, running into the ace, queen of clubs of Nick Petrangelo, queen high flop and a six of spades on the turn, leaving him drawing it dead. Down to the final six. See, see here, Jiang just open jamming on the button with the ace five of diamonds. Standard stuff all around. And Webster Lim, the overwhelming chip leader at the time, just gets to click call with the king jack. King in the window, but ace in the kitchen, giving, see, the best of it on the ace king eight. The Queen of Clubs on the turn, presenting four additional outs to Webster Lim. The Jack of Diamonds on the river, improving him to two pair. And 
Love to see the old double taps and smiles from Cecilia. The overwhelming chip leader, Webster Lim, just riding the wave. Waking up with the jacks, a spot where our chip leader should be opening incredibly wide. Can't fault Nick Petrangelo for taking the spot for 18 bigs with the ace nine of clubs, given that he's just going to get so many folds. Fortunately, running into top of a range, Webster just getting to click all in, and Nicky P obviously committed with the ace nine of clubs. Going to the river, looking for an ace and an ace only. It did not present itself, Queen of Diamonds. And with that elimination, Nick Petrangelo getting Monkey off of his back, cashing for 286,000. Next to bow out was none other than Seth Davies. Got it in good, that's all you can ask for in No Limit Hold'em, especially in tournaments. Button v Small Blind. Got it in with the nines against Pocket Eights. Eight in the window for Chris Brewer as the No Mullet Brewer heat wave continues here in Vietnam. Flopping a set, did have Davies live to a set and straight draw himself, but the board pairing on the river, giving Brewer a full house and bringing us down to our final three players. And it was none other than Mr. Mulletless, if you will, to bow out next as Rabbits basically put Brewer in. As Brewer had a massive blow to his stack in a previous entanglement against Webster Lim where he bluffed off with a busted straight draw running into the trips of Webster Lim. This one got knuckled down all the way to the river and Brewer found himself dead on the ten of diamonds turn. Rabbits just kind of letting Webster potentially catch up if he needs to in order to eliminate Brewer, given that there was, of course, a 218,000 pay jump between third and second. And the hand that sealed it for Webster Lim wasn't the final hand, but it was the most talked about hand of the final table. Webster with the three and a half X ISO from the big with the trashy Jack 3-0. Ended up flopping middle pair and the Jack high flush draw on the 9-3 deuce. Opted to slide it on over to Rabbits who actually picked up equity on the six of spades turn. And given they picked up equity, opted to fire not once, not twice, but three times. 2.5 million into 4.6. Just seven high and a gut shot board pairing on the Niner Clubs River. A lot of the obvious draws bricking in the form of the one heart type holdings that Webster potentially check call, check call, check fold on this board pairing river. And Travitz effectively jamming, leaving himself just 225,000 chips behind, putting Webster Lim into a really tough spot. Ended up using three of his time extensions, flicked in. The old one chip flick in to scoop a massive 20 million chip pot and to, more importantly, Randy, have his opponent down to just half a blind. Didn't take too long. It took less than a hand for it to be over and done with. Webster just putting him in with the king 10-0, queen, queen six. Deuce of Hearts on the turn, removing one of Ravitz's outs and the Ace of Hearts for dessert. Webster with the nut flush on the river. Handshakes all around. Great to see it was such a strong performance, obviously, from our first timer here, but it was ultimately one of the Triton OGs. Webster Lim taking down the 25k GG Super Millions Live Edition for 965,000, Randy. That that final table, man, I think that's uh, set the standard and the bar very high for the rest of this series. Yeah, and did you see how many people was in that winner's photo? Like, it was just all of the Malaysian contingent, all of their friends have been playing all these trying events, and some even some players who don't play that much either. It was just phenomenal. The energy was really lively. They were cheering him the most on when they got the seat draw. They were cheering him the most when he actually shipped it. Love it. And it makes a lot of sense, right? Given the, the history, he's been here for a long time. He's 
close friends, not just at these Triton series, but away from the festivals. You know, there, there are a lot of friendships out there that we as spectators of the sport are unaware of. And to see them show up and, you know, maybe a bit of, you know, 1% here or 2% swap <laughs> here. You never know what kind of incentives, but let's just say, you know, for argument's sake, uh, just there for morale and to support their good friend. And, and, and Webster did actually, you know, go on in his interview to get, you know, pretty emotional. It was his first event uh, since the passing of Ivan Liao back in Cyprus and he even said, you know, without Ivan, he wouldn't even be here at these Tritons, you know, whether it be the byproduct of sharing resources to improve their poker games or just, you know, chatting hand histories on breaks. You would always see Ivan Webster and their crew just hanging out and just, you know, supporting each other in any way that they could. So he did, you know, get a bit emotional and it makes a lot of sense that, he, you know, Joins, joins the same club as Ivan, you know, two-time champion now. And I, mm. I think that's a lovely way to start off uh, Vietnam. Um, Roman Rabbits, second place finish in his maiden event. Is there a new generation, a new type of player that these old school guys now have to be mindful of, fearful of even, given that we've got these young guns now showing up, competing in these 25Ks and kind of making a name for themselves in event number one. I mean, you see our numbers are growing over and over. They don't just come from nowhere. These are guys that have been crushing online poker. They see other regs, other peers coming out to play, but they didn't show up this time, maybe in Cyprus in the last stop. And guys like Roman coming out, and there's just many more. You mentioned that you know, the Alex Kulov was out there. who's mm. one of these crushers who did not play any Triton event prior, but it's coming out, uh, cash, got a cash in the event number one. We're going to see more of these hap more of these guys come out. We're going to yeah. see more from all parts of the world, and I just can't wait till we have the finale where everyone's just here in one spot. Yeah, I, I, I really want like a, an evenly split final table of like four rookies and four of the old school <laughs> guys. Because Roman, look, he came up against the Triton Reg Heavy final table, managed to navigate his way to second place for 635,000. Uh, one of the Triton veterans, if you will, that he came up against was none other than Nick Petrangelo, who managed to finally get that monkey off mm -hmm. of his back, Randy, after 23 events. You know all too well as a professional poker player what variants can look like in cash games, let alone in tournaments like this where, you know, you get down to your final 20, 15 bigs and it comes down to the flip of a coin. So do you think that's going to be a big one for Nick Petrangelo or is it just another day in the office? I mean, it's a big one because we saw this happen to Seth Davies before too where he couldn't get any cashes, but then back in Cyprus, he just seemed to final table every single event. I think the same thing is going to happen for Nicky P, and we've got many more Nolman events to come this trip. That's true. Speaking of Seth Davies, has been on an absolute tear since getting said monkey off his back in Madrid, closing the gap slightly on Stephen Chidwick now in the Ivan Liao Player of the Year points series. Closing it very narrowly, Stephen Chidwick still 12 events to add more points to his already impressive resume. But again, talking of impressive, Randy... 166 entries in that 25k, a record that we didn't think was going to get broken anytime soon. We're now diving in to a new record-breaking event in the form of this 15k event number two. Yeah, we had even more people fly out and, you know, it's just, it's incredible. 166 was incredible, 172 even better. I'm I'm really excited. You know, we've got these new school players coming out, OGs, uh, just all sorts of works. And we get to commentate on all, every single one of these events. It's a <laughs> delight, do. really, right? And just seeing how these styles will clash. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited, man. I mean, the 15K after 16 grueling levels went from 172 down to just 37 players bagging and tagging for the night. 600k up top, 23 places paid. So we're coming back to one of my favorite parts of the tournament, which is, you know, the soft bubble. Everyone's rested. Everyone's got their eyes on that top prize. But it's the bubble that we've got to get ourselves through with 23 places laid, uh, paid. rather. Uh, Ponikov's chip leader, forced to be reckoned with, one of the rec uh, regulars here at the Triton Series and just a world-class player as we check out the main feature table on our app. Do apologize. Uh, Alex Ponikovs out in front, Nacho Barbero in second, Tan Schwan in third, but have a look at Mr. Linus Love in fourth, so what's in fifth? A lot of crushers rounding out the top 10. We're gonna be jumping into 
what I can only tease is table number two with some big names in the form of Chidwick, Mulocker, Tang, and Barbero as we throw it on down to the main feature table for what I can only expect is going to be an action-packed day of No Limit Hold'em poker. Ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in. It is event number two of this Triton Super High Roller Series here in Vietnam. And it is the Argentinian, Nacho Barbero, who has been making a bit of a name for himself the last year and a half, two years in other series, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. First time, I do apologize, he did play the 20K in Madrid. Uh, but only played the 20k, didn't play yeah, any other events. So maybe looking at a first full series for Nacho. Yeah. As we dive into the action at this feature table. Chidwick, Mulocker, Strava, Barbero, Dien, So, Tang, and Bong. Danny, you been here before? This place? In this hotel? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, twice. There's so, there are good things to do or not? Around. Mm. Or you put the car. What do you like good things? <laughs> you know what I mean. I think Nacho asking his table mate, Danny, if there are good things to do here, Randy. I mean, he should just ask us. Yeah. We went out for, a, for what I can only call a from? spectacle Vietnam. this morning. Hong Kong? Hong Kong? <laughs> yeah. walked, walked down to the ocean and uh, saw a very rare sighting. Don't know how aggressively I want to lean into this <laughs> sighting that we saw. Let's just say, uh, if you don't believe in mermaids, Persian mermaids at that come down to the ocean front around 11 30 local time and you may just see a wild ali Najad flailing about being dragged left and right by the currents and waves Can I have a Americano ice quite the sight thank you we still got them though that's the good part yeah the lifeguard wasn't thrilled <laughs> john so pocket sixes things off from the hijack of 30 bigs. Actually got three people from Hong Kong sit back to back to back. Ace 10 for Chidwick. He's sitting on 16 blinds, hijack open. Definitely a spot he could strongly consider reshoving. Would want to check out the stack size and the tendencies of the player who is opening and he indeed Jam it is. Stephen Chidwick. Come, please. Taking the 17 big blind rejam spot from the small blind. This is annoying, right? Two sixes. It's like, it's not the smallest price. You do got a pocket pair. We know Chidwick will be shoving better pocket pairs here in this, like sevens, eights, nines, tens. For sure. Definitely going to be jamming better pocket pairs. Also, you know, John yesterday at the feature table very honestly just kind of letting everyone know that you know he doesn't play full time and he was leading into the fact that he does deem himself a recreational and, and maybe that information a byproduct of this jam from mm -hmm. Chidwick, uh, who maybe feels like the open uh, the opening range that will then fold to any aggression is gonna be, you know, a lot right. higher from John. Yeah. Not gonna cool off with, you know, the king queens the sevens the sixes of the world mm -hmm. yeah and if that's the case then jamming is even more profitable as you have more forward equity so stevie getting one through looking to add some points to that ivan liao player of the year leaderboard uh, he finds himself at the top of the counts just see on Table number one, early elimination of Sam Greenwood. 
knocked out by none other than Jans Ahrens. Alright, so Chidwick. He's got the two season regs behind him. 10 6 suited. Gonna lay it down. Gives him a lot of respect. Actually, I was actually looking at the stack size of Strava. The big blind only got four blinds. As it's been dealt, it seems like these two are gonna get it in. Yeah, Jack 10 for Mulocker. Wushu. Gonna put Strava in and Strava just gets the click call. But not only does he get to click call, Randy, he gets to see that he's got Wushu in rough shape. Dominating Mulocker's Jack 10. Five to come. A lot of short stacks out there looking to get busy sooner rather than later. Good out, King on the flop does now give Mulocker an additional out. Goes from three outs to four to picking up a gut shot. Looking for a queen and a queen only to knock out Strava. Oh, no, that's wow. a queen. Queen of spades, corner pocket. Everyone think? at the table felt that one, us included in the booth. Strava with the double tap. GG announced. <laughs> I'll get the juices flowing first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Thank you. Uh, come. Warm welcome to all of our viewers joining us from the get go over on YouTube and Twitch. GM, GM, GM. Or maybe good evening. I mean, depending on where these guys are tuning in from. If you're out West Coast, it's like 11, 11 p.m. on Thursday. Yeah, they're going to stay committed all night with us. Do you think there's anyone currently watching this from, like, the Aria or the Wynn? <laughs> like, they're, like, grinding right now. Is there yeah. anyone out there grinding in Vegas or L.A. or Miami? Just anywhere in America right now, at a poker table, playing cash with this streamer. Let us know. Yeah, you're not allowed to stop the stream, stop playing until our stream is over. In the wee hours of the night. Check with Ace 10 again. Positions are a bit different. Under a gun has opened. Playing full table, he's going to lay it down. You can see the differences based on what, where the open raise is coming from. Yeah, 100%. Different situation, different stack depth. Van Dien just getting one through. Papi saying, hey, Henry. Hey, Randy. How's it going, Papi? Ashton saying it's 12 a.m. here. Well, good evening to you. 2.23 a.m. in Florida. Jeremy saying SoCal here. <laughs> so boring. How about Apple Watch? <laughs> All right, Danny's bored, is he? He's bored. Because he's not allowed his phone. Wow. No one responded, too. <sighs> These Zoomers. Well, doesn't seem he's got a boring hand. He's going to open it up. Cards hidden, but we'll get those shortly. Danny Tang with the Jack Tanner Hearts. Got to be high up on the 
prettiest looking hand that you can be dealt in sure No Limit Hold'em, right? Yeah. Jack 10. He didn't talk anymore after he said that things were boring when he was dealt this hand, so I think he agrees. Dominated situation. Both players inside, well, one player open-ended, one inside straight draw. We're definitely going to see some continuation. Danny Tang raising from early position represents those big cards a little bit better. Got the backup. And he's going to continue in the form of 150,000 into 220. Sizable continue. Plus one, the big blind makes a ton of sense on the king, queen, four, right? Yeah. Uh, opening from early position, Randy. He did size up for sure. And that kind of disincentivized ace 10 from continuing a bit more, but he's still going to come along. Looking for that jack. Maybe an ace. It's the five of diamonds. The brickiest turn cards in the deck. I wonder what Danny's intentions are with that bigger flop bet size on how to play the turn. He's got slightly over pot. He might feel he's narrowed down the check calling range a bit more with the bigger bet size. Of course, if he was to make a big bet now and be targeting Queen X. That's a really awkward stack depth, right? 680 behind, 520 in the middle. It's going to try and realize his equity. And well, finds a pair on the river, but said pair has given Van Dien the nut straight. Comes out firing. Puts a small bet out there, it, despite the strain of his hand, figuring if Danny had a good hand, with that stack size on the turn, he probably would have kept on betting. So he's thinking that Danny's got, at best, a one pair bluff catching type hand. You m you would expect Ace King, you know, King Jacks to bet the turn a lot from Danny's point of view. So I think it's pretty good recognition on where his opponent is most likely standing with his holdings. Yeah, a bit of a shaky hand as well as those two hundred twenty-five thousand chips. Mm. And it's in the middle. Understandable. One of the biggest stages in poker. Yeah, and this I too would be his first Triton series, I believe, for Lee Van Dien. You can check that from the app. Yeah, this is his first stop. Did play the event number one, did not cash. Just not used to the bright lights. No, no, not at all. And uh, yeah, it's very easy to forgive. I keep forgetting how I'm using my phone. Hmm? <coughs> I keep forgetting how I'm using my phone. <laughs> so boring to play. On table one, talk, interact with people. I interact, bro. You know, but nobody just says a word. Just looking now, Arthur. Arthrosian has been eliminated by Linus Love, who is now the overwhelming chip leader with 33 left. Linus now up to 3.5 million after cracking Arthrosian's pocket kings on a Jack 10 8 board with 9 10 of clubs, natural 9. I have no clue. It's the first time I come. You I can't unsee that knew, natural nine, right? I was oh, sure. Is it a natural nine or a natural ten? Sure Na a natural ten, really. All right. I, but I'm not I, I assume that it's not. A <laughs> it's not a thing. Like you're it's not a thing? Speech. No, it's not. Right. Na natural nine it is then. So <laughs> it's the other way around, so I'm not offended. <laughs> I, I didn't come too many times to Asia. This is my, this is my third time. No, actually, I, came, I went five times to Japan. Okay, we'll let the viewers decide. Does Vietnam have their own language? Is that, is that a bad comment or not? I'm not offended though. I'm fine. I wasn't trying to eat. <laughs> I know you're not, man. But, but I, I get it all the time. Everybody thinks we speak uh, Portuguese. If I'm from Argentina. I mean, but like nobody knows if they speak, what, what we speak in my in Argentina. You speak that's Spanish, a, mate. That's a, that's no, a fair that, fact. I, 
Bro, no, trust probably me, some people trust do me, get in America, yeah. really. In America, half of the people have no clue what I speak. 50%, they have no idea what we speak. I mean, they, they get confused. They don't know if it's Portuguese or something. I don't know. But in Taiwan, they speak Chinese. Mandarin? Yeah, but because Taiwan's part of China. I know that. Yeah. That I knew. But in Hong Kong, they also speak... They speak uh, Hong Kong also, actually. But there are other countries that they speak Mandarin or Cantonese. That besides yeah. Which ones? Let's just play on. I knew there are more countries that speak. That's why I'm, I'm asking. Maybe this was one of those. I can't tell the difference. Quite the conversation, <laughs> discussion going on between Danny and Nacho. I believe. Where are you from? That being a byproduct of Nacho asking yeah. Danny, what of language course, do you speak is. in Hong Kong? I would highly recommend the Triton app. Have you have you had a look at it? I love I it. it before. I love it. I'm gonna go yeah. all the time. It's, it's a bit far though. <laughs> you can use your phone outside. <laughs> I know. No, Check but I, flags. I was I was in Wyoming, so to come here it was a nightmare. It was from Wyoming. It was a storm in Wyoming, and then there are not too many flights that live there, so I have to do Wyoming, Salt Lake City, Salt Lake, San Fran, San Fran, Taipei, Taipei, Dana. Hello. Hello. Oh. For you, how many hours it is? It's like an hour, an hour and a half to two hours. That's Direct good. flight, yeah. This place is great. <laughs> I spent I spent thirty five hours. Ago. Thirty five hours, eight thousand dollars on the ticket. The shed lag. Chatty table to kick things off with, mm -hmm. Randy. Yeah, can't complain. Makes our lives a lot easier. I love Hong Kong. So nice. You've been there before? Yeah. The best. What's your What's your like favorite go-to spot in Hong Kong? I don't know. I only been once. Uh, yeah, but I think the city is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I, but it was a long time ago. Uh, like. I went to Macau, then, then I went. Ah, no wonder. But I didn't like Macau. I you love Hong Kong. I hated it. What? Mm. I hated Macau. Like yeah. You come over next time, we bring you around. Maybe you, you had changed your mind about Macau. No, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe. You know, like local places that's like... Yeah, okay, you're right. Maybe I just didn't like... Yeah. You just didn't know because you're like a tourist. No, I didn't like that everybody's smoking everywhere. Like, I mean, like... It was, I felt like, obviously the restaurants were amazing, all two mm. stars, three stars, Michelin. I love that, and I love food. Mm -hmm. But I just, I mean, I prefer way more Vegas and Macau. Uh -huh. Way more. Not even compared. You don't prefer Vegas? No. What? No one near. Oh I prefer God, Macau you're... way more. <laughs> what? Way more. You're crazy. What do you prefer, you're Andy? Crazy. Macau, Vegas, Vegas indifferent. Oh, yeah, I think I'm indifferent. It's, okay. it's a free interview, Nacho. We don't that. need to run one anymore. Dude, I never see you there. Wow, for the World Series. Is that like a million? I think I'll go this year. <laughs> Chat popping off over some of the conversations at the table. But another way you can pop off is by getting involved over on pokerstake.com. Randy's laughing at me for almost messing that one up. But chat, I've been speaking about it all week already. Pokerstake.com. Just, I don't know. Do you like to bet on sports that you watch every now and then? I personally am not, but I know a lot of people do. It, it does make things more exciting. It does. It makes a lot of sense that you'd be you know, picking the players you think is going to ship this tournament. 
I love what they're doing, and they, they're really making it an exciting way to sweat along at these Triton events. You know, we've got the Triton Poker Plus app, so even if the players that you've bet on aren't necessarily at the table, you can still sweat the action in the updates. Um, and yeah, just like spin up some money by investing into these world-class players. Or, if you're like Ali, uh, you can actually buy action of the players that you actually despise and hate. <laughs> just so that if they do go on to win, you at get least a there's, bit of happiness. Yeah, it's like a little sliver of silver lining. As we welcome El Matador, Mr. Adrian Mateos, to our feature table. Hong Kong. <laughs> I have to say Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Not stay home much? Yeah, never. <laughs> really, even when I'm in Hong Kong, I'm not at home. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, YouTube and Twitch chat remain undefeated. So expensive, Hong Kong. You saying, bro, just get Linus on the feature table. Um, no. That is so nice. Just, just deny them. No. Linus... Oh, literally came up to us and said, hey guys, I'll see you on the final table. Before that, if anyone asks, let them know that I'm getting busy on the outer tables. And he's now chip leader. So, I mean, you can still follow his hands through the po Triton Poker app. You can. That's how we saw that he busted uh, Arthur Martirosian. Exactly. Back to some poker. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while. It's been a while. We've been listening about you know, how they actually speak Spanish in Argentina and not Portuguese, uh, which I understand is maybe a common misconception given that in Brazil they speak Portuguese and not Spanish. So. I said back to the poker. Anyway, <coughs> come on. <laughs> queen Jack v King Queen v Queen 10. All the queens are out there. Queen high flop one time dealer. For max entertainment value, I don't think we're going to get to see. I think this is going to be whether he wants to three bet, put pressure on rather than flat. Let's yeah. see. He's taking it upstairs. Says all of it, pretty much. 820,000 to go. Nicely done. Got several reshoves in there. Chidwick. So a couple of rejam spots for Chidwick within the first orbit of play. As him slowly climbing up the counts. Do you think they will have finds himself 11th in chips overall. 32 oh. remain, 23 yes. paid. One VIP here loves to play PL. Oh, let's go. Yeah. But because none of us do, so no point setting that up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody plays PLO. <laughs> we set up for Nacho. <laughs> yeah. Nobody plays PLO. Rob Young plays. He's coming. Yeah. He's coming on the fifth. Bro, Holden is so boring, gosh. What do you guys play? Short deck mostly or Holden? Both. 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 I used to play all day short back for two Hold years. Hold deep is not boring. I play mix all day. Very big mix. Playing, going back to play two cars. So boring. Play mix and PLO all day. <coughs> hey, shout out Will Jaffe. Yeah, if he's a good game, straight from a lot live of the bike. Action. Legend. Welcome to Triton Super High Roller Series, dude. So we got a blind, blind situation. Some deep stacks. 7 5 offsuit. Is it reasonable enough to maybe take a flop? It's 3x. You know, he's pretty comfortable. He's going to lay it down. Said something. A Wushu against Mateos. Story old as time. Those two have thousands and thousands of hands against each other. Tens and thousands. Yeah. So it's cool to see like these guys who play online all the time. 
Let me see him battle in the live felt. Seems like the ultimate arena. That's the one thing I really loved about event number one is, you know, we've obviously all watched the GG Super Million streams online. Mm -hmm. More often than not, you're this watching these right? screen names go to war, you know, before you get to the final table. And then yesterday, we just yeah, have, you know, all these legends show up and you just get, get to just see them in the mix. Real names. No hiding behind the computer screen kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Elki did promise that he he is genuinely taking dance classes right now, so that <laughs> so he can do the live version. He that's what he said to me. He said it to me and Ali that he's gonna do the dance next time round. So <laughs> we shook hands on it. Two ninety. All right. So Adrian Mateo says three bet pocket tens. Small blind versus button. No, do it, Nacho. No, he's not going to do it. Suited king, but not ideal. There's history brewing. You can feel a little bit. Reigniting online. that online stuff. No, always bluff, because before you play, make a side forward. Yeah. I'm sure, this is like this is a little bit like wide area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, I don't know. 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 Uh, okay. 2.1. 2.1. Okay. You? 1.8. Pocket 8s. Lucky hand, eh? Probably gonna open rip it. He's playing... No, he's actually gonna raise. 12 and a half blinds. I guess you can see it both ways. Yeah, I mean, Danny's good enough to mix in some, some like ace eights, ace nines, king nine, king tens that want to raise fold. Don't think he's raising to, to fold to a jam with the pocket ace, but we're well, about to find out. Yeah, I mean, ace queen seems like a good spot to jam. Opponent's playing 12 and a half Only blind. You got fold equity. Here we go. Here we go, indeed. You're right. Danny Tang. My lucky eights. <laughs> lucky eights for eight 12 more. and a half bigs. <laughs> Just nine off the money here at the Huana Golf Resort and Casino in Huan, Vietnam. Looking to hold and get back up to 25 bigs, but queen in Seven. the window. Leaving Danny with just 13% equity drawing to running straight cards. Yeah. That well, is one of them. That is yeah. definitely one of them as he goes Pretty from two number. outs to I ten. Send me the turn home. of a card. Send me home. Yep. No <laughs> dice. Yeah, yeah. Queen of Spades. Improving Van Dien to trips as we lose Danny Tang. <laughs> Nine off the money. <laughs> Well, lose Nacho's chatting partner. So Linus came back to today with uh, 2.1, I believe. I know he won like a triple up at the end of the night yesterday. Oh, was that at the end of the night yesterday? Was yeah, it, it oh, was. Okay, he was he actually flatted Ace King. A short stack jam, about 11 blinds. Lycanin, reshove, sevens. Oh, Overhaul, 30 blinds with yeah. ace king. Triple up. Right, mm. that's the hand that I was just looking at, yeah. Yeah. And then straight off the bat, 
today eliminating Archer. Arthur Martyrosian in a three million chip pot. And he got in on a turn, I believe. What I did saw. Indeed. All of that can be viewed over on the Triton Poker Plus app, as always. Little baby suited connectors for Mateos. He's going to lay it down. Lee Van Dien from Vietnam. Local hero, maybe? Let's have a quick look. John So is going to bump up. King 5 suited. Thinks he's got the best hand. Charges his opponent for limping. Jack 8 is one of those hands where it's reasonable to consider continuing. A lot of stack to play for. Doesn't want to play out of position in a bloated pot, so he's going to lay it down. Found here on so much poker.com that Lee Van Dien has been traveling around the circuit here in Southeast Asia, playing like local high rollers and whatnot. So, no stranger to No Limit Hold'em tournaments, although this is obviously his first trip to a Triton series. Nothing else really coming up, so, a bit of an unknown player. In seat number two, well, Van Dien currently tied at the top of the counts with Nacho Barbero. Top three stack, not too bad. We're slowly approaching the money right now. Still a little bit of a ways, but play definitely may shift a little bit as we get a few more eliminations. end up saying, Henry, you're going to be playing March of the Series, mainly PLO. Well, we were talking about PLO earlier. Mm -hmm. Apparently there's a VIP here that only plays PLO. Is that you, Henry? <laughs> Are you the VIP? <laughs> Is that who Danny's referring to? Yeah, this is commentator. He's commentating on Nolan and Hold'em, but really, just got to get him in PLO. Play some PLO. You, uh, you let me know when you get in that game. Uh, if you need some bankroll, I might help you out. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Voting confidence from my co-commentator. <laughs> Is there a staking app I can use to get some action? I think, yeah, it's called pokerstake.com, mate. Check it out if you haven't already heard of it. Get some action up there. H how would I even market that on PokerStake? <laughs> it's like super private game that nobody knows about bar us uh, selling my left liver and <laughs> so you get a liver. 100Ks of action as well, just in case. Partial organs come and deliver to you. Yeah, okay. Oh, what a lineup right there. That's a murderer's row. Steven Chidwick, Thomas Mulocker, and Adrian Mateos. Suited connector. Blinds going up to 25k, 50k. Pairs now playing 36 at the start of the hand. Chidwick's got pocket threes in the big blind. Definitely could close the action. Might be crossing his mind if. Is there a world where maybe you could push it in, fold equity? Both plays seem 
a reasonable option. I think we tend to see calls a bit more, given how little the pair is. Yeah, against the plus one opening range for Mateos. You'd rather reshove on a late position open. Yeah, for sure. Chitwick's got to be somewhat concerned. Mateos isn't insanely deep, and he's also opening into two stacks that cover him behind as well. So we head to the ace-ace king. Knight-8 suit is a favorite, despite unpaired. So he's trying to determine, I guess, how many high card hands Mateos would have from undergun plus one. Of course, double counter counterfeit wouldn't be pleasant. It feels like you got to continue with two threes back door diamond, but uh, it's just uncomfortable. He just lays it down quickly. Yeah, Chidwick not looking to play the guessing game against El Matador across multiple streets there. Let yeah. go of the pocket threes. Ace, ace, king. Whoa. I like this shot. Looks like we're about to walk into a set of Michael Jackson's Thriller. <laughs> you're right. That, that smoke. And I know what you're talking about. Bright lights popping up there. That's pretty awesome. That's the first time I've seen that shot. Ken Wong in the chat saying Malaysian Webster Lim won the GG 25k Super Millions Live Edition. He did indeed. Out for 965, beating a oh, star studded final table. It's getting active here. 10 out of clubs. Seems to be involved in multiple pots lately. Nothing wrong with calling position of suited connector. Wait, hang on a minute. Oh, did he just go with queen four suited? Bong's had enough. So you know what, there's been a raise and a flat. There's extra dead money in the middle. Maybe one of my opponents is able to ISO. Ideally, he, yeah, he would like Barbaro to ISO. Get a heads up, increase his equity. In Such an awkward spot for Barbaro though. He might just, he might repop it to like 500k, something that will define Lee Van Dien's range. A flat is generally perceived as being weaker behind him. If he can just kick that guy out. I mean, is it perceived as weaker though? Like, I feel like at 40 effective, you're going to have a ton of traps from the hijack, given that there are. Yeah, so I suppose. Short stack jamming ranges like behind. How much does he want to risk to potentially find out? Looks like he's just going to call because he's a bit unsure. I'm going to play a three-way pot. Again, does put in the additional 150k. This is quite a bloated pot given the hands we've got. Uh, Bong, just making a stand. With the queen four of spades. Maybe maybe he knows something <laughs> we don't know. He saw this coming. Flush draw. Everyone's got a piece. It's a dry side pot. Looks like Barbaro is going to try to clear the field a bit. Just bets two big blinds into 900k. I mean, it's not going to shake middle pair. It's too good of a price. Boink on the turn. It's hard to know mm. if you're ahead or not right now for Barbaro. Like, you can see Lee Van Dien having like an ace-10, ace-jack. You can see him having 10-9, nine, 9-8. Nine, yeah. I think it's a bit of a guessing game. They started a side pot, so this is worth fighting for a little bit. Looks like one more coming in. Yeah, he's gone small, small. 250,000 into 1.1 million, and in the end, just going to let go of his middle pair. So 
Barbero in great shape to score a KO. Just needs to fade a spade on the river. Nine outs once for Bong. Okay. Oh. Nine. <laughs> How do he know? <laughs> Who just squeezes all in Queen 4 suited? Flops the flush draw, gets their three ways. He's down to just four and a half bigs. He's got a stack now. I mean, at least Barbero wants Stay some in chips in the side pot. Soften that blow a little bit. Field size. I've had some more eliminations from the outer tables. What do we got? Busted. Obviously, we saw Danny Tang part of this feature table. We have Kim Gabyong out in 31st. Salis Jedeminas out in 30th. Munacio out in 29th. So we're down to the final 28. We've got Mark Rubathan. Phil Nagy, Kiat Lee, all in the danger zone. All sub-10 bigs. Again, those of you that do have interest in the players on the outer tables, you can quite literally sweat along over on the app. See all of their hand histories. Lee Van Dien is back at it. Pocket fives. Flops best, kind of an annoying board with both hands. Ace of spades, important for Barbero. When someone flat calls you in position, it does feel a bit pocket pair heavy. Or at least when we saw him flat 10-9 suited too, so would be the type of board to smash him. King though, good card for Barbero. Yeah, we can see that a bet here should would get likely done. get rid of the fives. However, two-turn board, king, a somewhat scary card, given that the flop went check-check for Barbero as well, the king jacks, king queens of the world. Some clubs out there. Yeah, I guess that Lee Van Dien just thinking, check twice to me. Seems like fives are worthy of protection. Gets called by worse. Well, Van Dien's going to win this one at Showdown, Randy, unless Barbero... All right. He's going to win at Showdown. Van Dien with the sick value bet. You know, that's pretty, time. I, I mean, I haven't seen many players get value on a turn of pocket fives. Good on them. You know, the funny thing is if Nacho decided to throw a bet in there on a the turn, probably would have took it down. Sometimes it just depends on who gets to put in the aggression first that wins the pot. Twenty-three places paid. We find ourselves five off the money here. In event number two. Record-breaking 15k, 172 entries in this one. 600,000 for first. Bong Lo Kai's limp 96 suited in the hijack. Shadowick's thinking about maybe trying to attack this limp. Doesn't, doesn't like this multiple people behind him. No, I think we're 1.6. We're going to have a 45 minute in a break. He has around 1.7. Mm. 
Here, our tournament director Luca Vivaldi making a announcement given that the 20k mystery bounty is about to start. So, we'll be bringing you more coverage of that, obviously, at the completion of this 15k. Pretty excited for that. Like, I'm looking forward to it. It's our first that. mystery bounty at a Triton event. Yep. Uh, I've never actually played one, so I, I don't know the exact mechanics of it. I would love to be able to walk through that when we get there. Um, but that's just like one. There's at least one prize in it that's like super big, right? There typically is like a ridiculously big bounty, <laughs> and then you have you know your base level min bounty, and then like a couple of other like. Medium well, size we, saw, we saw Elk in earlier, and he was saying that he's going to play that event because he doesn't need to win the, he doesn't need the cash to make money. He's just going to bust someone and just hope he draws the lucky one. It's been done before, man. At other festivals, it's definitely been done before. Have you played one before? Online, yeah. And they're pretty fun, I imagine. They're, they're incredibly fun, yeah. It's a you want to bust out as many people to give yourself that chance to get those tickets as well as increase your chip stack. I think that's going to create some wild action for us after we wrap up this event. I just like the, also like the fact that Triton's always willing to try out some new formats, see if they yeah. stick or not. I'm pretty sure this one's going to stick, though. We'll obviously be giving you guys more updates on that. No idea what the top prize is going to be until late reg closes, obviously. That won't be for another seven, eight, nine hours or so. So something to look forward to. What yeah. do you want to guess? Should we, should we have a little bet in the booth? I, I really have no idea. I, I'm i going to go with... What do you think is reasonable for a big bet, or for a big prize? I'm going to say... Given the field size that we've we've had so far, so we had 166 in the 25k, we've got 172. Um, so it's a 20k. More people flying in. Use your calculator. Figure it out. I'm gonna say that I I reckon there's gonna be about one point. 1.5, 1.6 million in the bounty prize pool. Yep, that sounds about right. Would it be reasonable to assume that maybe 20% would be like the biggest bounty? So some, something like 250, 300,000? Yeah, Yeah, I think that's, that's yeah. a pretty sweet prize to get. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's what I'm going with. Quarter yeah. mil. 250,000, I think, yeah. is going to be the top bounty prize. But knowing Triton... We just might juice that one up. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Paul and... Half a mil? Maybe they just turn around and go, you know what, boys? Let's just like, yeah. Every, all of them, but one's a blank. How about just 1.5 mil? 500k. <laughs> the biggest one. Back to his hand real quick. It's a defense from Vietnam's Lee Van Dien. He's got picked up inside straight draw. Contemplating check raising. I wish you all the very best of luck. Yeah, more than half pot from Mateos on the Jack 4 trade. Van Dien not going anywhere with his gut shot and two overs to the 4 3. Take one off. Queen of Hearts on the turn, giving Mateos top pair. Well, it seems like. Good spot to go for some more value. Jack X, ace fives, ace deuces, ace these hands will check call. You know you're gonna be multi barreling if you, if you do pick up some draws on the turn. Might as well bet when you got it. Surely the gut shot 
gonna hit the muck now. I'd imagine. So if he's gonna continue, it'd have to be in the form of a check raise, but that seems rather committing given the stacks you got remaining. Does eventually let it go. Mateos up to 2.4 million now, slowly but surely working his way up the ranks just to give you guys some insight into that top three. You've got Linus Love out in first, McBoyfin in second, Adrian Mateos in third, Marcus Laconin. Obviously, for those of you that don't know who I'm referring to, is yeah. McBoyfin. Yeah, we saw him play a lot yesterday with Linus. It was a lot of fun, and he was making some crazy plays. Oh, dude, they have battled like yeah. online. They okay. have battled an insane amount. Regarded as one of the best heads up no limit players. Certainly is. I mean, both of them. Extremely good. And no limit hold them. And it's great to see. Like, you know, before, these guys, they wouldn't show up to these tournaments because they're like, oh, it's just, just another tournament. I think McBoyfin is. He's it's probably very, the best heads up no limit player in the world right now. I, I feel very. You're just gonna make it. a big statement. He's just literally number one. I I I think that. I mean, if anyone wants to, you know, fire out some other names, out, I'm not. So this is the thing. When when you give someone credit, mm -hmm. it's not a disservice to you know yes. the other guys out there that are battling. But in my opinion, I I think McBoyfin is is the best in the world right now. Well, he's certainly been playing a lot online lately. Heads up. Uh, with some, I believe, uh, Victor Kudanov. He's think he's in the in the field as well. Around a million. Showing up to Trident events. I know he's been playing him a lot. So, yeah, it's, it's just cool to see them taking it to the live belt as well. Well, what's happening here? John So with the re-jam from the big Chidwick. Got to mark his A straight. Blues Bruges is saying pretty reasonable take, I'd say, Henry. Yeah, he's uh, he's been out there. The streets love to see some of these online enigmas show up to these Triton series. I mean, I feel like Which Linus exclusively time? comes to Triton. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, we, we had Linus come out to Montenegro after a few stops happen, and he's been back ever like every single stop ever since. He played in, I believe, some cash games that was uh, streamed. <laughs> Did. It like, I feel like it was a million dollar buy in that one, um, if I remember correctly. But you can find that all over. You can find it through the Triton app. You can find it on the your socials, YouTube. On, yeah, just watch your best, your favorite players play. Do you remember that blog post that we stumbled across in Cyprus from Linus Love? from when he was like 18, 19, oh, right. grinding like 5 cent, 10 cent. And uh, I, I want to say there was like an entry for where he lost like $120. So like he lost like 12 buy-ins or something playing 5 cent, 10 cent and was uh, considering throwing in the towel on his poker journey. I'll tell you who's potentially going to be throwing in the towel on this one. Although this is under the gun v big blind. Maybe another raise fold for Chidwick. This one off of 18, 16 back. Like seven handed Eight feature. Five. You gotta remember though, he just saw this guy jam squeeze Queen 4, Queen 4, Queen 5 suited not too long ago. So it, what may seem like a clear cut fold may be swayed a little bit if it's on a cusp from. You, yeah. can you can see it looks like he wants to pitch it, but he's thinking about it. It's crossing his mind for sure. Yeah, this is obviously a much different setup under the gun view big blind. 16. I would say normally you would find this one in the muck. You can see that the wheels are turning for Chidwick. Just thinking. Is there a chance I'm way far ahead? Is he just rifled it in with Queen 4 suited again? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't dominate that. It's cr no, nothing wrong with taking your time and thinking about it. You don't want to be giving up a spot that could potentially be a huge edge. And then he just decided these positions are too strong. 
The big blind has a lot of incentive to just call rather than splash around these types of hands. Discipline. So did anyone offer us some other heads up names? Yeah, Barry's name got thrown into Very the mix. Sweet. Most known for its PLO. What, no, what about No Limit? Hold on, heads yeah. up players. Did we get any of those? Source. Sauce, haven't heard him in a while. Sauce's name was thrown in the mix. Um, the fairly sure Sauce is retired. Yeah, it's going to be hard to play when you're retired. Well, you could just do... Come back for a challenge. Like a Tiger Woods. Like a Michael Jordan. I got you button clicker. You like button clicker? Button clicker, yeah. Mainly because he shares my name. <laughs> Both online and in real life. Henry, it's out in Vegas. Where were we out in Vegas? Uh, so many amazing restaurants in Vegas, I always forget. But no, he, he was out in Vegas doing a little trip in, in America. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. He was playing high stakes cash games on streams. I did see some of that. I'd love to see him at one of these events. That that's someone that I would love to see, but give it time. They make oh, their way. Dude, he's he's like twenty one, twenty two. <laughs> John So is going to open up King 10 off Super Broadways. Bit of a stalemate on the outer tables. Yeah, things are slowing down a bit as they're really close <laughs> to the money. Yeah, four of the money. A lot of the short stacks that we mentioned not too long ago have actually... More than doubled. Mark Rubathan up to 18 bigs. Alex Kulev, Alex Kulev rather, now up to 17 bigs. Phil Nagy up to 16. Ten, ten. <laughs> it's a fight down there. <laughs> it is. I mean, we, we had like three, four sub-10 big blind stacks. Now the shortest stack is Kim Sop with 10 bigs. And get comfortable for some of these larger stacks. Same way. It's getting comfortable here in the booth for our stay in, day out, sat in these secret lab Titan Evo chairs. I'm still looking to steal one now that I have an official place of residence, Randy. A lot of the players looking to get a chance to sit in those as well because you know what that means. If you sat in... You got to the end. If you sat in one of those secret lab chairs, it means you are heads up in a Triton super high roller series event which normally comes with a hefty paycheck at the top of it as well we can attest to the comfort of those chairs is it the last we had had them for the first time in madrid when you and jeff gross were falling asleep <laughs> in the secret lab chairs we then had them in cyprus now have them out here in vietnam Chidwick seems to keep getting dealt king, queens, and ace, ten. All of these really marginal spots, yeah. However, there is already a raise and a three bet in front of him. A sizable three bet of sevens. Definitely going to dissuade his opponents from continuing way more often. Not, would not be getting a good price. Local hero taking it down. takes a lot of passion to design secret lab chairs, you know? Like, I'm assuming it, it, it started with lower back pain mm -hmm. or discomfort, like sitting long hours at a desk and someone's like, you know what, I've had enough. I'm gonna make a secret <laughs> lab. I'm gonna build my own secret lab. 
Your own secret lab to build this secret chair. And yeah. I'm going to build a chair that I can sit in for long hours, you know? I, I want to know. I, I want nice to. I want to sit down with the the CEO and see where this all all started out. You're still trying to get that chair, aren't you? No, I'm actually allowed one. I left it in Cyprus. Still waiting for you. It's there. It is there in storage. Queens and Jacks. Oh boy. Van Dien has been one of the most active players at the table so far today. This is just trouble. I mean, you know, he just three bet two sevens, upgraded to pocket jacks. It's gonna feel comfy. The stack sizes of twenty blinds could easily see these chips going in. Yeah, I think given how active he's been, it's gonna make him want to get in a bit more, protect those ranges. Yeah, and again, just kind of going back to. The caliber of player that Mulocker is. He's, wow. a, he's a bit suspicious. He's like, hmm, you didn't three bet jam on me, your 20 blinds. Does that mean something? Let me just see a flop well, well, and well. go from there. So maybe he could be saved. We bring out some big cards. Like that. A 7 3 rainbow. A lot of people would have just. Lost a million chips there. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, Mulock is getting a double up from me. Getting a full double. See how he proceeds. Six, six, five out there. Keeping the initiative. Bet very, very small. With stacked pot ratio this size, three bet pot. Really, no reason to bet bigger. If they've got the ace. Just gonna lose more. He just what rip the? it all in with two jacks on a seven three rainbow. That's why you flat call, ladies and gentlemen. You're telling you me just, Jax is gonna beat two queens right now. You just soul read Mulocker for the queens and kings of the world. No, he can't make this call, can he? It's, he's got to be. If there's a flush draw, mate, you can start to make the argument. But you're up against an ace x a lot. Maybe an ace, ten, ace, jacks, just like, let's just close the hand. Yeah, maybe some ace, queen, o's, gets. I can't believe it. The pocket like, queens of Mulocka no to way. fold, no and way. well. Pock sevens. Oh. <laughs> just keep an eye on this local player, Lee Van Dien, with all the moves so far today, up to 2.4 million. Moves to second in chips overall, 28 players left. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. He was just so confident in that jam. It looked pretty credible. I can't believe he got. I can't believe Jax won that pot without flopping a set. Unheard of. It's fearless. Leaving. I mean, we're saying that, you know. That, that's definitely fearless. When I do it, I run into Ace King or top set. Yeah. And everyone's just like, well, what did you do that for? Bad read. He had a live read. See the difference? I had a live read on Wushu, okay. <laughs> hey, it's possible. Vietnamese hero. Oh, sweet. Just check jamming. The jacks getting the queens to fall. Going to be one of the highlight hands of the day. Welcome to Southeast Asia. We do move the blinds up, so those shallow stacks on the bottom that we're fighting are extra shallow. This is one of them. Mule Locker losing those, that last pot. 1.325. Yeah, that number. Uh, 25, yeah. <laughs> 25. Uh, speaking Spanish, Randy, not yeah. Portuguese. Okay. I'm just letting you know, there, I was, didn't know there was a conversation <laughs> out there earlier. I wouldn't know how to say those numbers regardless. <coughs> See in the chat that a Triton free roll on GG Poker is kicking off in 10 minutes time. The password for that one is high roller. Don't forget, as always, no late reg on that. So you need to get in the mix in the next 10 minutes or so.
got free rolls throughout the series. We've lost someone. Let's head over to the Triton Poker Plus out to see who it is. Kim Yon Sup out in 28th. This is responsible. Kim's departure. And they're bound to go down eventually. Mark Rubathan. You got him? Yeah, Mark. Got a scalp. Open the King Fiver Clubs from the cutoff. Kim jammed from the small with a three of diamonds, and Mark flopped to five and held. That easy. Get it in bad. Flop a pair. Hold. The norm. Bong Long Kai's limped under gun queen 10 offsuit. Uh, you know what? Bong is my new favorite player. Just, because? We just rifled it in with the queen 4 earlier. <laughs> it was Bong, right? Bong. Yeah, it was Bong. Yeah. You feel an outplay coming with this queen 10 against Mateos. So he's going to be taking this one out of position. 550 in the middle. Two overs. Fair fight. 550,000 in the middle. Four off the money. That was Jack 7 6 rainbow. Only one overcard to Mateus's pocket nines. Swing and a miss for Bong, who needs to be careful, Randy. 765,000 in his stack. Mateus going to check back. And well, let him get there. He has let him get there. Mateus now drawing to two outs once. Snap check by Queen 10. Mateus is maybe thinking his hands are vulnerable. Take one off. I would love to see Bong Lo Kai throwing some value bet out now. If his opponent's checking down, probably will check the river. Snap call. Well, Bong gets paid. Yes. Chips up nicely to 1.4 million. A bit of breathing room for him on the bubble. Now playing very comfortable 23 big blinds. See the numbers over on Triton Poker YouTube channel slowly creeping up. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on whereabouts in the world you are joining us from. Appreciate the ongoing support, the engagement in the chat, as always, has been S tier. S tier. I'm gonna put a like on. I can put a like too, right? Here we go. You can. Thumbs up. Mateos, Queen Jack, at it again. Barbero's got Ace Queen. I think default is to just jam it in. Do you think? There's merit to three betting smaller for inducing. I don't know how much we want to be inducing on the bubble. I don't yeah. know whether jamming on the bubble is the play, but oh, right, yeah, on the, the bubble Barrow does just rip it in. You don't want to get it in during the bubble. It makes a lot of sense. Fold out those pocket pairs that might make a play back at you. Little pocket pairs like sixes and sevens. So let me get this right. It took you 94 minutes to like the video. Well, I mean, for today. Yesterday, I think it took about 360 minutes. So I've improved. 360 minutes is oddly specific. <laughs> Took you six hours. To be fair, 
I only just did it as well, so I'm... I beat you? Yeah, you did. You beat me by a minute. It took you 94, it took me 95. So... Action has really slowed down on the soft bubble. Again, just a couple of orbits ago, we had three or four... Igual la mejor mesa de seven big blind stacks if I'm not mistaken and they've all gone on a spin Phil Nagy Mark Rubathan at this table we haven't really had like a table captain that's just kind of pouncing no. on people they're, they're kind of just all hanging in there getting thrown some curveballs Chidwick in the big blind It is dealer button small blind. This big blind is pretty important to a stack given how close we're to the money. All options seem viable. I have nine bigs. Stephen Chidwick, 360,000 out there. Does have fold equity as well. And again, it is John So. Self-proclaimed recreational player. It's hard to narrow down the, the small blind flat calling range too. Just gonna lay it down, feels it's dominated, wants to maintain that one big blind, which helps him get some shoves so through good. later. So good, Randy. He's just so he's just world class. Now it's starting to add up as to why he's oh, at the top. Why he's of at the, the top of the player of the year. Yeah, it just you know, it, it's making more sense. You just realized. No, there's every day that goes by. It's just making more and more sense. Well, both players have flopped pretty well here. Top pair, mid pair. Expecting a continuation bet from John So. Ninety thousand. Little tiny bet. See where you're at. Definitely the smaller bet invites looser calls, but A7 is definitely worthy of a bigger bet as well. What do we get on turn? Oh, five of spades, an undercard. A blank. Bongs, pair of sevens. Maybe trouble. Pot control. You're going to see more pot control as we get really close to the money because, yes, he's got top pair. He doesn't want to get all of it in. Uh, he's probably going to snap call this one off. I'm guessing a blocker bet is in line. Yeah, he, I mean, he did this kind of blocker bet earlier. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, no, okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. 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 <laughs> you're thinking I'm the one that should be translating for you. Take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's that movie where they, they switch bodies? See. But there's many. I'm sure oh, there's, the chain, the, there's many of the, these movies. Yeah. The, the change up. Change, change up. up. Yeah, yeah. With uh, Ryan Reynolds and. Jason Bateman. You want to do the change up with me? Well, I'm not being funny, Randy, but I don't know if you noticed, I'm incredibly white. <laughs> if you haven't haven't figured that one out yet. I'm, you know, five minutes in the sun and I look like a lobster. So, no, my uh, understanding of the language they were speaking is kind of, you know, yeah. Let's just leave it leave it at that. Let's move on. Six four of spades. Bong Lo Kai. It's decided to get involved in some pots with a raise on the button. Unfortunately. Good timing for two tens. Is Chin thinking asking for some stacks? 
I think he was just curious, seeing how much Bong was opening off of. Get an idea. Like what stack he's opening off of. Well, for Mulocker, two tens. It's got the Ford equity. All in. Can you count this? He's asking for a count. Man, this would be dirty. What? Don't take your coach. <laughs> no. Just order some lunch. I'm good one. Is it gone? How much? 580,000 more for total. Hello. Posture. Did he, what? Wow, he made the call. He's just willing wow. to gamble it here. Wow, I love this. I told you he's my favorite player. He takes he's been playing some PLO. <laughs> Six, four, suited. Oh, it's very easy. Apple got that. It's very easy. <laughs> Inside straight draw. <laughs> <laughs> Never easy. Would be a dirty way to eliminate Mulocker. Wow. 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 Who everyone else is rooting for. Oh. Five of spades, pairing the board. Mulocker gets the double. 1.3 million chip pot. With that bong down to just six big blinds. Three off the money. He almost did him dirty there. <laughs> six four suited. Would have been disgusting. Mulocker's on a healthy stack. Well, healthier. Shadi Yin Mato Sura. Boyong. Now, how hot and jail shall I leave it? Oh, apparently, he has lunch reservations. That's why she's trying to win the tournament. <laughs> he did say he, he was. Trying to figure out his lunch situation. Uh, Alex Kulev has just doubled up on the outer table. Aces against the King Four Clubs of Linus Love. With that, Kulev up to 1.6 million. Uh, bong open shoving from the cutoff. The final six blinds with Queen Three suited running into the Queen Nine of Clubs of Mateus, who's in great shape to score a KO on the soft bubble. I don't know, suited queens make me worry. I just summed that up. One heart only. Good hit of five. Some three. Close. Complicated now. <laughs> Four or five would chop it. A three. Non club three to win it. No dice. Good game. Queen of diamonds on the river, Mateos. Thank you. Sends Bong to the showers, just three off the money. The good news is, Randy, that Bong is going to now have plenty of time to figure out his lunch reservation plans. That's right. And get right back into that mystery bounty. That's starting. Yeah, where's the clock for that one? I really want to keep an eye on the prize pool. Number three that we're referring to. 
20k mystery bounty. I have ordered us coffee, Randy. I hope you're ready. It's begun, the Vietnamese coffees. It's 3.30 p.m. So by the time Ollie gets in here, I'm going to be... We're bouncing off shots. the walls. Yeah. It's not a day if you don't have one. I'm saying three off the money and he calls it off, must be super rich and just doesn't give an F. There, there are a lot of wealthy people here playing poker. I mean, you do need some wealth to play these stakes, right? All right, this is, uh... This, what, this is the highest mid, mid stakes? 15 k Yeah. It's funny how this is not the new mid stakes. Before, it was high, these were considered high rollers. Now, this, is this when you hit me with, back in my day, kid? Yeah, back in my day. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but it's true. 10 okay, it was the high roller. A few people in the chat asking why do they keep looking at the ceiling? Well, a lot of Pretty them use the tournament clock as a way of randomizing their decisions. But also to see how many players are remaining um, because we know we're really close to the money. That's important. 375 for Nacho Barbero attacking John So, self proclaimed. Recreational player. Plays pretty good, in my opinion. Yeah, I think he's been playing tremendously well. Very humble. Queen, Jack, clubs. But he doesn't play scared to me. I just realized, though, this is the big blind versus the hijack. Three bane from the big blind here. Ace rag, definitely some, a viable play. Ace blocker. Unblock the hands that will fold to your three bet and open from that position. Lays it down. What a play. Wow. Leveraging how close we are to money. Yeah, Barbaro just. Really? Leading into John. Stop taking my time back, please. Come on. What are you doing to me? Offsuit Ace X. Is that versus hijack open? It was. Was it hijack? Let's see. It was hijack, yes. That's pretty out of line. Oh, it's definitely out of line. But because we're close to the money, I guess people aren't going to want to call three bets as much. They, they're going to want to kind of choose their spots. John was playing, what, 30 big blind stack? Just uncomfortable. I wouldn't have faulted Queen Jack of Clubs taking a flop, but it just depends on how you want to approach the situation. Yeah, you know, you want to get the monkey off your back in the form of a, a cash at a Triton series. Yeah. This is his first Triton stop, but, you know, he it's... didn't cash event number one. Little mind games do come into play. 100%, man. I mean, yesterday it felt like he was getting, uh, getting attacked in a lot of spots as well. If I recall correctly, I mean, was he just just getting that confidence under your belt in the form of a cash? Lee Van Dien's been my favorite player. He's just been making some crazy yeah. moves. I, I guarantee you that Jack's hand is going to be turned into this. an Instagram story. Look at this. Seven deuce offsuit. Attacking Nacho who's limped into your blind. He's going to he's gonna top that one. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Taking the worst of it and the best of it to three and a half X with. Although I believe his sizing was smaller. Right, just shy of three X. It's Nacho, kind of continuation bet. It makes a lot of sense. 
you would be representing those king queens ace kings that would pop a limp Barbero naturally going nowhere. Keep it small. Top pair. The deuce. Equity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare. Hey, it's something. It is. Bottom pair. He's reaching quickly for chips. Looks like he, he wants to win with the seven deuce. He's got a plan. This guy, chat, has come here to make the highlight reels. Okay. That is all that is all he is here for. Firing out a half pot bet on the turn, setting up a very natural river SPR as well. I think to Barbero, hey listen pal. Are you ready to play for it all on the river? He's checking, does not have a heart. Gonna make the call. Yeah, this could get fun. Like I don't know what Lee Van Dien's game plan going into the river, is he going to multi -barrel? He definitely doesn't think a pair of deuces is good. If he jabs, I'm going to go out there and shake his hand. 1.4 million. Oh my, if he can Sandra. fire one more bet on a four flush, he could very likely take this pot down. The Sash just run out for Nacho, the flopping top pair. There's something about four flushes that make you want to bet, and he's going to do it. What a sicko. This what guy. a sicko this guy is. Lee Van Dien, ladies and gentlemen. Check jammed against Mulocker earlier on. Going to fold pocket queens on the A7-3. Oh, this is so credible. Like, what bluffs is usually a man going to show up upon this board run out? Bet, bet, bet. In his own backyard. Repping the local players here at the Hoi An Golf Resort and Casino in Hoi An, Vietnam. Tripling off against Nacho Barbero. These chips are important to Nacho. You don't, if he calls and loses, he'll be getting close to 10 big blinds. We're not in the money yet. Oh my. Can he really find a call of just King 3? Just think he's making a move on you? Deep in the tank. Lee Van Dien can easily have an ace of hearts, a king of hearts, queen of hearts. Yeah, Sizing kind of makes sense for all those types of hearts as well. It, it's very credible. But he's not giving up yet. I've got to give him credit for thinking about this. Hmm. Not so deep in the tank, Van Dien. 2.7x from the big. Barbero called. King, Jack, six, two hearts. And then fight out on the flop. Bet half pot on the turn. And fires again on this four flush completing river. Barbero throwing in all of his time extensions for this one. I think Van Dien woke up this morning and chose violence and oh Barbero. Oh my gosh, did he just call King 3? Barbero Sick. chose something else and that was... He wanted to be a hero. Sick. Nacho Barbero, ladies and gentlemen. One of the best who have ever played you the game out of Argentina. From this I'm going to call you. Credit to Van Dien. Uh, 200k for the time bank. Uh, did I? Because uh, I put two. I put two. Did I use the two? Use all. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I uh, like 180k chips for a time bank. Sure. Take it. You're so what did crazy, you say? Man. You put me on those spots on the bubble. Hi. <laughs> I'm a poor Argentinian, man. Barbero just says he's a poor Argentinian. 
yeah, out there we're getting that deep run. Other stops. Wow, that that's one hell of a call. He check called three barrels, four flushed out. Do you think that's a byproduct of the river sizing that Van Dien went for? It's like I forty percent on the river after betting half I part of the turn. He is getting a better price, but it also widens the value bet range for Van Dien, right? If like if Van Dien went for a pot size bet, it, it's more like the nuts or nothing. It's just, I thought, I thought it was gonna fold that king three. I just, I'm just trying to find like obvious bluffs. How much you play nuts or not? Hard to find. Oh, he's number one on the Argentinian all-time money list for a reason. Yeah. He's using those chips right away. Pocket sixes, three betting, Mateos. Very happy to see Nacho here. You? 2.5? That's just all skill. But you're the best, so you gotta give me some handicap. So six handed at this feature. Let's see Ponikovs and Aaron's getting it in over on table one against each other, both with pocket kings. Chopping it up. We have had another elimination. I do apologize. That was at this feature table. It was Low Kai Bong out in 27. So down to the final 26 players. Sebastian, Gale, and Pachara, along with Chit, both playing six big blinds. And just looking at the bottom of the counts now, there are seven players. Sorry, six players with less than 10 big blinds. Stephen Chidwick, one of them at this feature table. So this is going to be a tight money bubble. Linus Love still out in front, but did lose that sizable pot against Alex Kulev. Chidwick's been bleeding. He's down to 350k. Blinds keep catching up. Yeah, he's had a lot of annoying spots, right? Like the ace jack, mm -hmm. the king queen. Lays down this big blind. Just going to try and squeeze into the money. Out to my fellow okay. Whoop brother, Thomas Mulocker. Two hundred and ten likes over on the Triton Poker YouTube channel. Appreciate the support as always, and for all of you getting involved in the chat, feel free. Ask any questions, fire them over our way. Randy and I will do our best to get back to you. And whilst we have you here, if you could obviously take a couple of seconds out of your days to just click that like button, click the subscribe button, really helps support the channel, grow the channel, and more importantly, grow the great game of poker. Who wouldn't want this free poker content it brought to a wider audience? Spread the word. A uh, few people have brought up, I see Highland Wynn asking why is Shidwick allowed to use his phone? So Can there I is service, please? there is Can a I? rule here at Triton Series. Obviously we have uh, Luca Vivaldi, our tournament director, overseeing like pretty much everything from an operational standpoint uh, like at the tables. And we introduced the Triton Poker Plus app okay. earlier on last year. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say Madrid, if I'm not mistaken, or did you guys tease it in Cyprus? No, 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 no. It was like an unofficial stop, right? Let's just let's just go with Madrid, and if, if I'm wrong, 
it would get corrected, but it was introduced. The players just loved it, you know, the fact that they can sweat along in real time, the chip count updates, saves the slowing down the pace of the game, saves the, oh, how much are you playing, how much are you playing, etc., etc. So in between hands, and at the start of hands, uh, you see players kind of looking at their phones, just getting a quick hand, and even sometimes during a hand. Mm -hmm. You know, when there's a decision to be made, they'll look at the phone and see how much. It's mainly for stack sizes. It's a hundred percent for stack sizes. There's no, there's nothing else going on. Uh, we have one of the best security teams in the business here. Good luck getting into the back room, mate, without getting drop kicked by security. <laughs> drop kicked. I mean, I've tried. I get side eyed, and I've got a, I've got a pass. Chidwick's got king eight. Is he thinking about trying to make a stance? All eyes are on him as he is way down there in chips. How much you play now? One million? Right about four big blinds. Is that you have a white between the blacks? No, right? I wish. <laughs> no, no, no. Between. Gonna the make blacks. a stance here. No, right. no, no, Just no, no. try to hopefully t pick up these chips. Yeah, I think Cheddar's knows that. I, I can't use my phone. He's not gonna be able to sneak like, into the money here. Like that. Oh, really? Six-handed table. That big blind coming round. Yeah, if he doesn't take this spot, he's right. really just folding down the 50k. Like, uh, yeah. Right? Uh, like less, King less. eight, more Around than enough. 1.7. Sub four. One point six. Fold yeah. equity. Thank you. You're welcome. Not a lot, but just enough fold equity to kick out yeah, these types matter, of hands. Matters a lot. This tax. Yeah, yeah, two off the money. It's going to be a lengthy bubble. Freeman asking who's who's the bouncer, in the security team. His name's James Dempsey. If any of you have any problems, you just ask for head of security, James Dempsey. He's doing the math here. He's getting thirty-eight percent. We can call here. That's it's annoying. I I I I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So we don't tell, let Mateo tell us what it is. It is a call for him. Let's make the call. Nine do suited Chidwick. Sixty-one percent equity. Stevie. All in on it's the, the first bubble. Time in my life, I'm not I'm not rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear. At least Wait, who just said that? John So said that to Stephen Chiwick. For the first, first time in his life, he's not rooting for him. Wow. Brutal. Well, there's a deuce on the flop with an eight. Saw the deuce first. I got a bit excited there. Mateos flopping a pair. Chidwick with middle pair. Needs to fade a nine or a deuce to double up on the bubble here in event number two, and he does exactly yeah, that. 740,000 chip pot going Chidwick's way. I think it's awkward now. He just told him, I'm not rooting for you. He's still at the table. We're still on 60, the blinds, or it's 80? So he's, oh. now he's comfortable with that stack, with that double up. He can pretty much wait out a little short stacks. 10 minutes ago only? I'm gonna need There's that only hand. So. Mark asking, is Randy going to be yeah, playing any short deck this event? I'm going to stay Maybe here with you, Henry. It's safer in here. Bankroll maintains. It's the same. It is safer in here. It's safer. Well, I mean, it depends. If you have YouTube and Twitch chat open, it can get dangerous. You know, every <laughs> now and then you catch a stray bullet. Shots get fired. It's all right, let me go. <laughs> let me go by and get away from that chat. Uh, one in the chat saying, "What time is it there?" It is four, coming up to four p.m. local time. So going to be playing down to a winner in this one today. I'll be giving you guys updates as and when they come from event number three, the twenty k mystery bounty. But again, if you want to see who's involved in that one can quite literally download the app and sweat all of the action 
from event number three. Nacho Barbero at this feature table. Chip leading the entire field, 25 left, 23 paid. And note, by the way, Randy, Nacho, chip leader with just 40 big blinds. Yes. So a really shallow field here, given how these short stacks have just continued to double mm -hmm. over the last couple of hours. Is Nacho going to take a free one? Jack Deuce. Rob saying you should go and play cash with the guy that called with 6-4. Uh, if you're talking about Mr. Bong, as much as I would love to play cash with Bong, Randy, I've got a funny feeling his pockets are way too deep for me. <laughs> and no matter how many times I would chip up and win a hand against him, he would just keep reloading until he busted me. So we might not be able to, that, That's a big game. He's going to want to play. That is a big game. That is definitely a big game. So Mateos, obviously not going anywhere with his nut middle pair. Barbero with the stab with just Jack High. Picking up equity on the turn in the form of a gut shot. See if he fires again into... He might use those chip leading chips to put some pressure. I mean, he could get some high cards to fold. That might check call. Ace highs, 4x, weak 7x. Are, are we too deep for him to, to double barrel here? Is, is that the reason why he's just knuckling back his kind of... I also think that he knows that Mateus is a pretty good hand reader and it's harder to shake him off of those weaker pairs. Well, Mateos improving to two pair. 540 out there, unfortunately for him. Not going to get any value from Nacho. Snap mark, Jack Deuce. Just skipping around down. the other tables. Close. Brian Kim on the up oh, and up. Slow played ace king pre against Linus Love. King high flop. Now finds himself playing a 2.9 million chip stack. Linus Love down to 25 bigs. McBoyfin playing 19 bigs. Alex Kulev 18. Seth Davies. Stop after three hands, basically. Seth Davies going for another cash. He's out there. He is out there. I mean, he must have like one of the highest final table <laughs> rates in these Triton events. I couldn't agree more, man. You're talking about how important it is to get that monkey off your back, and ever since cashing in Madrid, Seth Davies has just been on an absolute tear this past year. These last Consistent. three stops. Let's see, Mateos does have a chip leader in the small blind, so doesn't really look too sweet to play. 9-3 offsuit. Not much of a hand, but he's got the chip lead. He's got a guy who wants to survive with 10 blinds. Maybe you see a flop? Try to at least. I'll well, see how Van Dien proceeds here. It does... Knuckle back in position. 240,000 in the middle. Flopped well. it. And that's actually a decent piece for Lee Van Dien. This could spell disaster for the local Vietnamese hero. <coughs> Two overs and a gut shot. Nacho with trips. Can I knuckle it on over? Yeah, he smashed it so hard. I was just hoping his opponent. I mean, you just saw him bluff seven deuce against you. Maybe he'll take a stab. Yeah, I think Nacho always going to extend the rope, if you will, given the small hand samples that we've seen so far at this feature table already. You can...
feels like check calls the right play if you've seen someone multi barrel off against you. You could kind of go for a tiny raise if you really thought your opponent would read that as weakness. He's trying to look weak. He's going to check oh, raise. Wow. It looks suspicious, doesn't it? Like 10 big blind stacks, check raising, 9x on 997. Wait. All in. Wow. wow. Hang on. How have all the chips worked their way into the middle here, Randy? This feels exactly like what Barbera was going for, the clickback, just really extending the rope to Van Dien. I think Van Dien didn't expect that a nine would check raise him here. Felt like he was up against a bluff a lot. Bit of a misstep. Still Some has a chance. Some leveling going on. Barbero with the min click on the flop. Van Dien picking up an additional two outs in the form of two tens. No dice yeah. as the three of hearts on the river boats up Nacho and extends, or sorry, regains his chip lead with 24 players remaining as the local Vietnamese player bows out just two off the money here in event number two, the 15K, no limit hold them eight max. Record breaking, may I add, 172 runners down to the final 24, Randy. There's a quick look that counts to this feature table Nacho Barbero out in front of the overall tournament with 48 big blinds. Chidwick, the other end at this feature, playing just nine bigs after doubling against Adrian Mateos. He's going to try and sneak his way in, believe it or not, Randy, with nine big blinds out of the field of 24 as we welcome you back into the booth. Stephen Chidwick is currently sat in 17th. Yes. Just to give you an idea... <laughs> of how Comfy. shallow some of the stacks are out there. We currently have nine sub-10 big blind stacks with 24 players remaining. So what can we expect? I mean, I guess we're going to orbit or so of a stalemate, if you will. A lot of folds are going to come from the short stacks unless they've got a premium hand they can go with. Um, they're going to try to wait each other out, you know, just so close to the money. There's no real reason to risk it on a risky play. Well, 600,000 for first, average stack of 18 bigs. That bubble may be going to be a quick one, although, as you already alluded to, given that there are so many short stacks, maybe everyone incentivized to just tighten it up and wait for someone to make a mistake. And then once that bubble is burst, we can expect to see a flurry of bust outs, given that the short stacks will have guaranteed themselves at least 30,000. Randy and I are going to head into a 10-minute break. We don't go too far heading into this final three-table redraw. When we come back, it is the stone bubble of this record-breaking event number two here at the Triton Super High Roller Series in Vietnam. We'll see you shortly. GG Poker, the biggest poker site. Best poker site. Poker. Why? The most Someone ambitious. This is a crazy. It's a doom. Oh, baby!
Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker. Queen and a queen only to knock out Strava. Oh, no, that's wow. a queen. Queen of spades, corner pocket. Everyone at the table felt that one, us included in the booth. You? 1.8. Pocket eights. Lucky hand, eh? Probably gonna open rip it. He's playing. No, he's actually gonna raise. 12 and a half blinds. I guess you could see it both ways. Yeah, I mean, Danny's good enough to mix in some. Some like ace eights, ace nines, king nine, king tens that wanna raise fold. Don't think he's raising to. to fold to a jam with the. Pocket ace, but we're well, about to find out. Yeah, I mean, ace queen seems like a good spot to jam. Opponent's playing 12 and a half blinds. He got fold equity. Here we go. Here we go, indeed. You're right. Danny Tang. My lucky eights. <laughs> lucky eights for 12 and a half bigs. <laughs> Just nine off the money. 
here at the Hoi An Golf Resort and Casino in Hoi An, Vietnam. Looking to hold and get back up to 25 bigs, but Queen in the window. Leaving Danny with just 13% equity drawing to running straight cards. Yeah, that's well, one of them. That is definitely one of them as he goes from two outs to ten. Send me the turn of a card. Send me home. No <laughs> dice. <laughs> Queen of Spades. Improving Van Dien to trips as we lose Danny Tang. Oh, <coughs> off so the money. <laughs> he was a set of Michael Jackson's Thriller. <laughs> you're right. That smoke. And I know what you're talking about. Bright lights popping up there. That's pretty awesome. That's the first time I've seen that shot. Ken Wong in the chat saying Malaysian Webster Lim won the GG 25K Super Millions Live Edition. He did indeed. Now for 965, beating a oh, star studded final table. It's getting active here. 10 out of clubs. Seems to be involved in multiple pots lately. Nothing wrong with calling position of suited connector. Wait, hang on a minute. Oh, did he just go with queen four suited? Bong's had enough. So you know what? There's been a raise and a flat. There's extra dead money in the middle. Maybe one of my opponents is able to ISO. Ideally, he yeah, he would like Barbaro to ISO. Get a heads up, increase his equity. That's in such his an hand. awkward spot for Barbaro though. He might just he might repop it to like 500k, something that will define Lee Van Dien's range. A flat is generally perceived as being weaker behind him. If he can just kick that guy out. I mean, is it perceived as weaker though? Like I feel like at 40 effective, you're going to have a ton of traps from the hijack, given that there are yeah. So I suppose short stack jamming ranges like behind. How much does he want to risk to potentially find out? Looks like he's just going to call because he's a bit unsure. I'm going to play a three-way pot. And then does put in the additional 150k. This is quite a bloated pot given the hands we've got. Uh, Bong just making a stand with the queen four of spades. Maybe, maybe he knows something <laughs> we don't know. He saw this coming. Flush draw. Everyone's got a piece. It's a dry side pot. Looks like Barbaro is going to try to clear the field a bit. Just bets two big blinds into 900k. I mean, it's not going to shake middle pair. It's too good of a price. Boink on the turn. It's hard to know mm. if you're ahead or not right now for Barbaro. Like, you can see Lee Van Dien having like an ace 10, ace jack. You can see him having 10, 9, 9, 8. Yeah. I think it's a bit of a guessing game. They started a side pot, so this is worth fighting for a little bit. Looks like one more coming in. Yeah, he's gone small, small. 250,000 into 1.1 million, and in the end, just going to let go of his middle pair. It's Barbero in great shape to score a KO. Wow. Just needs to fade a spade on the river. Nine outs once for Bong. Okay. Oh. Nine. Nine ten. How do he know? <laughs> Who just squeezes all in? <laughs> Queen four suited. Flops the flush draw. Gets their three ways. He's down to just four and a half bigs. He's got a stack now. I mean, at least Barbaro wants hey, some. Chips in the side pot. Soften that blow a little bit. Looking 
at the field sides. I've had some more eliminations from the outer tables. What do we got? Busted. Obviously, we saw Danny Tang part of this feature table. We have Kim Gabyong out in 31st. Silas Jedeminas out in 30th. Munacio out in 29th. So we're down to the final 28. We've got Mark Rubathan, Phil Nagy, Kiat Lee all in the danger zone. All sub 10 bigs. Again, those of you that do have interest in the players on the outer tables, you can quite literally sweat along over on the app. See all of their hand histories. Lee Van Dien is back at it. Pocket fives. Flops best. Kind of an annoying board for both hands. Ace of spades. Important for Barbero. When someone flat calls you in position, it does feel a bit pocket pair heavy. Or at least when we saw him flat 10-9 suited too, so would be the type of board to smash him. King though, good card for Barbero. Yeah, we can see that a bet here Should would get likely get rid of the fives. However, two-turn board, King a somewhat scary card given that the flop went check check. For Barbero as well, the King Jacks, King Queens of the world. Some clubs out there. Yeah, I guess that Lee Van Dien just thinking, check twice to me. Seems like fives are worthy of protection. Gets called by worse. <laughs> well, Van Dien's going to win this one at showdown, Randy, unless Barbero. All right. He's going to win at showdown. Van Dien with the sick value bet. You know, on pretty time. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen many players get. Yeah, Mark. Got a scalp. Open the King Fiver clubs from the cutoff. Kim jammed from the small with a three of diamonds, and Mark flopped to five and held. That easy. Get it in bad. Flop a pair. Hold. The norm. Bong Long Kai's limped under gun Queen 10 offsuit. Uh, you know what? Bong is my new favorite player. Just, because? We just rifled it in with the Queen 4 earlier. <laughs> it was Bong, right? Bong. Yeah, it was Bong. Yeah. You feel an outplay coming with this Queen 10 against Mateos. So he's going to be taking this one out of position. 550 in the middle. Two overs. Fair fight. 550,000 in the middle, four off the money. Comes Jack, seven, six, rainbow. Only one overcard to Mateus's pocket nines. Swing and a miss for Bong, who needs to be careful, Randy. 765,000 in his stack. Mateus going to check back and well. Let him get there. Has let him get there. Tails now drawing to two outs once. Snap check by Queen 10. Mateos is maybe thinking his hands are vulnerable. Take one off. I would love to see Bong Lokai throwing some value bet out now. If his opponent's checking down, probably will check the river. Snap call. Bong gets paid. Yes. Chips up nicely to 1.4 million. A bit of breathing room for him. You beat me by a minute. To Q94, it took me 95. So. Action has really slowed down on the soft bubble. Again. Just a couple of orbits ago, we had three or four, Igual la mejor mesa seven big blind stacks, if I'm not mistaken, and they've all gone on a spin. Phil Nagy, Mark Rubathan. 
at this table, we haven't really had like a table captain that's just kind of pouncing no, yeah. on people. They're, they're kind of just all hanging in there, getting thrown some curveballs. Chidwick in the big blind. It is dealer button small blind. This big blind is pretty important to a stack given how close we're to the money. All options seem viable. I have nine bigs. Stephen Chidwick, 360,000 out there. Does have fold equity as well. And again, it is John So. Self-proclaimed recreational player. It's hard to narrow down the, the small blind flat calling range too. Just gonna lay it down, feels it's dominated, wants to maintain that one big blind, which helps him get some shoves so through good. later. So good, Randy. He's just so he's just world class. Now it is starting to add up as to why he's oh, at the why top he's of at the, the top of the player of the year. Yeah, it's just you know, it, it's making more sense. You just realized. No, there's every day that goes by. It's just making more and more sense. Well, both players have flopped pretty well here. Top pair, mid pair. Expecting a continuation in bet from John So. Ninety thousand. Little tiny bet. See where you're at. Definitely the smaller bet invites looser calls, but A7 is definitely worthy of a bigger bet as well. What do we get on turn? Five of spades, an undercard, a blank bongs, pair of sevens, maybe trouble. Pot control. You're going to see more pot control as we get really close to the money because, yes, he's got top pair. He doesn't want to get more. very warm welcome back to the broadcast booth here at the Huayana Golf Resort and Casino. He's Randy Liu, I'm Henry Kilbane and we are on the stone money bubble of this record-breaking event number two, the 15k 8 max. 172 entries were down to the final 24 with 23 places paid, min cash of 30,000 but Randy 600,000 for first. Uh, just a casual 40 buy-ins up top in this 15K, and it is currently Nacho Barbero out in front with just 48 big blinds. It's the chip leader. We were mentioning earlier on how shallow this field is due to the fact that it's been a bit of a stalemate for the last hour and a half or so. And if we look at the actual leaderboard at the bottom of the pack, we currently have eight stacks all trying to sneak their way into the money. Randy, how does that leave things for us here uh, coming into this you know, commentary stint? We've got eight players all desperate to sneak their way in, and we have Andrew Leatham at the bottom with two big blinds. Is this just going to be snail pace until someone busts? Exactly. It is going to be snail pace. Uh, one of those short stacks doesn't want to get it in first. You want to be the, the one to get in after someone busts. So you're going to see lots of folds. The big stacks will... Probably open raise, expecting a lot of folds. No resistance from the middling stack. It's just going to be a waiting game for a bit. It could be quick, just depends on whether that short stack does eventually double or not. But right now, you're not going to see guys like Steven Chiwick play too many hands at all. Yeah, those middling stacks, and by middling stacks, I mean those 15 big blind stacks of the world, really handcuffed as things stand. Uh, a couple of you know things to point out in terms of first-timers in this event. Alex Kulev looking to go two for two in his first ever two Triton events as we throw it on down to the main stage for this, this uh, tense money bubble for a lot of these newcomers. One of the standout newcomers is gonna be Mark Riverthan, who qualified, by the way, through a satellite part of the ACR Stormers crew. This is his biggest ever live buy-in, if I'm not mistaken. Currently sat in 10th for this feature table, led by Adrian Mateos. 
El Matador himself a look at this. One, two, three, four, five sub 10 big blind stacks at our feature. Stephen Chidwick, Ying Yang Chow, Stephen Dwyer, Jan Zarens, and Phil Nagy all gonna try and sneak their way into the money. 30,000 min cash. Worth sneaking in for, Randy. Not a small cash. Seth Davies, by the way, fresh off of that fourth place finish in the GG Super Millions Live Edition. I just feel like Seth Davies just, you know, it was like a massive monkey on his back. We're talking a gorilla sized <laughs> monkey on his back. And then he managed to wrestle it off. And now it's just like, hey, guys, by the way, you know, do you remember when you kept mentioning that? You don't need to mention it anymore mm -hmm. because all I'm doing is cashing. He cashes like every single bit. I mean, I, someone needs to run some numbers on this guy. I want to see what his ROI is over the last year. Love to see it. So action kicking off. Stone bubble, ladies and gentlemen. 24 players left. 23 place, players paid. We'll be keeping an eye on the tables over on the Troyton Poker Plus app as well. given that we are on the stone bubble as well the world-class team that we have here that is the share hands group will be keeping us informed of any big collisions elsewhere but for now our main focus on table three action round two is the phil Nagy responsible for one of the most exciting documentaries to come out of the poker world in recent times that Ebony Kenny run back in Cyprus, the 200k Coin Riv Invitational. I believe that was released just prior to this Vietnam trip. Shout out to that crew. A lot of them still here. The likes of Susan and Phil Blank. And there's a lot of camera crews here. There's a lot there? of camera like, crews. A lot of the Thai guys here with their videographers. A lot of the Malaysian crew as well. I know I saw Michael Soiser with a camera crew. Pete's been sitting down with of the Asian contingent as we dive back into this. Davies, ace 10, 12 bigs in the small. A few options available here, Randy, or is this just a... I mean, there's a two big blind stack on the outer table. Th that's what's crossing his mind. But it looks like he's just going to push it in. Got to keep it simple. I mean, the big blind... Can't call you too wide. You know, yeah. Davies isn't going to be recklessly shoving in this spot. For sure. When there's a stone cold bubble of two big blinds. Yeah, we've spoken about this before, Randy, in the sense that, you know, if there's eight players as poorly qualified to play these events as I am out there, maybe this bubble goes on for an hour and a half, two hours, but. These pros that are just happy to take their spots as and when they're presented to them, they're just happy to run it. And Seth Davies proven that. And talking of happy to run it, you're only going to catch me running it once over on GG Poker in the PLO streets because every time I run it twice, Randy, they win the second run out. So <laughs> if you see me in the PLO cash games over on GG Poker, I'm going to be running it once. But for those of you looking to Join us at future try and stops. Maybe, you know, maybe run it twice. It'll reduce the variance a little bit. We'd love to see you at a future oh, okay. stop and know. qualifiers running time. into these Triton series available have, over on GG stuff. Poker. I'm not sure who's this. Not mine. Best of luck out there. Free rolls running throughout the series, as always. We'll be giving you guys the passwords in the chat. We are hand for hand. And there is currently a hand being played out over on table one between Kiat Lee and, I believe, Triton newcomer Should Ben be. Dung Pham from Vietnam. So we'll be keeping an eye on that one. How's everyone's day going so far? Let us know in the chat what you're up to. Uh, I don't know. Whereabouts uh, in the world you're tuning in from? All the time. 
Randy Liu in the commentary booth alongside myself, Henry Kilbane for <coughs> this one. Ali Najad yeah, how did will be Kobe jumping in everything? later There's on no today. Way you're taking that clip. <laughs> Good time for two kings. Lorenz here. Guess you just ship it in. Doesn't really seem like the type of time to just start min raising, inducing stone cold bubble, especially off of this stack, does it? Um, what's this? Off under of? the gun, like who who raises under the gun, not all in with this stack? Yeah, obviously. Oh, he's going to do it though. He's going to have some raise falls off of eight bigs, Randy. <coughs> Learn something like new. It looks strong. It does indeed. It is strong. It's pocket kings. <laughs> It's about as strong as it can get. Sorry? I'm not sure who's oh, in the sorry, big blind that he's raising into. Yeah, my bad. Bubble time here in event number two. Jans Aaron's widely regarded as one of the best online yeah. No Limit Hold'em tournament players in the world. Absolutely time. sick MTT player. Graf Tekel. True legend of the game. Coming with the min and picking Make up the blinds so in the easy. big blind ante. Look at the out of table, Randy. What do we see here? Looks like Thomas Mulocker involved in a button v big blind confrontation. Against Fam again, try to newcomer. Queen, Queen, seven, deuce to diamonds. Checks through on the turn. Knuckle it on over to Fam. Did he just blow a kiss? That's a odd way to check it. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy already. What's going on here? He, d he just blew a kiss, Mulocker's way. Before he even saw the whole card, he's <laughs> standing up and Stand ship up, it. He's like, ship it, baby. Ship it. Looked like a jack on the river, giving him two pair. A few people questioning why Jans Aaron's flag is of the British Virgin Isles. If I'm not mistaken, Jans is from the Netherlands. I'm not going to make an assumption. I'm not exactly sure. You're, you know, great point being made by Randy to, to assume is to make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> but if I'm not mistaken, there are unfortunately no countries, unlike the UK, we get the tax benefits of being professional poker players. Joke's on me, you actually have to win money to pay taxes <laughs> elsewhere. But the point that I'm trying to make is, you know, there are poker players that have taken up residency elsewhere. For mm -hmm. example, a lot of the Germans, you'll see them residing in Austria due to the, the generous tax uh, implications and laws out there. So just take everything you see in Did terms of flags up? with a grain of salt is all I'd say. Um, Noted. Yeah. Ponikov's jamming queen six offsuit. Oh, Hing Yang Chow's got ace jack, but you know what? There's a two big blind stack out there. What do you do? Stone cold bubble. What do you do, Randy? That is the question <laughs> here. Six big blinds for Hing Yang Chow and from Malaysia. Part of the Malaysian contingent. Plays for fun. 30. He actually has a Triton title in a PLO event. The very first one that was ever ran. Legend. Folds it. Discipline. Bubble. It seems power correct. play by Ponikovs. Yeah. He knows it. Offsuit. Chow Offsuit. announcing that he folded Ace Jack. 
I'm excited, Bradley. You could probably tell. Different pitch in my energy. I post, can hear it. Post, it. It's bubble time, chat. We're one off the money. Stone cold right. bubble. 40 buy-ins up top. M3. 24 oh, players I remain. Better. <laughs> some OG Triton players. Some newcomers. Some first timers. <clears throat> Easy gen for you. Mm -hmm. That mystery bounty, by the way, still five hours of late reg. Currently up to 80 entries, Randy. So already collected. 1.6 million in the prize pool. See the bigger stacks are trying to punish the table. Queen five of clubs, not a standard open undergun. On the bubble, big stack, that changes. But ace king for O'Dwyer. Stevie boy. He does have a lot of fold equity too, right? Because you're expecting the big stack to, to open wide. Yes, you've only got eight and a half blinds. Well, the short stack, Andrew Leatham, is going to be forced all in the next hand. So he is currently under the gun, will be in the big blind the next hand. So, tough spot for Steve. Although, O'Dwyer, legend of the game. I mean, talk about highlight reels and videos. This man's been on one at every festival from all corners of the globe. Push in a lot of chips, leave a little bit behind. Yeah. Just in case. Effectively jamming. <coughs> Obviously, we can see Mateos not going to be calling off in this spot. Big old pickup for O'Dwyer on the stone bubble. That, that, that is awesome, dude. Yeah, I love it. Wow. Is that like an emerald yeah, owl? It looks like jade. Or something. Well, <laughs> emerald. Especially that guy's, guy's all, in, all in dark over there. Yeah, so. yeah that's why you were folding to the shelf. Free. Uh, and I made, I made sure to raise to my lucky number. 555. <laughs> it's an odd lucky number. Scanning around to the out table, there is Mr. Andrew Levin that we were talking about, forced all in from the big. Our man's taking a nap <laughs> in between hands. You know, he knows he's here for the long haul. If he wants to win this one, it looks like he really might be napping. <laughs> he, hasn't, he hasn't moved. So it's Kiat Lee, who has opened, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, what a horrible hand to wake up with. Four stall in. Is that King of Hearts and King of Spades, 9-4? Up against a flopped. Ah, sorry, I do apologize. Got out. Queen, he does have outs. Flopped middle pair. Breezy is four across, but not the right kind. A nine or a four for Andrew, where he's going to be our stone bubble boy and the deuce of spades. Seals Andrew's fate. The bubble. This record-breaking event number two has been burst, Randy, and with that, the remaining 23 players all now guaranteed 30,000. Is it be... Wow, he's actually... He doesn't know what's going on. He does not know he's in the money. He's just chilling. My guy. My guy is just... Ding, ding, bam. Is that some new... It's a new meta. It's like a piece of pen. This was before they would facilitate for you. 
We're in some back room. It's like it's some, some new Wim Hof, Andrew Huberman, Andy Galpin style uh, meditation uh, at the poker table for <laughs> optimizing <laughs> longevity. <laughs> you know, in terms of fatigue and burnout, you know, if you want to look, you show up to these Triton events, you've got to find all the edges you can. <laughs> so we are in the money, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. We are, we are in the money, yeah. Yeah, you bust. <laughs> you can see 20, 24 <laughs> players and 24. I thought it was 23 players. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, but he, he busted for sure. They also announced it's in the money. Who are you going to trust? It? Us or your own Sorry eyes. About it, he Who are you going to trust us or your own eyes? Ten. Okay. I really hope I get dealt with <laughs> What a level would that be? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah, now, now it's updated. All right. Because usually you hear some clapping or something, but I guess everybody's too cool to clap. I, I was thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why is it, where's the clapping? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it would make the other guy feel bad, the bubble guy. You know, he's like, oh. Well, he did get a nine claw off, I mean. <laughs> well, dynamic should be shifted with that bust out. Short stacks are just going to go for it now. The next pay jump would be 2,500. That's what usually happens in those main events of 5Ks and 10Ks. Yeah, what are the early stories yeah, emerging problems. here, it takes longer, longer Randy, is well. that of Mark Robathan, who won a package into this series, a 100K uh, package, uh, if I'm not mistaken, over on ACR. It was ridiculous. decided like, to put that I money towards this 15k ah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we and it's looking no at his tendered mob total live earnings of 45,000 his best live cash prior to this event was $14,280 so a mint cash has already more than doubled his previous best career score and looking at his Hendon biggest buy-in Prior to this Florida event, took forever, and was, like was a 1,200 euro buy-in. Buy that's that's crazy. That's awesome. That's very. You know, a lot of people just dreamed their chance to take a shot at a Triton event, and let alone cash their very first event against such tough field in a record-breaking event. Mm. And he can just spin it up some more. Why not just take the title? Would love to see it. Would love to see Mark do well here. Chidwick's got no reason to wait around anymore. He's in the money. A7 suited. Yeah, expect to see this field go from 23 to 16 real quick, given how many short stacks there are. And, and speaking of short stacks, a triple three-way all-in on table one between Gail, Mulocker, and Sir Watts. Watson. I guess that's not a, it's not a huge compliment. <laughs> Usually they look very With the triple right? up. <laughs> Robert Watlow? Robert, Robert when when did, is he still alive? Or? No, it's like 100 years ago. Robert yeah, Watlow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll Google him soon. Was he American? Did he have that thing where he just like kept growing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like pituitary gland? Well, you kind of have to if you're the tallest man ever to ever live, right? April 11. That's someone in the chat pointing out that the 20k mystery bounty that is being updated over on the Try and Poker Plus stuff. app is in real time. Uh, yeah, okay. it is in real time. My ego has that same mm -hmm. disease. Doesn't contain spoilers. We're currently covering Stop. event number two. That one could have been in real time until. The stream starts, which won't be until around right? 10 p.m. tonight, local time. So Aaron's what, all in. Steven, if I had all your money, burn mine. Six, 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 five. Five. I think. Ace jack for Chidwick. Good time to clash. Hijack cut off. I think it's easily could be dominating the type of hands that Jans would jam to hijack with. Picking off those ace All tens, in. ace nine suited, ten jack. So two people are in, one jack dead. So ace king suited for O'Dwyer. Wow. Three ways. Another three way all in. Well. Oh. Hey. 
Yeah, I'd love to see that. Pair is good. Dwyer and Chidwick sharing outs. How much do you have, Stevie? It's less, right? Or? More than you. More? Okay. Yeah. Ah. One jack's been folded too. So Chidwick is in very bad shape. Two million chip pot. Dwyer it's covers good. both. 655, yeah. So far, so good on the 10 9 4 4. The two red sevens seven of Aaron's. It's a bit greedy. Hmm? Seven of spades. About the three of clubs. It's the fade. Why you got a ruin for us? King or a jack. Damn, I had pocket threes. Six fold. Should I? I guess that's the only On card to come. No dice, it is paint, but not the paint that O'Dwyer or Chidwick were looking for. So with that... What does it feel like? I've never dodged that many overcards my whole life. Actually, it's also my first time. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. What's it feel like? You look pretty happy about it. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> I mean, Good game, Steven. So one more cash for Chidwick. Seems to cash every event. Over average now. <laughs> well, I mean, considering average is what, like 12 picks or something? I hope so. No, I've never met the guys from Winamax, but I've heard really good things about them. Yeah. yeah. So, Phil Nagy asking Aaron, how does it feel, pal, to win a three way all in and dodge all those overcards? Nagy, by the way, becoming a a regular at the Triton series with his entourage of ACR crew. Yeah, it's his second Triton event. Loved it so much over in Cyprus. Decided to come out here. Have a team of videographers here as well. Following around the ACR pros and stormers of the likes. See, so saw that documentary. Mm -hmm. With Ebony, that was released. I want to say last week. A couple a more episodes uh, on that one to come. Uh, dealer to guess the cards. Yeah, like yeah it's not that actually. Fan. Like 50k free roll or something. In the mix. No, no, but he, he upped it. I think to 50 at some point. Ah, okay. So he said seven five seated, and the first card was. Wait, he could just say seven. He just said seven five of spades. Okay, I was gonna say because otherwise it's queen ten. Yes, this card was seven a byproduct of, of short stacks behind. After the second was whatever. Yeah, no one's got too much of a stack. But the thing is though, like I think if you give a free roll like that, Are let's say white chips for this. Uh, yeah. Let's say it is the hand, right? Would Jay actually be able to, to just act like it's another hand? Do you know what I'm saying? Like he's gonna give away some input then, right? Well, I think he's not that bad of person. I think so. I would I would think if you if you actually get seven five special you're like I mean Bossman Luca coming over. Just to inform you, gents, for the player of the year points, we have the on time points. So if you register on time, you take your seats within 10 minutes. The Reiterating you get extra points. what we discussed yesterday. Um, so we have a rule that if you're still in a tournament while the other one starts, if you. Uh, so Luca Vivaldi, just letting the players know you have a level length of the that, new tournament you know, in, to, to make things as fair as possible, given that these guys are still of, in this event. Through no the fault of their own, they are not able to currently register <laughs> event number three, which would normally mean that they don't get the extra bonus points for the on-time registration. Mm -hmm. But given that they're still in event number two, they're going to be giving a 30-minute grace period, if you will, window to register event number three should they bust yeah. this event. And then those points going towards the Ivan Liao Player of the Year, which and is if you have your phone, you can just use your Luxon for account and register Randy from right here. Especially for someone like Chidwick, right? That, <laughs> you know, is at the top of the leaderboard and Davies. Is this a commercial break? Yep. Yeah, no, I, it, it's, you know, it's, to be honest, I'm, I'm, a really, I'm a really big fan of Luxon. A lot of stuff going on over on table number one. McBoyfin has been elim eliminated. So Watts with pocket nines. McBoyfin not improving with his ace queen and so what's taking down really a 2.8 million chip pot. Lines. 
I hate waiting in line. Yeah, and I don't ask any questions. Sounds like Watson's running good, Compared winning two all ins. See, that, that's what makes it easy. Yeah. So yeah, after that, there was like everyone getting seven of spades. I was getting all the time all ins with seven of spades. But the thing, yeah, the thing with those kind of things is though, like. And now you asked for seven of spades, <laughs> and I was like. Uh, what's but that? you, you actually oh. folded it? Michael Jackson's yeah, thriller. That had a thing, black seven. Maybe club. Thank you. Ace Queen under gun. Big line is a hundred K now. Yeah, that's wild. Half a starting stack now. The big blind, 20 players remain. Average stack, just 17 bigs, Randy. It's shallow. Byproduct of them short stacks just doubling up. You see how Dwyer is thinking about making a stance of Jack-10. Figures it's gonna be an overlay from the small blind, big blind, big blind ante. Yeah, currently seven-handed has three hands to find the spot before he's going to be forced to put in half of his chips in the big blind. Does he want to take it with Jack-10? Also asking how wide Undergun is opening and how it would fare against Jack-10. Ying Chow picks up Ace Queen. This is going to be easy all in. Chop up coming. Oh, whoa, whoa. Now, we too hold, early. hold your horses, Randy. <laughs> We've had our fair share of insane runouts already so far this series. Yeah, more often than not, they're going to chop this one up. And okay. on the Ace Jack Six. Can I say it now? They're going to chop it up. You can indeed. I'll allow it. This one up, boys. 20 players remain. And everyone currently received their first ladder. 32,500 guaranteed for these final 20. Next pay jump will come when we get down to the final 17. Barbero still out in front. Tan Chuan currently in second. Sir Watts in third. Brian Kim in fourth. And Alex Kulev in fifth, rounding out the top five. Yeah, Nacho's had an amazing day so far with that insane hero call earlier. Dude. Loved it. Dude. Can we talk about the bluff as well, though? I, mean. I know. Like, jeez. Insane hand. These two Vietnam... Newcomers yeah. are just really just putting on a show. Uh, have you have you played poker in this part of the world before, like like Thailand, no. Vietnam? I like have it? not. Three twenty-five. They don't call it the Wild East for nothing, mate. <laughs> like it's uh, <laughs> some work. street poker being played out here, pal. I love street you, poker. You take your theory and you can, yeah, you know, can stick it. Can't put people on ranges. Ace three suited. Tempting. Hijack yeah. jams, 3.5 blinds. We know he's desperate. Four bigs. Maybe he can get the overlay from the big blind. Lay it down. Go. Wow. 325? That's going to ask for a count. Does make the call. Cards on their back. Steve V. 
player at risk. Let's throw Dwyer. Getting it in good against Graftickle. 8.70 in the middle. Five to come. And you said five to come, didn't you? Five to come and a five on the flop, giving Jans the best hand. A pair of fives, however, four of diamonds, giving O'Dwyer an additional four outs. No dice as the four of spades pairs the board and we lose Steve O'Dwyer in at 20th. Going to head home with 32,500 in this event number two of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in Hoi An, Vietnam. Is it possible to get uh, some color? This guy, these online players, Randy. Color up. These online grinders. Hey, listen, I don't want this many chips. Okay. Possible to get some color up? I bet he plays in big blinds as well, doesn't he, when he <laughs> grinds online? 100%. 100%. 100%. These sure guys, Jesus. One time with no color up. Really? It'd be fun to just play a tournament. Uh, no chip, no chip no races. Chip, no chip color ups. You know, I, I, feel like, I feel like back in the day they used to do that. Yeah, you get to get those monster stacks of chips. But back in the day they used to do it the, yeah, exactly. like less, right? Exactly. Like they had, yeah. used to have these piles. The old poker pictures are great. Everyone just has these gigantic stacks. But the pace of the of play though and like, Counting stacks right. is just terrible. You just open, it's like three stacks of times. <laughs> there was a culture <laughs> of creating beautiful stacks, right? Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, like building building for, a nice for tower. For people who played limit cash games, that was a big thing. Because they would always just have, you know, tons and tons of chips and limit cash. That was back in your day, Randy. Yeah, I missed those times. <laughs> <laughs> you see it a lot at the World Series main. Yeah, right? yeah. It's got these mountain of chips. No, I think you do a lot. I've seen some yeah. pictures of you with yeah. towers in front of you back in the day. You, have you seen the ones of no chips in front of me too? Uh, that would normally, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so let me just reiterate. Uh, the pictures that I did see of you, I had to scroll to like the 15th <laughs> page on Google. The ones with no chips were the ones at the top of the searches, but <laughs> I was trying to do you a solid. Mark saying you guys have got to try it out here in the Philippines. Money just goes flying. You can have a, have 14 starting stacks to losing your car inside 15 minutes. Well, how about... How many you play? Uh, one seven. Getting it in against Ponikovs and losing your remaining 440,000. That is potential outcome for Nagy, although he is going to be getting it in good against Ponikovs unless Mateos. Actually, pretty interesting because Mateos gets to close the action or if he thinks that Ponikovs might Test. fold to Show a jam, then he could maybe make a move. He's going to close the action. It's going to be three-way. Uh, no side pot. Right. Everyone like loves a three-way, Randy. Odds. 19 left. Thinking of a very particular flop. Turn in. <laughs> <laughs> Does that include three fives? Nagy, by any chance? It's like that one. Similar. That's nope. not a very similar picture. But Queen, <laughs> Jack, 10, <laughs> Rainbow, yeah. Ponikovs, you guys are both good looking way out in front with middle it's pair and an open ender. Gargoyle. No, no, no. Nagy no. and okay. Mateos so yeah, drawing to Broadway. He, he, when did he live? I believe it was in the 1920s. Right. Like, when Ponikovs died, thinking whether it's better really to obviously. Yeah. Those or guys check. Don't make, those guys don't make it very long. And how tall was he, does it say? I'll find out and figure out what hands. It's 8 foot 11 feet. 125? I, I have no idea. So it's a all. really, really I small bet. 125k is 1.5 million. It's less than 10%. Almost 3, I think. It's, no probably, like, it's probably like 280. Whoa. Two, 274. Yeah. For its price, I don't really see <laughs> how Mateos can go anywhere. Wow. Wow. He yeah. agrees with you, Randy. Went to this, huh? I went to this place that had a... Like you hit the ceiling everywhere. Yeah. That had a full-size statue of him. Now 250,000 in see the possible. side pot. Three of diamonds rolling off, and that yeah. should should be the end of the hand for Mateos if Ponikovs elects Would you rather be really short to barrel really again tall? on this turn card. Ponikovs is wondering how often he's getting trapped by Mateos. Right. Like, let's we don't have to worry about Ace King didn't get in pre-flop. So what? Jack Just 10, Queen 10, Queen Jack. But these hands might raise the flop sometimes, limit. right? Since the stack to pot yeah, ratio is pretty limit. small. Yeah. He only bet 125k into 1.5 million. So let's say one meter versus 274. It's a little tricky, King Jack. It's it's a tough one spot, right? Because 
One meter. Mateus can yeah, still have queens, the queen, queen nines, queen eights of the world. Yeah. If you're that tall, you just can't do anything. And Mateus yeah, might so be the one that's concerned that Ponikov's just flat off of 16, maybe trapping from the cutoff, yes. opening the door for someone behind to slip up and make a mistake. He could easily have kings, aces, queens. For sure. Queens. 30, 40, what, I mean, 250 is already so tall. So. Oh, oh, does he have ace king? Does he reshove ace king? Oh, no. Likely. I think he reshoved ace king, but we don't know if 100% certainty. He's going to bet again. Really well calculated. Needs a king. Nagy drawing to just three outs. Ace, no good. You can see just 7% equity. I think about like two times. Polkov's holds. We're going to be down to the final 18 players and yeah, holds. So he does. WPN CEO Mr. Phil Nagy out in 19th, adding another cash to his Triton track record. I mean, you probably are allowed for getting a cash at each stop he's been to so far. Doesn't play every single event. I'll take it. Ponikovs moving on up. It would be horrific. Yeah, it's already it's already bad enough. And if you're tiny, it's like you know, if you're like Webster size. She was saying, what hand are they talking about? Timestamp idea, anyone? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, don't have the timestamps as Randy and I were in the booth. And we're not keeping track of the timestamps on YouTube. But what I would suggest is checking out the Triton social media platforms in the form of Twitter and Instagram. I know the team behind the scenes are working tirelessly around the clock to clip some of the most... What about you? Would you rather just be giant or tiny? I mean, we've had. Well, uh, is it fair to call them outrageous? Said. We've had some outrageous had amounts had today, and it would not surprise me if they are already up on Instagram. And if they're not, they'll be up. All of the big hands from today will be up at some point. But I think quality of life—it has to be short. It's better. Yeah. Overall. That's. I mean, maybe. That's not. That's not something to underestimate in terms of quality of life either you know i know you would be scared tall, like <laughs> the attention you get is positive when you're short the attention you get is negative yeah. and that would really affect your quality of life yeah, yeah true but yeah that's a, that's a that's actually a pretty hard question yeah. like would so you I'm rather just be waiting would you rather be 220 or like oh, oh, another player to be brought like to the table players, and yeah exactly like that's like and they can function. There are like normal. You guys there. asked. We delivered, Mr. Sir? Linus Love. We're there was the, someone who continuously for asked us for yeah. Linus. What about you? Here you go. How, can we just take a minute to appreciate I'm saying, I'm saying this a, lineup, by table. the way? Linus Love, Seth Davies, Ponikovs, Adrian Mateos, Jans Ahrens, all at the same feature table. How much do you have? One, one, three, five. <laughs> I appreciate it. Posting. Murderer's Row. Me? Someone's yeah, got to yeah, go down. Six. Right. Nine eight suited. Bunch of fish, if you ask me. Mate. Bunch of fish. Put me in there. Give me twenty big blinds. Tag me in, coach. Linus has got jack nine. It's enough of a hand to see a flop. Closing the action, min raise. Realize your equity pretty well, given sub ten big blinds. Hard to make a mistake post flop. Missed it. Obviously, I say that in jest. I mean, give me 20 big blinds so I can go and donate, and be charitable to these absolute beasts. A little continuation bet from Aaron's chipping up nicely here after that big hold with the sevens against the ace king of O'Dwyer and ace jack of Stephen Chidwick. to seventh in chips. 17 players remain as Pachara Wongwichit has been eliminated in 18th. Martin Lewis saying more like tuck me in coach. <laughs> Are you not wrong? That is exactly what it would be. It would be put me in to just get sent back to my hotel room and tucked <laughs> into bed by these 
just elite. We don't have black chips, right? No. Poker I players. It's gonna get Linus Love in a small Which blind. Oh, nice he's just got five three off suit. Does he try and get a free flop? It's gonna try and do it, but Ace Eight is just too much of a hand for Davies not to jam. Can we just take a moment to appreciate? You want to say this line Love's, again? Linus Love's <laughs> shirt. Just reminding everyone, you know, to eat healthily, eat clean, strawberries, Davies says all of it. Taking that one down, uncontested. Nacho Barbero, still out in front on the outer tables. Crushing. Cruising along. Five into the mark. Rounds to El Matador. He's five off suit. Seventeen remain. We are in the money here. Event number two. It's fifteen K. Teos coming for Min, and he's going to run into it. Two eights. Ace nine suited for Pawn and Cobbs. Well, that's going to be disappointing to see the action that's incoming. Yeah, Davies does announce himself and moves all in over the top of the Mateos open, 1.25 million. Action on Ponokovs now with a real interesting decision, Randy. Didn't count. Cut off open, small blind jam, knows that Davies is good enough to have hands like ace four, ace five, jack 10, king queen, some of these suited broadways come to mind. Does he want to take this spot with the ace nine suited? He's going to have the best hand a lot of the time. He will, he will also have the worst hand as well. Davies will be jamming better aces. He still has to worry about Mateos, and it's 12 and a half blind, so it's a decent amount of stack. By no means an easy decision. It's 1.2. Gonna lay it down. And expect to see Mateos let go of the ace 5-0 as well. Save some face. I don't think he's. Hey, listen, I've been proven wrong before. I don't want to <laughs> say it assume. as if it's preordained. This is El Matador, you know, one of the best poker players in the world, but does eventually let go of the ace five. Davies chipping up nicely in the form of a couple of jams, picking up the blinds and the big blind ante uncontested. Back to back. And it sounds like, Randy. We're down to 16. Redraw. Final two table redraw due to the fact that there has been an all in and an elimination on the outer tables. Just waiting for confirmation on that. Down to the final 16, and it's Sir Watts out there putting people in the blender, eliminating John So. And it's moved up to second in chips overall. So we are down to the final 16 players, final two tables now. Randy, everyone guaranteed 36,100 for their efforts. See the racks being handed out. Quick look at the counts at this table. I mean, even still, Randy, with two tables left, Linus Love on seven 
bigs. Hing Yang Chao on four bigs. A little bit of a shove fest coming up. We're still going to have that shove fest, and you know, Hing Yang Chao just four blinds is looking to get it in. Eventually, we will approach that final table bubble, and that's when you know we're going to have those deeper stacks, going to have some grinding. But right now, it's still a bit of a shove fest. Yeah, and those middling stacks kind of you know handcuffed as well. You know, with those short stacks around, there's another ladder coming up in the form of three thousand. Once we get down to the final fifteen, so everyone kind of just proceeding with caution until these short stacks either double or are eliminated. Uh, one of the early stories emerging out of this one, obviously in the 25K Super Millions, we had the Daniel Smilkovic spin, mm -hmm. then obviously had Webster Lim joining the two-time Champions Club. But this one, one that I want to point out and focus on is the appearance of a Mark Rubathan. Mm -hmm. Largest ever live buy-in by more than 10x. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, looking at his Hender Mob, his biggest buy-in prior to this was a 1,200 euro buy-in. Has now smashed his previous best cash by almost 3x, I believe, to 2.5x, 3x. So he's in the middle of the pack with 19 bigs. Do you think there's going to be a threshold that will be crossed where the nerves and the pressure really kick in for him? Because as if this isn't insane enough already that he's in Vietnam playing these high stakes, he now finds himself in the money with 600,000 for first. Yeah, well, he definitely well, he got through the first hurdle, which is making into the money. Um, that feels very good. Right now, he knows that the pay jumps are a little bit smaller until we get to the final table. But if he can reach that final table, there could be some nerves coming to play. He needs to play his game. Stacks are a little bit more shallow, so he really shouldn't be too much of a difference in his play. But uh, I'm excited to watch him make a deep run here. It's really exciting to see like a qualifier, like playing such a big stakes that he doesn't normally do. Yes, the poker dream, right, being delivered here at the Huana Golf Resort and Casino in Vietnam. Nacho Barbera leading the pack in event number two. I'm going to be jumping out. We're going on a short four-minute break for the final two-table redraw. Ali Najar is going to be coming in, calling the action down to the final table. And what a final table it's going to be. 600,000 for first. We'll see you guys on the flip side of this short four-minute break. Peace. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker.
And welcome back inside the booth here from the Hoi An Resort and Golf in Hoi An, Vietnam. Ali Najad filling in for Henry Kilbane, who brought us through the first couple of frames of play today. Randy Liu here as well, continuing coverage from the third day of this Triton Super High Roller Series in Vietnam. But it is day two of event number two, the very approachable 15K buy-in event where the money bubble burst. We started with 37 players earlier today. Uh, down to currently 16, a redraw, two tables left, and then, of course, we'll be going to the final table once we get down to nine players. And Randy, Nacho Barbero, the Argentinian, has made some waves. I actually, while you guys were here in the booth, was grabbing a bite with Patrick Antonius over in the uh, the green room where uh, you know players are taking little snacks, noshes in between things, and Nacho comes storming in and tells us all the story of the epic seven deuce hand <laughs> where he said he looked at this dude and this dude didn't have it and he just looked him up exciting stuff out there so far yeah that was exciting hand he just caught him with a pair of kings on a four flush multiple straights out there impossible and he's the chip leader he's playing great uh and you know we are going to play down to a winner today we did make the money the big stacks are going to go keep on pushing, and the short stacks are still trying to hang in there, but they got time. They got to make a move now, or they're going to get shut out. No doubt about it. Currently, the shortest of all stacks in the field by our count belongs to Hing Yang Chow, one of the Malaysian contingent. 435K, good for just four big blinds. Those blinds, 50, 100,000 with a 100K big blind ante, 600,000 up top. A guarantee of 60,000 to everybody who makes the final table. Of course, all of this information always available to all of you at home, just as it is to Randy and I, courtesy of the Triton Poker Plus app. If you haven't already done so, do yourself a favor and download it. As you get a look at the chip counts at our feature table, brought to you by Poker Stake, our official staking partner, Alex Kulev. At the top of this leaderboard, 3.3 million. That's good for third overall of the remaining 16 players. Kiat Lee, a Triton veteran, out there with just north of 3 million, not far behind him. And Linus Lolliger, not too often, Randy, we say his name and then describe him as the, quote, short stack, but that's where he finds himself in this lineup here at this table. Of course, just one click ahead of Hing Yang Chow, 15th overall, eight big blinds, as you mentioned at the top of coverage. Moves need to be made, and they need to be made sooner than later. Wei Tan Kian. Puts it into the muck. Same story for Kiat Lee, and there's the hero we deserve. <laughs> Ten Dung Pham. Instant all in. Nine seven, very unfortunate to be sharing a seven. What with Mateos, who defended. Nine, seven. A seven suited in the big blind. Got his man in a world of hurt. Sifam closing his eyes, trying to channel all the run good that he can, but that is not what he had in mind. Dynamite flop for Mateos. Top pair, nut flush draw. Fam did hit the nine, but needs another. Well, that's an upside down nine on the turn. Can he turn one right side up? As he has two outs once to double through the Spaniard. Not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. A nod of the head. Thumbs up and uh, avoid Correct. for sure. Yeah. Left behind by Fam. Okay. <laughs> I like his spirit. Yeah, positive vibes on this mm -hmm. guy. My first exposure to him, like one of the locals. I'm here in Vietnam playing under the Vietnamese I flag. You, like it <laughs> was walking through the tournament area and observing yeah, him nice. bust <laughs> Kanapong Thanaratakul, KT as we call him. And as the board was developing, he was sort of cackling and rubbing it in to his opponent, but it wasn't from the standpoint of malice. It was genuine excitement and happiness to be there. And after KT busted, he waved by. And I don't think KT was quite ready for it. Almost. If I run good, He's giving back to the community. Number 
Jack nine, not gonna be enough for Linus Lolliger. Now, one of the abbreviated Dutch contingent, Arends, ace six suited. Min raise open. Ten nine offsuit. Seems like a solid hand to take a flop with. Closing the action. How much did you start? One point nine. One point nine, yeah. Two queens and a deuce after the defend from the big blind from the Briton who checks. As dry as it gets, gonna throw a little attenuation bet, knock out that equity. Grinding. Bit by bit. Every little bit helps, by the way, Randy, and I know that sounds self-evident, but when you've got 30-minute levels on your hand, on your hands, rather, you just have to cobble away and keep pace with the ever-increasing blinds or your stack just gets diluted into nothingness. And on that topic, up go those blinds. 50 and 125,000 now. Yeah, even the chip leaders of this table, they're they lose one pot, they're down to, you know, 10, 12 big blinds, and that's not ideal. Tight three-man cluster at the top of that leaderboard there. Last but not least, from Malaysia, 4.5 million, please welcome Calvin Tan. Jans puts ace three into the muck. Ace deuce also finds its way there. Early position, not where you want to have that stuff. Nine, eight, not much of a hand. Pitch it. King. Well, normally you would try and trap this type of hand, but Linus has got 500k remaining. It's only like four blinds. That's right. Hold on. Yeah, not gonna bother. Is Jack four off enough though? Oh. It hurts. You can feel it. He's got the big blind and the big blind Annie already in the middle. Just wondering how many, I mean, could be up against like 10 nines, 10 eights. These hands would jam. Eight nines. Is there some pay jumps around the corner? That's another question you might want to look into. Thank you. See, he's in the tank. Big blind anti hurts. He goes for it. Yeah, decides he's going to take a stand in this spot here. Jack four, obviously, not performing great naughty, naughty against Ace Linus. King. Jack four up. Naughty, naughty line. But he knows the Jack four hand. <laughs> At least you tank. <laughs> At least you tank, says her ends. Linus being called naughty, and a naughty little gutter ball on the eight high board here as Lolliger picks up added outs in the form of sevens, and there's one. No waiting on the turn. We could still chop it. Four or nine would get that done. And instead, a useless king. That is brutal for Mark. I'll tell you who it's even more brutal for. Everybody Everyone else, else <laughs> in the field. <laughs> Obviously, Mark financially impacted, but Linus is the kind of guy you don't want to let hang around. Only four pips off. Okay. 
Yen suggesting that the Jack-4 is four pips away That's from being far. an appropriate <laughs> defense. Jack-8. <laughs> well, Henry said earlier that Mark, <laughs> biggest buy-in before was $1,200. Believe that? Yeah. Wow. Biggest cash. He's du more than doubled his biggest cash. He qualified here. Pretty on remarkable. ACR. Yeah, it's just... That's a huge spot for him right there, Vase King. 39,900, the next payout, by the way. As Pham collected 36,100 for that 16th place finish. And it actually looks like perhaps at our lone outer table, that 15th place money is already been collected by Thomas Mulocker, the Austrian, who appears to have busted in 15th. So now just 14 remain. Linus picks up a six offsuit. All in. Tap a hand where you're not really looking to trap. You just want to jam it in. Doesn't play well post flop. Easy chips. I like easy chips. Yeah. They don't always make it easy, though. It's not like you just grab them when you want. That's true. <coughs> a little easy salsa would pair nicely, by the way, <laughs> if available. Easy guac. Now, did you guys already touch on this morning's test run of the Vietnamese Coast Guard? Yes, we did. Henry did mention he described you as a Persian mermaid. Well, listen, I've watched my fair share of rom-coms. <laughs> <laughs> feel like I know the scene he's talking about. You emerge glistening from the ocean. I was more waterlogged than anything else. <laughs> it's choppy out there. It is. But I'll tell you what, out of the three of us, you did it. It hit the beach. Only one. No, us online got players have to support each other. Only one made it back. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are looking right. for <laughs> no breaks at all? Yeah. I AKA agree. everyone I does it. I agree. I agree. Well this is Alex Kulov's second event ever at a Triton. Two for two. Yeah, I thought you were five, going to say it was yeah. his second green smoothie. Is this your Looks like something healthy he's time. working over there. I, think I focus on the hard-hitting like facts. Yeah. 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 Okay, I can play it. Yeah. let me look for some of these <laughs> random facts out yeah. there. I think Cyprus was even better. I've yet to see oh, someone right, drink yeah. a Vietnamese coffee, though, on our feature. I wonder if it's going to keep growing like that. Well, I've had one already. I think, I think it will. Yeah, probably. I can you need to catch up. Easily yeah. solve that yeah. problem for you. Mateos with queen, eight suited. 2.2 2.3. Min raise open. 2.2. Molliger now with 1.6, freshly minted. Yeah, just temptation with the 7 8 suited, but he knows better. Naughty Linus. <laughs> it hurts him, it pains him. Right. But Ace Jack, much easier spot. Solid hand, playing from a small blind, more incentivized to push it in, use the fold equity. He's thinking about something. Is there merit to calling preflop? Mateos opens from early position. A little bit of a worry given we are playing seven-handed. Contemplate his decisions. Fold would not be in the playbook, I'd imagine. So he's two time banks here. What's he thinking about? I'm not exactly sure. Are we on some kind of pay bubble here? We are. If you can survive one more player, you get another four thousand. Although he's got him, he's got everyone covered. 
so not as important. Maybe it seems like the sizing. He's wondering if maybe he can 3-bet smaller rather than pushing all the chips in. Find some way to maneuver. Right on cue. Three scoops to six and a quarter. Back over to Mateos. Yeah, but with Queen 8 suited, it's, it's just hard to play. Yeah, even all the talent and ambition on the Spaniard, he isn't looking to enter confrontations against the Reaper. Big stack at this table, Kulev. Yeah, apparently one of the best, current best online MTT players in the game. One for one thus far here in Vietnam as he finished ninth in the GG Super Millions. And we take a moment to remind you that any platform you can think of, we are available to interact with there, be it Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Get involved and get into a better way to watch poker. And the Triton Poker Plus app, of course, not least among those platforms, the very same one that's used by all of us here in the booth, as well as all of the players in real time out in the event as they seek to make informed decisions. Mateos, a decision of his own off of 1.9 million. Min Reyes. Has Linus decided to boycott buttons? <laughs> what exactly do we owe this dead sexiness to? He boycotted them last trip as well. Ace King for Kiat Lee from yeah, Malaysia. There'll be no boycotting of Ace King, but off of 2.8 million. Let's observe how Kiat wants to approach yeah, things. Know. And it is for all of it, yeah, Mateos. Makes yeah, the call and. Run it twice? Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, you know, no, Kiat. So like you a run it twice kind of guy, Randy, or one time? I like to run it once. Wow. <laughs> well, I like to try to get lucky at one time. You're like, I'm taking the worst of it. I can't possibly <laughs> suck out twice. Oh, boy. Yeah, run it twice. Yeah, the king high board, a disaster for Mateos, who is covered by Kiat Lee and has just two outs. Deuce of spades, okay. not one of them. Can the Spaniard get lucky on the end to survive? Ooh, close. Three side spade. Not the stuff that he needed though. As Mateos delivers the remainder of his tokens over to Kiat Lee and will head to the window to collect 14th place money, 39,000. 900 officially. We think we're going to get another Malaysian champion here because Kia Lee on pace, chip leading it now. Yeah. Five million in chips. Why not? Good friends of Webster. Chinwei Lim, the event one champion. What have we here? It looks like a healthy dose of chips have found their way into the middle at one of our outer tables, turning to the Triton Poker Plus app for some real-time information. <coughs> Looks like Tan Juan's got himself involved in that particular exchange. Bear with us. Wi-Fi is being choked off by a, a room full of streamers and journalists, the players. A lot of bandwidth demands being placed upon us, but we will effort a breakdown there. I am being told that Tan Juan was eliminated in that exchange. And he had pocket kings, the action, with Nacho Barbero and Seth Davies in the small and big blind, respectively, was an all-in from Hing Yang Chow, the short stack, to 1.2 million. And then Alex Panikovs ripped it over the top of him on the button. Chuan woke up with the two kings. And it was ace-king for Chow, ace-jack suited for Panikovs. Chow's ace-king was suited as well. And then king-king for Tan and... 
An unbelievable 10 deuce four with two diamonds on the board where Chow had himself the nut flush draw. Then a five on the turn gave both of the ace highs wheel gut shots. And then on the river came the ace. So Chow was able to double. Ponikovs had him covered and the two kings were downed. And that was all she wrote for China's Tan Xuan, who adds to his career Triton earnings. Yeah, that's it's unfortunate for him, but uh, I love seeing him play. One of, you know, he, he missed the last couple stops, but it's good to see Tan back in the mix. Get jumping that mystery bounty that is growing in field size as we speak. 14th place, by the way, was good for 39, uh, sorry, 13th place was good for 43,900. Static payout at 12th, which is where we find ourselves now. 8-7 suited for Mark. Small blind versus big blind. Tan, by the way, will go. One million. One step closer to almost seven million in career Triton earnings. The one-time Triton title winner, his ninth cash. That title's in short deck, isn't it? It's a good guess. It was actually a 100K GBP, British Pound short deck event at the Lese in London in 2019. There were some epic cash games that got played yes. on that trip, if you'll remember. Upstairs in the salons. Seth Davies officially the short stack now. 11 bigs. Just 10K shy of Lolliger. Pocket fives for Kiat Lee. Push all the chips in there. Putting the pressure on these short stacks. Yep. Ace Queen. You're, you cover me, right? Ooh. 22 blinds. It's not, <laughs> not what you expect to see. Seventh in chips overall is Jan Zarens right now with 12 remaining. You've got five shorter stacks than yours. And by the way, the cluster isn't tight. In fact, the drop-off starts at Jan's, who has 23 bigs to start this hand. And then goes down to Brian Kim at 15 bigs, all the way down to 11 bigs. Nonetheless, he decides he is going to spin the Wheel of Fortune against these two fives. ICM pressure be damned. Yeah, he felt it was, yeah, but he was dominated that spot it's way too many, it's a lot just of enough. Well, he is behind, but 46% equity pre-flop and a lot more than that post-flop as you see him slip to a 9-1 to one favorite with two to come against these pocket fives. Brilliant developments. The advantage even more solid courtesy of the nine of hearts. Just got a fade of five, and he's done exactly Do that. Well, that chip lead wasn't held too long. <laughs> sure wasn't. Yeah, yes, Kiat yeah, showered Mateos and then slid the chips over to Jans. Look at just part of what these guys will be playing for. The trophy, the Shambhala Jewels bracelet. Points, of course, yes, toward the Ivan Liao Player stuff. of the Year award. Just one flip. Record setting, 172 entries built this prize pool here in event number two. 2.58 million total. 600K is going to go to the champ. That's plenty for a 15K. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. 
been a joy to watch the first timers, Randy. It's uh, it's like your first trip to Poker Disneyland, right? <laughs> Poker Disneyland. You're like, I didn't realize that the Magic Kingdom <laughs> was out there somewhere. I mean, the experience really is bar none the best around for those looking for a place to play safe, secure, and professionally administered high-stakes poker. Well worth the travel, wherever you're coming from. Two queens. It is two solid stacks here. He's got the, the chip lead. Yeah, the overall chip lead, not just here at this feature table. I think he's going to put pressure on because it's going to be interpreted more as you know, him trying to steal the pot. Might expect his limps to get isoed or raised a lot less given the stack situation. 9-5 off suit, not enough to fight with for Kulev, who I know Kilbane has been very keen on. Yeah, he, he loves Kulev. Says he's one of the Regarded as one of the best in the game currently. Mm -hmm. I think he said Patrick Leonard said that. Playing under the Bulgarian flag. Future of me, I believe his name was. Yeah. Well, he's, he's played well. Just keep Not seeing new better. newcomers, new Not stars. Oh. Taking their shot at the Triton events. Eventually these newcomers are going to be the veterans. Yeah. And we got the super veterans, the ones that didn't hear. The OGs, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, the OGs. It's a better name. Kiat Lee could be considered among them. I'll put him as a OG. Really kind of the core founders, the core supporters of the tour, many of them Thank hailing from right Malaysia, obviously. Uh, two Ties to two million behind. Triton co-founders, Paul Fua and Thank you. Richard Yong. Yeah, he's been entering these events from the get-go. Ace four. Not the best hand, but if you're getting this price, might as well see a flop. King Jack five, monotone as its top pair for Kiat Lee, the under the gun opener, but the only flush draw and this heads-up confrontation belongs to Tan. It's nice to be able to kick out someone's got 40% equity. Ace four. Won't be able to realize it. Those baby flush draws are so pesky, Randy. You, know, you feel like maybe I've got the only heart, but... It yeah, but you got to think about the flip side. Okay, maybe I hit my flush. He's got a bigger flush. I'm getting losing more chips for no reason. Right. Kulev with a bazooka on the button. Kiatli's got Queen Jack, 20 big blind effective. Just lost that monstrous pot. Take flop here. All straightforward stuff thus far. Two spades, two sixes, and a seven. Swing and a miss in both seats. Very, very dry board. This far in a tournament, you don't really see people get as creative. So you can kind of... Just throw some chips out there, expecting your the big line to play relatively straightforward. Betting the minimum, but you know what? Kiat Lee's thinking the price is 
good enough. I'll make the call, see what develops. Maybe I can make a move on you on the Turner River. Maybe I hit my card. Nine of spades is a bit worrisome for Kuliv because, you know, you can see the straight draws to check call and now they've got a pair or maybe you can slow play. Plus draw got there as well. The min bet on the flop does invite more loose calls on the flop. Yeah. So Kulev is aware of this. Going to play pot control with a check back here and then make a decision on the river, which is a good one for him, I'd say. Seven pairs. Yeah, not too shabby. Queen high, it has some showdown value. Not a lot, but just enough. He does beat those counterfeited pocket pairs as well. But does jack high or worse check back? I don't, I'm not sure, but you can see that Kiat's figured that he's got to take a stance at it to take down this pot. He is up against ace high and king high a lot. 575k. 575? It's credible. Yeah, it is. The sizing is appropriate. Obviously, a lot of times when we know we're bluffing, we want to size up and just really discourage our opponent from calling. But against top-tier opposition such as Alex Kulev, we know that that's going to read transparently. I'm not going to push him off his hand just because you've sized up. So let's see, what kind of hands is Kulev? He needs to ask the question, well, would uh, would an ace high ever make this play? Try to move me off the same type of hand. Counterfeits? Oh, what a lay down. Well played by Kiat Lee. Yeah, very much so. I think that really small bet on the flop allowed Kiat Lee to still stay in the hand. If he was faced with a bigger bet, might have just pitched that queen jack. Mm -hmm. One of the pros and cons of downsizing to the minimum on the flop. Of course, you get a better price doesn't inform you that much, but it is the minimum amount to be invested in order to bring the pot to a close. Which, of course, it often does not do, just given the price being laid. on jam, ace nine. Let's talk about Kiat Lee. Randy, 1.2 million plus in career Triton earnings. He had a, a third and a second at our last festival in North Cyprus. Both short deck events, though. Mm -hmm. 30K and 40K, respectively. Does play the no-limit events, but all of his results have in come deck. in short deck. Safe to say he's going to be playing some short deck later this oh, yeah. trip. Yet to shift gears to that part of the program as we've kind of front-loaded the no-limit events to the first week, and then... We'll shift gears to short deck as we see Lee putting everything on request from these blinds with pocket sixes and easy folds. Fundamentally sound kind of guy, Kiat Lee. Yeah, no, he's very well versed in no limit hold'em. Just hasn't had the fortune to make a big score in it. But now's a good time, record breaking field. Haven't seen Ferdinand Putra here at this festival. That's true. Love you, know, FP. Uh, he just thought about him. Yeah. Have a little break. Mm. He's so oh, cool. No. And how you buff? No. It's a cool customer, right? Maybe just chill for a bit. I swear the only reason I didn't say customer sure was because of you. <laughs> I, I didn't want the ridicule. Marcus is probably even skipping it, sir. Yeah. Pocket fives is down but I think he will for Alex Gulev, just folds beat. it, first position. Yeah, that's a good idea, 
Rip City here for the ace deuce of Kianwei Tan. Off of 1.2 million. Sub 10 bigs. Gets through. What about you? I have a lot of out there. <laughs> but uh, I Both think me, you should be excited. So no oh, Aaron Zhang. <laughs> Come on. Mr. Mini Rays. Love I'm it. Not sure how it is really excited cool. to see him here. Yeah. Good to see him and yeah, would, Tan Schwen back actually. in the mix at the Triton series. I'm not sure um, how to do it with the bounties in this one, like when they come into play, because that matters a little bit. I have no idea. Do you know that? Because it matters a little bit on what, like, how late you want to rush, basically. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, no idea. I let the smarter people figure it out for me. So who's the smarter, smarter mm -hmm. people? Just, you know, I visualize some faces and I ask them. It's not a bad story. Well, I can tell you my face is not to be visualized when you're <laughs> looking for <laughs> they didn't think of us, smart did input. <laughs> yeah, it depends on how many coffees I've had, of course. Looks That's like the all-in button has been placed. In front of who? And a call Three has been made as well. Good luck. Good luck. See an ace. Where did the jam come from? Thanks. Looks like... Bear with us here. Two from the big time. There it is. It was Linus off of the shortest of all stacks of these remaining 12 players. Ripped the A6 suited and his run into tens for Kulev. I don't see an ace on that flop. In fact, we're correct. 8-4 deuce. Walliger. Looking for an ace, and right away on the turn, it shows up. Needs to fade a 10, and he's done it. Second straight time that Lolliger has been all in with the worst of it. Jack four, now ace six, against ace king and pocket tens mm -hmm. respectively. My ex area of expertise. Yeah, uh, of course. This is when you let us know once again that everyone remain in this tournament does not like to see this man get more chips. Oh, yeah. 75. Small brand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Floor. Ah, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Floor, this guy's running running a little too good for my taste. There's one water left, right? Could I have that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, no, it's all good. Oh, may maybe, maybe you should. It's always dehydrating to see Linus win a pot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's looking for a bottle of water. Uh, see still the boss stack here at this feature table, but has been leapfrogged by Nacho Barbero. 6.3 million at our outer table. Good for the overall chip lead. Lolliger, by the way. Not bad. Courtesy of the it's probably double. Average. Now finds himself oh. in eighth overall. Pocket six is for Kiat Lee up front. Oh, min raise 300. Min Swift raise. min raise. Blinds at 75, 150 Swift now. Uh, oh. 2.6. 2.6. 1 by 3. Linus getting some chip counts. Trying to figure out what to all do with King Jack. All in, making a bold play. We are playing six handed. So under the gun is a bit of a later position than normal. It's a mergy position. <laughs> a mergy position. That's the first one I heard that. Two sixes. It seems like it seems like a little bit too much. The two point two from Linus, you mean? Yeah. It's on the cusp, I'm sure. You can see him kind of calculate the math. He is jamming on an undergun open, which is stronger slightly than, say, if they were later positions. I'd love to know whether or not any of what's going on in Kiat's head has <coughs> something to do with the person responsible for this all-in. Linus, is it naughty Linus? Is it naughty Linus? Is it in-line Linus? 
Is it I'm running real good? I've already doubled twice. Yeah, why, why go against someone who's already won it twice getting in bad? Let's just wait. Well, Lee puts the sixes into there. the muck, so. <laughs> Lucky mistake. Nice pick up there. Yes, from Holliger. I tried already with you. Yeah. <laughs> was it in Cyprus? Um, Madrid and Cyprus. Yeah, yeah. In Cyprus. Yeah. It was playing. Oh, yeah, Cyprus. Stand up, stand up game. Yeah. <laughs> Well, from King Jack to Ace Jack for Linus, and he opens yet another pot. And I guarantee you, someone here at this feature table is thinking to themselves, why couldn't this guy get showered <laughs> with the Jack Four? Now look what we got to deal with this madman. 100%. He's relentless. He's had the goods. Yeah, but he also does it without the goods. Yeah, that's the scary part. Yeah, Lee gonna play 10-4 suited. Closing action suited, never wrong. Flopped it. Top pair for Kiat Lee. It's a good board too in the sense that it's the type of board where the pre-flop razor tends to see that small lot. Does whiff the big blind quite a bit. We'll see if Linus will bet. Indeed, he is coming in with a small one. Two and a quarter. The follow through figure. Kiat Lee of top pair. Most people check call here. Containing the pot. Putting a time chip in there. Thinking about putting a check raise, it seems. Well, while he thinks about that, we swing over to our outer table where Hing Yang Chow finds himself all in, apparently. And the man that is giving him a spin, was it Nacho Barbero? I believe it was Kim. It was Brian yeah, Kim. Yeah, it was Brian Kim. Never easy. It's Takes him out. <laughs> Efforting the hand. Still hasn't been pushed to the app. But we will give you a breakdown of exactly. So a check raise from Chiat Lee. Oh, okay. And a call. Yeah, 625 total, another 400,000, and Lolliger in position where he likes to be, calls and does not improve on the turn. Yeah, I think Linus doesn't expect 10 x to check raising too often. He's got two overs, might have the best hand, could maneuver. Safe card for Kiatli. Wouldn't expect to be up against 10 or 2 eights too often. A little north of one stack to pot ratio, or SPR. It does have Lolliger covered. There's a lot in there, so you kind of don't want to give a free card. Okay. 375K, Randy. Not an altogether big bet. He didn't want to put it all in, thinking that, well, I'm only going to get called by better. But by sizing down, he has to maintain control of the action, not give the guy a free hand card. Sub 20% pot sizing. It is a small bet. Line is going to lay it down. Tempting pot odds there to maybe call and take a swing at an ace or a jack or a check from Kiat Lee that suggests you might be able to take the pot away. But while Lee collects <coughs> those hard-earned Lolliger bucks, just give you a quick breakdown of how Hing Yang Chow found the exit here in 12th place. 
ace jack up front off of 2.3 million. He jammed it. Brian Kim woke up with two kings behind him. The flop came ace king jack. So Chow actually had some outs. The term was a queen. He could chop or fill up, and instead he was showered by the set of kings. And now we find queens against tens. Ouch. And is that Mike Watson being polished off river in 11th place by a set on the river? That's brutal. Oof. And Brian Kim claims two pelts in two hands. He's feeling good. Sure is. That's going to push him straight up the leaderboard. Linus got ace eight suited. Oh. Going for a pocket deuces. He's had enough of Linus. Well, the deuces are technically in front of this ace eight suited as Kiat Lee awakens to king queen off suit. Obviously, it's a far less attractive hand in this situation. Puts it into the muck. Get him. Tan should be happy. He's not up against a bigger pair. Good luck. But obviously, you got to fade five. This is as coin flip as it gets 50 50. Mm hmm. Ten nine three, 9 3 and the deuces are still in front here for Tan. No heart on board, so no concerns about a backdoor flush. Straight draws could be acquired, though. And there's one. That Seven of diamonds. Scary. And it's suddenly, Lolliger with 10 outs one time. Can the deuces hold? Yeah, they can. I heard, I heard GG. I heard GG. And I, and I got no GG. concern, no. Well, there's our title sponsor, GG Poker. But other than that, in this particular spot. Wishful thinking. There is just a, I really to come to a double up with diamonds. Oh, uh, it's actually. What, seven, 700? Who said GG? Was it Linus? Uh, uh, I'm or sure. was it Jan's? <laughs> pump fake. Jan Wei Tan. The jack for repeat. <laughs> Incoming. Can yeah, loosen his collar a touch. Yeah. My room num Just 10 players remain. We're on the final table yeah, bubble the here. Table. By the way, glossed over the payouts for Hing Yang Chow's 12th place finish. 43,900. Mike Watson, that nasty 10 ball on the river, downing his pocket queens. He will take home. 50,300, and that's the exact same number we're going to be paying out to 10th yeah. place. Mine? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> King Jack now in the cutoff for town off of that newly minted 2.6. like to see him play this one, whether it's to raise or jams, what he's thinking. But raise makes a lot of sense, given he's got a decent stack to play with. He tends to agree as we go to three and a quarter. Just a click north of Min. Pocket threes. Ooh, that's a decent spot for making a move. Depends on what he thinks of Kian Wei Tan's opening range. I did see him call off pocket deuces, so some hands you might think would fold to you. It's worrisome. So he's going to take it slow. It's calling position. By calling position, you do invite more people to come along, like the big blind. He just pulled King suited. He sure did. And by the way, he was in bad shape against a King Jack, so. Yeah. Perhaps well served to do so. The flop will inform us. Yeah, I don't think that's the board that he King knew. Eight of Diamonds <laughs> wanted. Tan has two overs and a gutter, backdoor clubs. Solid board for him. Nice spot to throw in a bet, maybe put in multiple barrels, put pressure on. It's a sizable, oh, two actually it's 275, not too big, but too many overs. Don't know what to do with two threes. Yeah. Lay down. You know, a lot of times you look at that board texture and you think to yourself, well, maybe 
the 10, the 9, and the 4 don't rate to be within the range of my preflop opening opponent all that often. Let's tear one off in case there's, you the know, the ace is, is of the, the world. turn bet that's coming. Yeah. I mean, you well, have to hit a three to feel comfortable. Maybe if the board pairs, you're okay with it. But the problem when the board no pairs, you also get counterfeited a lot, sure. too. Sure. It matters because there's a pay jump between 10 and 9. Yeah, I had that yesterday because I busted 9 and I split it with the 10 guy because we busted on the same map. Can you call the floor? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, is it? The, the, do we hand for hand? Yeah, I mean, yesterday it was hand for hand. So, is it hand for hand? It's not hand for hand, it's just in the So if someone, bu if two players busted the same hand, what happened? We split the money still. Okay. It's 9 out of 5 table, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yesterday it was hand for hand. So. But what's the point of splitting the money? But uh, I don't know. Usually, yeah. Just to step in there and clarify things, Kulev, under the impression that yesterday, when we were down to the final table bubble, that we played hand for hand, but producer James stepping in to remind us, to in turn remind you that it was not hand for hand. It was just at the very first hand that we got down to the final table was a double elimination. And as such, we split 10th and 9th place money and had eight players at the final. Meanwhile, 10 with the pocket sevens finds a customer in Mark Rubathon, who is in very bad shape with pocket threes. A date with the final table very much in jeopardy as 10 makes the call. Bad shape here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do have a pay jump around the corner. Tenth place money, fifty thousand three hundred. Ninth, sixty k. We know where the rooting interests of the remainder of this field lie, and they aren't on the Union Jack. That's for sure. Eight, four, deuce, sevens, still in front. No straight draw on the turn for the threes, and the bell tolls for the Briton. He's got two outs once and an almost two million chip pot. Can he hit a set on the river? Nice on. No. Good luck, guys. And a wrap of the rail. The solid sportsmanship that we've come to expect out of all Triton competitors, as he says, good luck. and. We'll leave the two tables to merge into one. Randy, as our final yeah. table is yeah, set. Rubathon yeah. taking home that 50,300 payout. Final table nine. Yeah. Five, five yeah. table nine. Yeah. Okay. Tan, so getting the memo. Do we have a break or? Shouldn't be, uh, we'll get a break. Because I. are just a bit late in announcing it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna get it. What's but I'm Mark's not gonna assume because. Biggest cash? Because you're not a risk taker. Or Hendon, so. I guess it's all. I think I'll be pleased with that. I mean, they have to redraw anyway, right? So it's got First to ever yeah. Triton event for Kian Wei Tan. Uh, and he is not just in the money, Randy, but he is at the final table. As you see, the chip counts for the four players that are already seated at what will be that final table. Five will join them momentarily. As we have not one, but two Malaysian players there in the field. Alina Jad alongside Randy Liu, Randy Liu welcoming us <laughs> back Randall into Liu. Randy Liu, uh, welcoming us back into our broadcast booth here from the Hoi An Golf Resort on the beautiful shores of Hoi An, Vietnam. And man, it, it is such a treat to watch people. Randy, I don't want to harp on it too much, but it just brings a smile to my face when they, they come in and they're able to experience what, you know, maybe rumor had it you know, through some tweets or through some content on social, they suspect might be what it's like to be out here, but then they get here and it's everything that they thought it would be and then some, and then add to that a trip to the final table as we're doing for Kianwei Tan. And really, uh, you just know that he's going to get the bug and, and going to be back for every stop from this point <laughs> forward, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, it, it's very nice to cash your first event, right? And, you know, reaching a final table in a record-breaking field where it's our prizes are really huge. Um, yeah, six hundred k up top for six, first place. Six hundred k up top, and you know, production's great. You get to use the app. It's a good experience, and a lot of newcomers still at this final table, first time at a Triton event, and just gonna 
stack some cash. Yeah, yeah, he sure is. Linus Lawliger, by the way, let us not forget, took the worst of it on two separate occasions. Jack four, right? And then he had, uh, was it ace? No. What did he have against the two tens? I don't know. In any case, <laughs> I forget. It's all a big blur. But the point to be made here is that by getting lucky in those two spots, he was able to not only enjoy some pay jumps, but now a shot here at the final table at 600K in payout in a 15K event, by the way, mm -hmm. which is on the very modest side of the spectrum. The American Brian Kim will lead the field with eight and a half million, followed by the Argentine Nacho Barbero and the Dutchman Jan Zaren says... Nine of our 172 remain with the blinds at 75 and 150. We will step briefly aside and allow that final table to aggregate. Don't go anywhere. Just about four minutes time. We will bring you event two's conclusion. Stay close. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker.
And welcome back, Alina Jad, alongside Henry Kilbane. What, what was that about, Henry? Were you uh, paranoid just, that I was just uh, looking down at your what your, tra your trainers, mate? You're looking good. You're no, looking you fresh. Weren't. Always looking no, fresh. No, you were You're just trying to see how many Vietnamese coffees I have smuggled underneath <laughs> Is the it desk. Fifteen, I believe. <laughs> it's it's that way. time, guys. The final table of event number two of 15k record-setting field here with 600,000 up top. 60k secured by all nine of our remaining competitors. We have not one but two Malaysians remaining in this field. Of course, Webster Lim flying under that flag did pick up the title in event number one. Might it be a one-two punch for the Malaysians? Certainly not if Brian Kim has anything to say about that. He is an overwhelming chip leader with eight and a half million in front of him. Good for 57 bigs with the blinds at 75 and 150,000. Henry, I know you keep a firm finger on the pulse of these guys online and live. Anyone that you think we should be looking out for right now that's going to be contending for the title that isn't necessarily the chip leader? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, just looking at this lineup of player, uh, regardless, well, players rather, Regardless of the stack depths, I honestly think anyone could turn this around. I mean, you know, Linus got a lot to work with. Oh, sorry, got a lot of work to do. Seth Davies as well, seven bigs. Alex, Alex Kuliv, mm -hmm. two for two now in caches at his first ever try and series. You know, let's not count out online legend Jan Zarens, obviously. Graf Tekel, one of the best all-time tournament players in the history of the game. So, you know, look, uh, we've got a lot of talent. Uh, we don't have many big blinds, though. Yeah. Uh, the average stack, 25 bigs, a lot shallower than yesterday's final table. So some of these shorter stacks going to look to get to work sooner rather than later, Ali. And I think with the presence of these short stacks, people like Kiat Lee, uh, people like Kian Wei Tan, in a bit of a handcuff situation. So we're going to see a lot of that just pick a spot and shove and try to spin it up or... A little bit more tactical, really kind of like yeah. treading lightly sort of stuff. I think there's going to be more, uh, you know, these guys are going to pick their spots wisely. It's not just going to be a case of getting it in with uh, reckless abandon, if you will. But the likes of Kiat Lee, the likes of Kian Wei Tan, who are comfortably in the middle of the pack, do have to proceed with caution given the presence of Yosef Davies on seven big blinds and Linus obviously on three. So Brian Kim and Nacho... Over to you guys to really kind of run over the table. Yeah, they definitely have uh, control of their fate should they choose to exercise it. But at the same time, there's a lot of money to be gained as we look at the payouts here. 60000 secured, as I mentioned, but a 15 k pay jump. That's good for one entry uh, to 75 k for eighth and then onward and upward. So with that tight cluster on the short stacks, you know, you, you can kind of, you know, patience is, is profitable. Yeah, I mean. You, you have three sub-10 big blind stacks, the difference between ninth and sixth, uh, the better part of 80,000. So uh, when you t convert that into buy-ins, there's five buy-ins in a 15K. Is, right. you know, there are 15K fields where that's the top price. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of money to play for here. Um, and yeah, the presence of these short stacks makes it very interesting for, for the ICM nerds of the world out there that really love the nitty gritty stage of this tournament. Do you know what else uh, the presence of makes interesting? That lovely velour ensemble that Alex Ponikov selected out of the closet today. I know you were really harping on that. Have you touched it yet? I haven't. I haven't harped on it and I haven't touched it, but I'm not surprised. I think that being a byproduct of your comments on the DJ outfit from that the other night. That was a night. fantastic <laughs> piece of kit that he brought. I think Ponikovs is really, he's brought the thunder in terms of, he's really stepped it up here, you know. These, these are the things to be discussed, Question. by the way. Do you think he has a personal stylist that based on the buy-in of the tournament says, hey, listen, if you make the final table, here you go. This is what you rock up with. If he does, he's not paying that person enough. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, it's just about time for the intros at the final table as we send it over to our tournament director, Luca Vivaldi. Okay, no limit hold'em, eight-handed event. Another record was broke with a total of 172 entries. We're down to nine players, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to them. In seat number one from Argentina with 6.9 million, please welcome Nacho Barbero. Nacho, actually a frequent participant in the 300-600 mix game in Las Vegas. Finding his way here to Vietnam. In seat number two, our chip leader with 8.6 million from the US, Please welcome Brian Kim. 
Yeah, Henry, you're pumping your fist over here. The young man, Brian Kim, the chip leader, coming into this final table. Let's see what he's got in store. Seat number three from Latvia. With 2.2 million, please put your hand together for Alexei Ponyakov. Well, put more than your hands together. Just look at that. The last time I saw that tracksuit, it was on Gold Member. Fantastic. Seat number five with 1.5 million from Bulgaria. Please welcome Alex Kulev. Go on then, Henry. Pick up the Kulev. Bulgari Yunatsi. Two for two, as you mentioned so far, as first ever Triton. Seat number six from the Netherlands. 5.3 million, please put your hands together with Jans Arends. First try in the series. It's online guys venturing out. Super high roller series here in Vietnam. Scene number seven from Malaysia with 4 million. Please welcome Kiat Lee. Well, far from Kiat Lee's first ever Triton. He's got a whole host of earnings over the course of his career. And he's number eight from Letterkenny, Ontario. Please put your hand together for Seth Davies. Seth Davies is not from Letterkenny, Ontario. Is he trolling us? I'm almost positive that's not the case. Scene number nine from Switzerland. With 375,000, please put your hand together for Linus Lolliger. Well, if you thought that shirt was sexy, add a fan and some fog to it, and you really take it over the top. And at least from Malaysia, with 4.5 million, please welcome Calvin Tan. Tan. Let's go, Let's go, go on then. Go on then. Come on, the boys. Right, gents, we still have 14 minutes remaining of level number 23. 100. I can't see the level. 75, 150 by our count. <laughs> yeah, Luca, Luca just <laughs> said so he can't see the level. <laughs> He's going to figure it out. One of the best in the business, oh. our tournament director. Introducing the final table. The stage has been yeah. set, Ali. I just want to point out how focused Nacho Barbero in the one hole is there as he makes sure to soak up the unread Instagram stories. There you go, clicker profile. Let's get a look. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. Spot me one that we know. Wayne loving the gold member reference there, Arnie. Saying, well done. Gold member reference was brilliant. Like a curve. It's great. The look of it, the smell of it, the taste of it, the texture. Brought to you by Poker Steak. A look at the chip counts there. As it is time to get a little bit serious, especially if you Playing under the Swiss flag, three bigs. Linus Lolliger is certainly going to be the player that everyone's got an eye on. Looking to pick up a 15K pay jump if he can be dispatched in the early going. By the way, this is, we really reached deep into the sound library for this particular ensemble. It, is this like the Temple of Doom soundtrack? Raiders of the Lost Ark? It's like Tomb Raider. <laughs> this is really... Oh, man. Did we find the idol? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Second final table of the series, event number two, record-breaking event number two with, I can only describe as murderer's row of a final table. Some of the best players in the world here. In Hui An, that man on your screens with the. Is that, is that a strawberry shirt? That is a strawberry shirt, right? I thought it was birds. I, first it was sea turtles. And I'm, anyway, it's Ace 3, we know that much. And Nacho Barbero is going to give him a spin, and what a fortunate spot this is going to be for Lolliger as they share a 3. <laughs> Nacho, who earned his bankroll being a. Stunt double for Hugh Jackman in the Wolverine series. I, I make that up. That's that's not how he made his money. Queen 10-10 on the flop here. 
Molliger sitting very pretty. Just needs to dodge a king. Oh, wait a minute. Now suddenly, add a jack to the mix of cards that he's looking to avoid on this river. And he's done so. On the prior two occasions on which we saw Linus double up at two tables and beyond, he had the worst of it. On this one, he had the best of it. But a flush wound to Barbero's stack as he'll pass 375k to the Swissman. Oh, no yeah, you see it there. It's like doves, like weird overfed doves oh, okay. with perhaps a strange star-shaped rash. There we go. Uh, not entirely. I still can't get over the necklace. Love the fact that we're now oh, at a point in alchemy where we can manufacture 32 karat gold. Oh, man. Have you seen how yellow it is? I brought this up yesterday. I that mean, is the, the yellowest chain I've ever seen. The drip is real. I told you, it's like being in a Drake music video. Yeah. Some of these final tables. With that double, Linus goes from ninth to ninth. Up to seven bigs, tied with Seth Davies. Still, not the result Alex Kulev and Seth Davies were looking for as Linus... Back to back jams. He's deuce this time, and ace four does have an opportunity to give Linus a spin, but Tom not interested. No reason to play Sheriff there if you're Conway Tan, fourth in chips right now. Linus chipping up nicely at the start of this feature. That Triton free roll over on GG starting in one minute. Password is poker GG. Get involved, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know. Get on in that one. And let us know whereabouts in the world you are joining us from. 6.30 p.m. local time. We'll be playing all the way down to a winner this evening, and then we'll be bringing you coverage from event number three, the 20K 8 Max Mystery Bounty. What an incredibly popular format that has become, hasn't yeah. it, Henry? Yeah, we were guessing how big the top bounty prize is going to be. My guess is around 300,000. Late Ridge still open in that one. Kulev under the gun, nine-handed. UTG nine. Ugh. It's going to come for a raise fold with the A7 off of 10. Did promise Kulev next time he made it to the feature table that I would give a warm shout out to his family back home that have been Tuning into these Triton streams to show support for the young Bulgarian. Kinway Tan opting to peel one off from the cutoff with the A6 of hearts. Taking issue, are we? Yeah, I mean, this is a bit, a bit ambitious in my books against the under the gun opening range off of a 10 big blind stack. Gonna be dominated more often than not, we can see here. We are outpipped by one. Ace high boards could spell disaster for Wei Tan. Instead, it's two clubs, two jacks, and a king, which draw a check from Kulev, understandably. A quick check back from Tan. As we have almost a million in the middle. Third jack on the turn. Players chop as it stands now. Each with three outs to a scooper. Kulev just looking up at the clock, randomizing this spot. It's opting to reach for chips. A one big blind delayed C bet from the Bulgarian. Certainly has a range advantage on this board texture in the form of over pairs, ace king, aces, queens. And a qu quick fold from away Tan. So nice little pick up there. Kulev up to 14 bigs. Little glance from Ponikov's there, kind of just looked like a suspicious glance, to be honest with you. Line didn't feel very credible, yeah. you think? Yeah, Ponikov's just like, I know what you're up to, kid. So with that little pickup and the back-to-back -back pickups of Linus, Seth Davies now the shortest stack. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll share that with you. The water? No. Water you mean, right? No. That's <laughs> all my water. Yeah. Ace six of spades awaits him. Is it always a jam if we choose to open off of one million as the shorty? Yeah, it's close, but I think he's going to take the spot. I say it's, it's close. Though. Well, he puts 80% of his stack out there just in case something nasty pops off behind him. He can fold and secure a pay jump. But it doesn't look like any fireworks developing. And you pick up the blinds and Annie. Change. <laughs> Let's try. Let's try. Let's some chains. <laughs> Can't be enjoying yourself this time at this final we'll table. Try. <laughs> yeah, I tried. Three caches. <laughs> trying to work. Record. For you. <laughs> All short deck though. Yeah, and two real close calls in Cyprus. A second place finish in the 40k and a third place finish in the 30k short deck. That 40k was a one bullet, I believe, right? I believe so. Pocket sevens now for Kian Weitan. Up to four million. A little slower yeah. pace than short deck. Yeah. Yeah. Min raise open. Short deck just makes me so tired, though, because you're in so many minutes. Nacho really grinding the Instagram mm -hmm. stories hard forward. here. Yeah, that's a lot of them. Something like, against Instagram, Marley? Four something? Okay. Nah. That's nah. a lot of room, even like 50 minutes. Yeah. 50 minutes. Instagram's real life, Henry. Yeah, it's like Everything you see, you can believe. So you're telling me those guys that say if I sign up to their course for 49 99 a year, I too can become a multi-millionaire crypto yeah. trader. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you can just say Carl Schapegati, and you don't need to say those guys. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. No, he's I, not, he's I, that course, I would buy into. I believe it. Yeah, party. that's the course. He's not out here posing next to a Lambo next to the Burj right. Khalifa. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ace ten, by the way, out flopping these sevens, which have followed through with the bad end of the gutter. Check. Now Forda was straight rolling off. Jans checks again, having picked up the Broadway draw to go with the tens, and in comes Broadway on the river. Good for the nuts. <laughs> Any argument to just checking here and maybe seeing whether or not your really opponent like wants to represent the ace that you like hold? Yeah, this is exactly what I'm thinking in terms of scary runouts. Like the the jack x's, the 10 x's, like the that. check call flop, all of a sudden shrink up in value size on the queen king run out. And look at this. Reaching four chips, 350,000, little one third on the river. Yeah, it, it feels like can't really fault Tan for, for sure. recognizing right. the sevens just aren't going to be winning at showdown very often. Took his shot and now it's been raised to 850, so he can comfortably put it into the muck. By the way, the chat's stepping in to advise, and I thought this might be the case that the Gucci Lolliger is indeed rocking Gucci. I'll tell you what, when I was Linus's age, that really wasn't part of the Gucci collection. No. You see, you wealthy youngins really redirected fashion. It used to be a very conservative fashion house. But, you know, strawberry shirt. Strawberry 
Dove shirt for stars. It's not really a lot we can add to that shirt. <laughs> it just does all its own heavy lifting, doesn't it? It looks like when you knock Mario out on Mario Kart with one of those blue bombs and stars start floating Sounds around like Mario's head, you know? Short day. <laughs> See, the last time I played play Mario Kart I was 30 sometimes. years ago, yes. It was red shells that would have been the appropriate reference. Oh, okay. Remember that? Yeah, the blue <laughs> shells are the deadly ones, mate. Yeah. We didn't have the blue shells. Well, oh, look. <laughs> Buy a Nintendo DS. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> Not exactly deadly, but certainly weaponry for Barbero. Ace 10 offsuit opens to 325,000. Ponikov's though, higher caliber. Takes it upstairs. Off of 1.9. What's he committing? I believe he said 1 million. Okay. No to 10 and a 9, both into the muck, suited in variety behind this 3-bet. Where's your friend? He's not, he's not here for this trip, right? No, they have some uh, problems with that. Oh, okay. He's, he's from Holland, right? Holland, yeah. Barry taking his time here. This decision is Max Ponikos. He also likes short neck. More than capable of having some ace fours, ace fives. I remember he won, right? Well, some King Tens. Nacho deciding not often really enough for his one. taste. I think so. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't remember. Mm -hmm. You guys were stupid, John. <laughs> That's, That's a four big four. zipper. Is that just in case he gets lost yeah, in the dark? When Alex is done with that hoodie, really? I really hope that just in the spirit of upcycling, that it does make its way to a blackout curtain somewhere. Love that shot. Sleeps up for grabs along with the 600,000. Triton Trophy, Shambhala Jewels Bracelet. I just want to advise anyone that might be tempted to think that we're loading up on Alex Ponikov's right here. I actually took it upon myself during a break on day one to walk up to him and have a conversation about his first track suit. And uh, obviously he was holding out, sandbagging maybe even a little bit. <laughs> oh, he loves it, mate. He's part he really of the... Does. We love it. We love it. Four. He loves it. It's part of the 1.1 behind. Roost the crew. No, a bit less. Jans loves it. Three, three, five. Three, six. suited. Five seconds. Just getting his bearings here from Kiat Lee before he decides how to approach the button. Three and a half. Currently with an interesting spot. 24 nice. effective. Yeah, nice jack. Do you want to just mash this one in? He does. Nice pickup there for Kiat Lee. Do you think Davies is going with a selfie here or is this? Getting a shot of something else. TBD. As we take a moment to remind you that Jacob and Company is the official timekeeper of the Triton Poker Series. And each of our main event winners will be receiving a special collaboration timepiece. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Just look at some of the stunning pieces of art that they are responsible for. But you managed to recover. Hmm? You recovered from that. Yeah. I did. <laughs> it's going to take a first place finish to really get into the conversation about some of those pieces that we just flashed on the screen. Mm, that Bugatti watch mm -hmm. with the working W16 engine in it. Yeah. 
There's enough. Got a video of it from Madrid. Should be 400k, right? We're at the one level. Yeah. yeah. I believe the Jacob and Co team will be showing up tomorrow with some of those time pieces. We're going to have a display like we did in Cyprus and Madrid. I know you'll be over there trying on some of the pieces just to see how they fit. I've seen, you know. Look, I uh, listen, pal. I haven't broken that seal yet because I just know I have enough yeah, leaks. <laughs> With your adding, spending habits. Yeah, adding watches. I, <laughs> I don't play good enough <laughs> to have a watch leak. No <laughs> Barbero picking that one off. If we took a break to do the intros, we'll probably wait two hours. I think that's usually how they do it. What? He's not I know how to fall. Is that the real Nanonoko in the chat? Can't be. Surely not. It's Vietnam. You can do whatever you want. Sure. Did I just hear that correctly? You're in Vietnam. You can do whatever you want. Is that yeah. Is that accurate? I just want to know because I've, I've sort of been. Can I skydive into the booth tomorrow? I mean, looking above us, I think we're gonna have to find a nice seam. <laughs> Barbero back at it with Queen Jack, 425,000 under the gun. Uh, I grabbed one over there, but I think it was the last. Ace 10 for Linus in the small now. If I wave somebody down. All in. All in. Linus with the three bet rejam. Three bet rejam. Come on, Henry. Just you know what? Rejams, Bavero. See, priced in. Decent chunk of equity. Forty-one percent here, and uh, it's not just the fifteen k, but also the loss of the threat of Linus Love that will leave everyone rooting for Nacho Barbero mm -hmm. at this final table. I, I told you. And the flop is 10 high, but coupled with the 8 does provide Barbero with plenty of outs. 9 jack queen as it stands. And there is the 9 of clubs, and Linus drawing dead, showered. He just, he's always happy, man, you know? Regardless, stands up, microphone off, straight into the 20k mystery bounty. Look, he's got plenty to be happy about, obviously, but you and I have both been around a lot of poker players who don't exude the level of joy that Linus Love does as you get a look at that smile one last time. Finishing in ninth place, collecting 60K to head to his already impressive Triton resume, leaving behind I mean, it's eight good to combatants it. here in event yeah. number it two. Can be, it can be really bad. Not sure then it's not bad at all. Eight. Wow. Not bad at all, right? For you. <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. Five bit mine? Two hundred. Five. Is that what the app says? Let's roll these blinds. Nacho back. closing the gap There's at the top point. between himself <laughs> and Brian Kim. With that you? elimination. Just to put a button on Linus Love, by the way, that is his ninth Triton Cash, one-time title holder. One. Million. Closing in on 7 million in career Triton oh, earnings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ace Jack for Seth Davies. You, you don't trust my counter? Courtesy of that Linus bust out, inherits the short stack honors. Honors that he would love to pass along to someone else. And to that end, he is going to open this pot. 800k, leaving himself 125 back. 850, rather. Oh, yeah. Get five bigs. I know it's a talking point that's been brought up time and time again, but can we just talk of the consistency <laughs> no. of Madrid. Seth Davies since Madrid last year? Yeah, once he broke the seal, it's like he found the secret sauce. That's good. As do most people, Ali, once they break said seal, it's almost impossible to close the seal afterwards. Three caches in Madrid. 
five in Cyprus already cashed the 25k back to back FTs for Seth Davies here. You know, it's lactose Stop. that does that Stop. to me. The almost impossible to close the seal thing. Is that why you've ordered four more coffees, Vietnamese coffees with condensed milk? Just keep it interesting in here, you know? <laughs> it's like my own personal Iron Man. <laughs> Meanwhile. Meanwhile. Folded around to Barbaros, 9-6 in the small blind. Nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Someone had to do it. Take one for the team chat. I know what you're all thinking. That looks like a good hand to limp with. Nacho agrees. Kim taking a book out of Webster Lim's book. Isoing three and a half X with the Jack 3 0. Eight players remain. Number two, Ron guaranteed 75,000, the last five figure payout. Brian Kim might be less familiar to those who regularly stream us here on Triton as a newcomer, but not at all unfamiliar to those who take in a good bit of poker. He's had some really lovely finishes dating back to October of last year. Third, fourth, first, eighth, and fifth his last five. And then go back just a little further. And the online high roller, $5,300 buy-in. The WSOP picked up a title there for 119K. So certainly very experienced is Brian Kim. Barbero goes to work from the button, takes it away. Oh boy. Oh boy. What have you done, Ali? Oh yeah. Is, uh, this is bad. Thank you. No, no, young Padawan. This is good. No need to really elucidate for those in the stream to what it is we are currently referring, despite the fact that the images don't support the elation. <laughs> this really is the nectar of the gods here. Light you right up. Did they bring straws? They did not. Well, flag them down. I mean, I got to have my bamboo straw. I don't even know if it is bamboo, by the way. I just said that. Oh, really? And you've kind of just run away with it. It's all right. I'm trollable. We flagged the Garcon down here, Kilbane. 450 to go from Kianwei Tan, I suppose, the more important matter at hand. And for Kulev, King Queen offsuit out of the big. Hijack open, 2.25x from Genway Tam. King Queen, a lot of hand in the big. Is it enough to jam over the top of Wei Tan's hijack open? It's nice, you know, just flatting and keeping in some of the hands that we actually dominate. King Jack, King Ten, Queen Jack, those types of holdings that Wei Tang can have. And Queen Nine Eight could spell disaster for Wei Tan after flopping middle pair SPR sub one Ali. Good news is he does have cool left covered, and of course for Alex. Part of the calculus for him was just how significant a quotient of his remaining chips the 450 open represented. And here, here is just going to 
jam. And Tan is going to be a customer, suspecting that maybe there's some sort of combo draw. Straight draw, diamond draw. Yeah. Load of gut shots out there. Yeah. Have some 9x in rough shape as well with the ace kicker. Two to come, 3.4 in the middle. Huge pot for the young Bulgarian. If he can hold here, he'll be up to 17 bigs. Five of spades is a beautiful sight. Now, just needs to fade. An ace or a nine. And he's done it. Thank you. You drunk? Almost. Machkai. <laughs> Say it, Ali. Say it, go on. Machkai. Machkai is, is that thank you for in Bulgarian? That's what you call it. It's right? close. It's saying, it's saying let's go, Kulev. Machkai. 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 Yes. <laughs> right. How many countries do they speak Bulgarian in? Maybe I'll do some on Earth with you sometime. Approximately. Oh, mate, take it there. This guy, right seriously. Okay, because it's it's yeah, just that well, kind of helps inform how much say? of a we'll commitment I need to make to learning. Well, they speak yeah, in two. There are two capitals <laughs> in Bulgaria. Sophia, Whoa. Sophia Stop for a second. and Chicago. No, it depends. Okay. Who you First off, so Chicago is yeah. just a city <laughs> in Illinois. In the U.S. No, it's right. the ca it's the second capital of Bulgaria. First off, there's no such thing as a second capital, Henry. I'm already done with That's Bulgaria. Three <coughs> Completely done with it now. Once they go down to one capital, Bulgaria's done with come you. Come see Ali. me again. Bulgaria's done with you. <laughs> no banitzer for you in the morning. What? Yeah, you heard me. Listen, we're only teasing, of course. It is an international operation we run here on the Triton tour, and we welcome all. The Argentine, ace 10, raise and take it. Yeah, Barbero fresh off of his career, best score out in the Bahamas, fourth in the PSPC for just north of 1.5 million. How about it? By the way, that same game that I was referring to during the final table intros that Barbero often finds himself in, 3-6 mix in Las at Vegas. The, at the Aria. But no, not at the Aria, uh -huh. at Resorts World. I actually, believe it or not, stumbled upon Aaron Zhang, of all people, Yes. in that game. Yes, that is true. I saw him there as well. Couldn't believe my eyes. Out oh, in... Was splashing around West in a Coast. mixed game, by the way. He could be dangerous if he suddenly decides to redirect his efforts into those streets. Meanwhile, the efforts of Kianwei Tan are placed upon an ace five, which should Barbero click call with ace ten, will have its work cut out for it in a real way. Nacho choosing to flat, Henry. Dicey proposition, we can see he's getting it in in great shape against the plus one open and six players behind Barbero. It looks pretty strong too to the remainder of the field from time to time, or you you think it doesn't? You think it's it looks like something you can squeeze? I, I think it's you know playing with fire, but I'm in the booth, he's out there. It's made the call for six bigs. You mean the ICM? Yeah. By the way, he's not even looking on, by yeah. the way. In the, he's yeah. deeming this 3 million chip right. pot not worth yeah. peeling his eyes away six, 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 from the IG six, app. Anyways, oh, one card away from becoming the chip leader. Needs to fade a king, queen, jack, or an ace, or an eight for the chop. And the 10 on the river improves Barbaro. So an even better aces up as Kianwei Tan gave it all he had, was up to over four million in chips at one point. The first timer to the Triton Tour, finishing in eighth place. Not a bad performance at all, and certainly the kind of experience that one would imagine is going to give the Malaysian the bug. And plenty more poker available to him. The mystery bounty 
happening just offset where he can take some of those 75k in winnings and reinvest them as we get a look at the remaining seven players who have now secured a six-figure sum of 102,000, the jump to sixth place, 36K exactly. Brian, you haven't paid a hand, bro. Yes, that finish will be worth What's 138. Happened? Waiting for ages, man. Do you have, you started with 1.1 behind. <laughs> so, no, give me some popcorn. Shots being fired <laughs> from Popcorn's Alex. Right. Uh, Damn, Brian, you haven't played a single hand yet. What's going on, bro? He's malfunctioning. <laughs> Seven left. Everyone guaranteed six figures in this one. <coughs> Had more at the beginning of the day. He's four off from the button, making it 500 to go. Blinds at 100, 200. Yeah, note the opening size from Jans, two and a half X, just really incentivizing the defend from Davies, who does make the call with the King five. Short stack by quite some margin. Paired flops. Requires some care. Gently depositing 200k is Jans. Is that a Super Bowl ring? Oh, Seth Davies? What's going on here? A Super Bowl ring, Henry. Hey, listen, if I didn't know who Seth Davies was, okay, and I bumped into him, and then you told me he was an American footballer, I wouldn't question it. What position do you think Seth I, I would literally, play? I, I couldn't tell you a position if you asked me. Front runner, back end, wingman, football kicker. Okay, kicker. Kicker, yeah. yeah. Punter. Right. Punter, there we go. Yeah, that's a position you play. That's what I was about to say. That is me uh, six days out of the week. Only on Mondays do I... Batten down the hatches. Yeah, that's it. You know, you've got to recover somehow. Seth was mulling it over there with the king high, by the way. Annoying spot, for sure. Yeah. It's just one of those where... I don't know, man. Yeah, you hear him say, I don't know, man. You, you take one off and just hope that you're allowed to get to showdown without further investment. But you know, the great know thing that that's not always the case. <laughs> Great thing about Seth is that he doesn't know right now. I promise you, these hands will be reviewed with the team post series. You know, I'm the type of guy, if I don't know sometimes, something, sometimes I'll Google it. These guys, if they're unsure of a spot, you can bet that they're putting in the work to figure it out, whether it be back at the hotel room or post-series study lab with the boys. Now, I'm not going to mention who this player was in order to protect their anonymity, but you and I were in a conversation yesterday with someone who kind of peeled the curtain back a little bit to just the depth and extent to which research and effort is being committed to becoming the best at the craft. And for me, it was just outstanding to bear witness to as we see Seth Davies getting after Barbero with Jack four and Nacho slams the call in there with Jack five. Henry, looks like he's going to ask for the, the last 25K. Huh, <laughs> I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> and you folded that, we would have had problems, Nacho, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> I know. It comes 4-4 for sure now. Good luck, bro. Oh, the space. All high cards. High cards is good for you. Like a chop to me. This looks a lot like a chop to me. 
Easy now. Oh, Easy now. Five, 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 five. What do I just need? Wow. Six or higher, non spade? Or yeah. four? Six or higher, non spade indeed. Oh, oh nastiness. Seth Davies. Jack four against Jack five on that flop. <laughs> so <laughs> often next? it would have been a chop. How but can it be ahead? <laughs> Please no. Am I the next? Running I spades. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Will show the American the door and a 102k payout as Seth Davies dispatched seventh place. Back to back FTs for Seth. 102,100 payout. Yeah, he finished fourth in the GG Super Millions. Yesterday, picking up 357k. That was his ninth cash. This, his tenth. Let's see now. Vaults pass. I agree. 4.35 million. <laughs> yeah, with it. Triton earnings. By the way, can we yeah. talk about the Ivan Liao Player of the Year leaderboard? Right. Two caches, again? two final tables for oh, Seth. Who was we in the top five. Exactly. We were discussing how he closed the gap slightly on Stevie, Stephen Chidwick, with the final table yesterday. Now adding another one. Very curious to see at the end of the night, once those points are added up, what that leaderboard looks like, given that Seth has now final table two of two here in Vietnam. 1,595 points was what Davies brought in to this FT. Wow. Just a... May overtake Sam Tiny Greenwood. Tiny gap between but him and poker. Sam Greenwood, and I would expect he then will expect overtake Greenwood, but yeah, Stephen Chidwick still at the top. As oh, Cat Lee also at the top of range with Ace King suited on the button, making it 400k to go. He outed me five times on the final table, and he outed yeah. the GG's in the chat. John Singleton time. saying, don't let him bully you, Henry. Take a stand from now on. No self-deprecating jokes on Henry's behalf. Don't worry. There's no... Bully Gate 2.0 in this booth. Did save Ali's life this morning. That's not true. I can't save my life from the sand. It's a good final table to run hard on. You're not going to be able to save King 3 on this particular run out as Kiat Lee goes from flopping top pair in the nut flush draw to turning the nuts. Brian Kim did improve from King High to a pair, but Going to check. That kind of sucks. Chip leader with four double Again. second almost. And I was four. Now Kiat Lee goes to work. Barbera well, telling really bad beat stories at the table. Get <laughs> <laughs> That's what I just want to say. Like. <laughs> Ponikovs reminding Barbero how he was one of four in the PSPC and ended up finishing in fourth. After getting three outed on a couple of occasions, Piatli picking one off. Okay. Say picking one off, if turning the nut flush to go along this top pair. Okay, good. I think everyone would do that. <laughs> you take it every day. No. And no trophy? Your EV might be higher. <laughs> <laughs> Your EV is higher. How do I get admin privileges <laughs> on this chat? I gotta mute this singleton guy trying That's to build you up. If you refuse to What's all about? Million, more disappointed of my, life. my kid, of course. Warm welcome to each and every one of you have like who are streaming us live uh, from the Hoiana Resort and Golf mm -hmm. here in Vietnam. Be it through YouTube, the Triton Poker Plus app, or Twitch. Glad to have you with us. Of course, hit the like button. And while you're at it, hit subscribe. To make sure you never miss a beat from any of our Triton festivals or any of the content that we post between said festivals, says Kulev with Queen Ten of Hearts up front. Min raise open and Barbero off of 10.7 million. Evaluating with two sevens. Sevens in the mark. Argentine. Kim going to get out of the way. Ponikovs. Shortest stack, sub 10, 750. You have like 3.3. Under the gun, open, should not really be dominated. The under the gun, the under the gun range of Kulev. 
just going to pass up on defending his big blind, however. Great start to this final table for Kulev, who came in seven of nine. He has got himself a nice little stack to work off of. And I think in particular when it comes to the guys who play a tremendous amount of <laughs> sit and goes and MTTs online, you find really sound technical procedures in these late stages, end game phases of a tournament. Yeah, there's a lot to dissect from a final table of this caliber. Just note the lack of big blind defend there from Ponikovs off of nine bigs. A spot that I know I'm certainly blundering. That's why he can afford such luxuries. <laughs> Black eights up front. Going to be rewarded with blinds and annies. Mm -hmm. Oh. Originally, Henry, I don't know whether or not you had heard this as well after we inquired about some of the faces that appeared to be missing mm. here in event number mm. one. The Tun Mulders of the world. Yeah, Tun Mulder, the Kevin Pake, and Vogel saying, and rumor had it that it had something to do with tax treaties between <laughs> Vietnam and, and the Netherlands. I could be completely out of school on this, but to see the likes of Jan Zarens here suggests that maybe... That's not an issue. Well, he is rocking the British Virgin Isles flag, or he at least he was. Oh, which really? BVI? Well, it led me to believe that maybe he has residency there, you know, similarly to how a lot of the Germans hold residence in Austria, but it's now showing the Dutch flag. So maybe that was just a mistake in the graphics the first few hours of the day. Oh. But yeah, I mean, last I heard, they were actually in Milano for uh, an upcoming short shorts fashion show. Oh, yeah. Those guys, you know, they're always rocking up with the fancy pants on. I, I, I don't even have underwear that short. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know what you want me to say in response to that. You know, just Arlene <laughs> Sharp, ladies and gentlemen. You can just apologize to everyone. What on your behalf? I'll leave that. You know. That they have to deal with me. Well, at least they have the option to mute the stream. Right, but then they lose you. You could unplug my microphone. Hey, listen. I bet we could start a collection pool for that. Don't start playing footsies with me under the commentary booth, pal. Queen 8 suited as Brian Kim takes his turn collecting some tokens uncontested. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, mostly. Until, until last year. Hi. New blind level, 125 and 250 as we get a look at the remaining six stacks here in event number two, our record breaking 15K, eight max, no limit hold'em. Lolliger, Kanwei Tan and Seth Davies already have hit the rail. I haven't played a tournament in LA for a great start to this final years. table. Yeah, I for Nacho. Yeah, pretty much you too. So like 2011 was my first one in LA. So that, that's probably one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much do you have, roughly? I'm too old. Roughly four. Where at? Oh, only private. Price. In the pandemic. Price yeah, I'm just checking the itinerary of Kiat Lee. Sorry. This is a bad spot to find himself against Barbero, who has got King Queen Six million. of Diamonds a little, a little more. inquiring as to how much Arens has. 
Is this the kind mm -hmm. of kit we come with a three bet? Well, apparently, the answer is yes. Quite swiftly, Henry, in favor? For sure. Well, yeah, the jam? The pandemic. Kind of I was mostly in Vegas. I mean, I, w I was playing. Every, I mean, uh, yeah, I heard you play the same game. Yeah. Like, probably, yeah. Yeah. But I would go on Tuesday to play on LA. Every Tuesday we would take shit sweets and go from Tuesday to Thursday and Friday back to there for like two years. Yeah. But it was the only place because it was like everything was closed. There were parties. They were saying you were the best player there. In which game? Bobby's, those guys, Bobby's room. I was wondering who is Nacho. There's, there's a couple of them. I'm the only Nacho for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Brian. Basically, just playing PLO, don't call them, not much. As far as Barbero's concerned, there is only one, one Nacho. Nacho. Yeah. You play, what do you play more? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Is he talking about the PLO game at the Aria? Seems that way. Didn't quite catch all of it. How much you Big game. Those guys Standard sometimes board. 72 hours straight, are they? Well, PLO tends to attract the behind. warriors of the industry. Truly sleep deprived degenerates. <laughs> Ace 10 now for Barbero. One point five. Got that boss stack and he's putting it to work. Yeah, great spot. Fenacho here, Ponikovs at the table with six bigs, just really mm. working as a an aid, if you will, to yeah. Barbera can lean into those other middling stacks with Ponikov still in the mix. Can I skip? He knows the deal. He knows how ICM works. But so does Kiat Lee. Despite that, though, the five six suited, just trying to get to a flop, open limping from the button. Obviously, he's going to be balanced and take some some powerful Nearly hands and do the 50. same thing with in the interest Nearly of inducing. 1.3 total. By the way, earlier, the no, term no, one nacho was utilized and I don't know about you, Henry, but you know when the cheese melts across all of the tortilla chips and creates Go on. an adhesive single, so you know, you reach for one chip in the nachos, and, the, the whole and then put the whole, in. right. Right. That counts as one nacho, as Jack Black famously shed light upon in the cult favorite Saving Silverman. Jack Black. Wow. Who also, by the way, played Nacho Libre, just to bring it full circle. He didn't see any of those movies, obviously. I'm actually going to, after the stream, <laughs> One minute. <laughs> tie you to a chair and force you to watch those two films. Kulev tying himself to pocket nines, making it 1.5 million to go. Ooh, and Kiat hello. Lee welcomes ace queen. Those six figures in equity flip potentially three, three coming up. Yeah, 3.3 3 and 3 Kulev. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 million, 350. Tied in the bottom half of the pack. Covering the Bulgarian only just. You also have Ponikovs in the big. This jam coming from under the gun. Is there a time for Kat Lee well, to just mock the ace queen? Not going to happen. He does announce himself happy to run it. And Kulev didn't open to 1.5 off of 3-4 with the intention of folding as the rest of his tokens are deposited. And we are going to play for 7.3 plus. Nice. Good luck. Good yeah. luck indeed, gentlemen. 40,000 difference between 5th and 6th as Ponikovs yeah, on yeah. 5 bigs just gets to sweat this one out. Regardless of the outcome, if Kulev holds. Kentley going to be down to just 2 bigs. 5 to come, 7.3 in the middle. King for Trey. Not the flop Kiat Lee had in mind, but a threatening one for Kulev's purposes. Oh, Queen of Diamonds on the turn. Disaster. As Kiat Lee vaults in front, Kulev left with two outs. And the veteran 
knows that's how the cookie crumbles from time to time as he collects his belongings and of course not to be overlooked the collection of 138k to go with six place points in the Ivan Liao player of the year leaderboard we're gonna see more of this guy oh that's for sure that's for sure he quite literally said to me yesterday that he doesn't mind losing all year online as long as he wins a Triton trophy this year. That's all he's looking for. Really? That is all he's, he said. He said, Henry, I'm done with winning tournaments online. I was like, that's very, <laughs> very humble of you, Alex. <laughs> it's like <laughs> my eyes are now fixed on Triton trophies. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> firstly, I don't blame him. And secondly, two strong performances from the young Bulgarian here. Listen, if I was a betting man, I'd put money on him getting his hands on one of those trophies, whether it be at this stop here in Vietnam or ones later on in the year. He's two for two. Ninth two in the two. GG Super Millions, event number one for 96,300. Oh, yeah. And here, collecting a tidy 138K. So a force to be reckoned with, clearly, on arrival here in Vietnam. But he leaves five to do battle, 178K, locked oh. up. Brian Kim jams from the button with ace five. Call. Panikovs going to take a stand from the small blind with pocket fours. Understands that he's going to need some spins at some point. Why not now? Could go from six to four. Matter of a couple of hands, Ponikov's so thrilled that he already got the ladder. And equally thrilled to see Queen 9 7 not connecting with Kim's ace 5. Nor is the deuce. One to come. No ace, no 5 is what Ponikov's is thinking, and that's exactly what the river delivers. Mild nod of affirmation from the Latvian. No secret, he's a bit of a production crew favorite, the share hand guys who are responsible for all of the technical back end that helps to bring you all of these streams, all hail from Latvia. So they've got some rooting interests. 2.6? I'm bad in math. Panikovs now with 10 bigs, 2.6. Kim, who came in as chip leader, hasn't really had the opportunity just run away with it. In fact, it's now moved down to third in chips. Nacho Barbero, the overwhelming chip leader, Kiat Lee, has now moved up into second. Still plenty of time for the American. Not down and out just yet, Ali, but Ponikovs. One, two, five. Putting the new tokens to work with no hesitation. Why not? Ace nine from the button. Kiat Lee, though, in the big blind. He's got him covered and has got pocket fives. Looking over his shoulder, undoubtedly, at the Triton Poker Plus app in real time, just to ensure he knows no, how things <laughs> shake up. <laughs> 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 That's brilliant from Kiat Lee there. <laughs> well, he just wanted to remove one hand. <laughs> so, listen, you've opened off of ten bigs, so you just have to have aces, right? Ponikov's ace nine looking to catch something. And catch he does, although Ali notes the three clubs on board and mm -hmm. the club in Cat Lee's hand. Lee with the flush draw. Doesn't connect on the turn. But just look at those outs. Two fives and all of the clubs. Four a dime is not going to cut it, though. And Ponikov's back-to-back -back doubles here, Henry. And the collar can be loosened. Or I guess in this case, the zipper. 
<laughs> I knew that was coming. Can indeed. Ponikov just gets it either. done. <laughs> Got to win flips to win tournaments, ladies and gentlemen. Case in point. It's Ponikov's back-to-back -back flips. Don't play fives. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. My wife says the same. Like five? Yeah, yeah five, yeah. I guess. Five. Some world-class teachings for free at the table. Don't play fives, chat. Even their wives know not to play fives. <laughs> 22 bigs now, almost 5.6 million. Still running third of five. Thank you. Yeah, and Ali. Another time. Cat Lee now down into fifth. That's how tight it is mm. down there. Everyone bar Nacho. Snuggy yeah, really between 19 and 26 three, bigs. Three average stack 28, so Barbera the only player with more than I'm average now. Five, right. Thank you. Slightly under five? Huh? Slightly under five? Yes, slightly under five. Please. Really adds to the. Maybe the ICM nerds out there. Got the notepads out. Sorry. Masterclass on display here from these world class poker players. You know, it's interesting, Henry, because often when engaging in conversation with, you know, the viewing public in person, if they come up across us as we're, you know, at stops or, you know, back home, a lot of times they'll say, well, why don't you get in and play tournaments? You know, you get to watch the best in the world all of the time. Surely you're going to be better than the average player. But just observing what's going on and actually understanding all that goes into the decisions are two very different ideas. 100%. Couldn't agree more. There's so much that you can take away from these streams, but you know, it's one thing seeing the spots that they implement them in, but it's another thing actually understanding mm. how to execute on the stage with the bright lights, pressure that you get put under by these guys. Just, it's not easy. Not a lot of pressure being applied to this one here as... Lee and Barbero play a limp pot, blind versus blind. Paired flop. Fly in the back of your throat there. No, I got Vietnamese condensed milk in the back of my throat, my friend. It's glass number two is about to go down. Still no post-flop chips being deposited here as the queen high of Kiat Lee will be good at showdown. Barbero going to let him get there free of charge. Check high. So that was good. Rude. <laughs> Not given Kiat Lee credit for turning anything less this than Jack High into a bluff. Bounty stars day two, or you don't know? I'm actually not sure. I think I think before day two, but I'm I'm not sure when. I think it's close. Hey, when you can register. I think it's level What's sixteen. The so. <laughs> Look at these vultures, Ali. Yeah. Oh no, the registration, I yeah. think, tonight. Like maybe vultures, you say? Yeah, vultures, just okay. eager to jump know. into the next tournament. Yeah. To Even though they've still got poker to play here. I, I would lean that. more toward you birds of well. prey. They'll get you signed up and you get a Vultures, not birds of prey. Yeah. So vultures circle oh, carcasses, good. Henry. Thank you. Flick on the telly. I'll tell you what. Aren't you responsible for David Attenborough? I'll flick you in a minute, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Two tens flicking in half a million here from the button for Kiat Lee. Sorry, do you happen to know how much you started with? Uh, it's all right, it's all right, I could see. 2.5, 3.5, 4 Thank you. Yeah. I'm 4.8 behind. Kim going to defend with 5-6 offsuit and troublesome is the King 7-6 board with two hearts as it will be enough for him to continue presumably bottom pair. Backdoor flush and straight draws but sits behind Kiat Lee and the hearts are covered. As both players pick up a flush draw on the turn with one three seven five in the middle. 
Uh, it gets worse for Kim. May even opt to probe for a bit of value, a bit of protection. Flock goes check, check. He's reaching for chips, Ali. Looks like one big. Do apologize. Just south of two. As played, Lee content to just flat. And he makes a set of tens on the river. Just in case somehow two tens were no good. Awkward spot for Kim. Can block, but you open the door to just get put in the absolute blender by the queen X of hearts, the ace X of hearts. Just because that reality exists, do we decide not to opt to try to turn the 5-6 into a bit of a bluff? He's opted to check it on over to Cat Lee. A lot of hands do brick. The heart draw presenting itself. Oh, sorry, the, f the four flush draw presenting itself on the turn. So those single heart holdings that Kiatli is going to have on the button. Bricking on this Ten of Diamonds River. Discipline laid down by Kim. No nonsense. No nonsense. Just as we observe him here at this final table. Feels like it would be a good nickname for Brian Kim. No nonsense, Kim. I like it. Yeah. What would your nickname be, Ali? What was your nickname in high school? In college, it was a it's really <laughs> not even going to be <laughs> something that's understood by the viewing public. I won't even bother. But. Well, humorous. See if anyone gets it. Chachi. Chachi. Yeah. Which, by the way, careful on the pronunciation because you don't want to get Korean. It'll Chachi and your Chachi. 5.2. Chachi mispronounced is Chachi. Bellend. <laughs> Barbero with King Ten. Now I understand the nickname. <laughs> That's not what it was. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Did you just let the poker world know that your nickname in college was Chachi? Yeah, it, m very much at your behest. Bellend. What was your nickname? It Albatross? Certainly, certainly wasn't Bellend, I'll tell you that much. Nor was mine. You just said it, not me. How long ago do you think everyone listening to the stream really tuned out of this exchange? I think you'll find that that is never going to die. Nah. That right there. Nah. You're going to be reminded of this. It's, it doesn't even mean come. what you're trying to say it meant. You just said. No, in Korean. In Korean. But that's not what it is. It's just a ni Barbaro raising to 500,000 from the button with King 10. Henry malfunctioning. I'll go ahead and take the reins. King 5 for Ponikovs in a bad way out of the big. Interesting spot for Ponikovs. Option to three bet this combo. Blocking kings, ace king, king queen. To answer your question, was Ginger Ninja in high school? If you must know. I mustn't. You did ask. Just to humor you. Why wouldn't they have just gone with Ginger? I don't know, pal. I don't know. What about Dork? That could have also... No? Would that have been a little too harsh and on the nose? I'm kidding. No. You know that I have a deep appreciation <laughs> for you, Henry. Dork? No. Do you know what Dork actually means, by the way? Whale's Bellend. 
<laughs> True story. Look it up. Not kidding. Barbero, two nines. <laughs> We've really gone off the rails this evening, and I'm only one iced coffee in, so I really don't even know what to blame. Ponikov's squarely on the rails with ace-king. Be tussling with the chip leader here. Ronnie Hotdog saying someone needs to update Ali's Wikipedia. All in. I agree. Ponikov's going to run it. And Barbero with a really interesting decision, Ali. Let's see. He just snap calls. I mean, sure does. this is for the tournament. Let's be honest. If Barbero can around? find the hold here, Hopefully. it's going to hold 18 of the 32 million in play. Barbero, not one of these guys to just sit and go through a whole no, host of listen, man. I deliberations. Poor people. <laughs> just cash for 1.5 out in the Bahamas. Here we are, pocket nines. And they've held on the Jack-7 deuce board. That one, looks harder. Hmm? that one looks harder. Not going to be able to stay alive unimproved. Four clubs on the turn, and it's a tug at six outs for the Latvian. Not going to happen on this occasion. Fist bumps all around. Well, 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 Ali. Nacho Barbero talking earlier on about how bad he ran out that final table different story here in Vietnam Ponikovs as always gentlemen once departing GG's all round for the remaining players well we're down one track suit but we're up 178k if our name is Alex Ponikovs is his sixth rather fifth place finish will earn him some points toward the Ivan Liao Player of the Year rankings. His fourth ever cash in the Triton Series, adding to his over two and a half million in earnings coming into this event. Jans Ahrens on the short stack with four left here in event number two. 222K, the payout on tap, 271 for third. 34 million chips in play, Ali. Nacho Barbero with 18. 34, more than half the chips in play. How much? There's five points here to start. Really looking forward to this four handed play. See how Brian, Jans, and Kiat try and navigate this uphill battle. Kim, given the opportunity with Nacho out of the way. Trying to get one through on the button. Two and a half million. <laughs> Suited and connected. It was pretty until we heard from Ace Jack. As Brian's hand finds the muck. Some discussion in the chat, by the way, about Jans's presence being associated with the fact that he doesn't actually reside in the Netherlands, as you suspected, which is why he is here, unlike his compatriots. I believe somebody mentioned that he might live in Vienna. 30% outside the EU, supposedly the tax that is paid by the Dutch when they come in. Far be it from me to really do any vetting of that. Type anything in the chat. I, good chance I'll say it. Please don't actually do that. That's going to make my job a bit harder. King 10 suited. As Kim goes back to work with better kit on this occasion. Jans with another one that he could maybe get involved with from the button. Henry Ace Deuce of Clubs. Ace Deuce of Clubs. 22. Few options here available for Jans. I'm gonna just muck. We've already seen and bed witness to how you can print money by folding. Barbera in the big blind. Gonna tangle with Kim. Four left. 
come on, guarantee 222,000. <coughs> the record so far, 600 for first. Jan Zarens and Brian Kim, first timers. So Triton series. Checks through on the 9-5 Trey Rainbow. Eight Either player pops. connecting. Yeah, I mean, potential spot here for Barbero to steal this one away, fold out the suited broadways of the world, the ace highs that Kim is going to check back on the flop. As the defender, obviously, this board texture does skew in his favor. 1.1. He tends to agree with you, Arlie. Yeah. What's the pot-sized turn probe? A swift fold from Kim, chip leader extends his lead. I think I've got a nickname proposal for Nacho. How about the Barbarian? Well, his nickname is Nacho. His real name's Ignacio Jose. or Jose? Ignacio. Jose Ignacio, I think is probably. Jose Ignacio. Yeah. But hey, the Barbarian. Well, <laughs> on that note. I'm sorry, Ali. Let us turn I our apologize. attention to the good folks over at Poker Stake, our official staking partner, who are pointing out just what kind of returns you could have gotten had you invested in the likes of Linus Lolliger. You see the QR code on your screen. Scan it and get yourself over to PokerStake.com. Get yourself a taste with so many events still left on the slate here in Vietnam. Ali, I'll tell you what, Give mate. Give yourself a financial rooting interest. I would, talking of financial interest, would love another cup of coffee if you feel... It's up to you, pal. Don't worry. <laughs> the, 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 the look that I'm getting in the booth right now. Okay. No worries. You, you didn't... You didn't really think that there was... A planet in this solar system upon which hey, listen, you're I'm selling gonna yourself be fetching short here. you coffee. Hey. Alright. Don't sell yourself short, pal. Fetching you coffee is about Actually, as short as I can sell myself, Kilbane. Why don't you go grab me a couple of splendors? Yeah, stood next to me actually. You do come up short most of the time. Right. Taking credit for for genetic genetics. Things that you had nothing <laughs> to do with. That had everything. You know, to do, I had everything to do with it, okay? I used to eat my veggies when I was four. We enter the riveting part of the program now, Henry. Go ahead. Where you go and on. grab us coffee, yeah, I love that. Talk about vegetables. Mm. Kim jamming for 3.6 from the small. Takes it down. Pete Robbo in the chat saying, afternoon, Henry and Ali. Yeah, no. We from Liverpool, amazing run by Mark Weasel. Yeah, you know he wants a 30 minute break, right? So we're going to play the bounty if you finish. Oh, 15. Yeah. I would take a five minute break. Or something. Sure. But the next break is in 48 minutes. Five All this talk yeah. of a break, Sorry, Henry, no. and you know what? Yeah, I, I agree. Just play I'm on. just going to take one of my own. Oh, so you are going to grab us coffee. I don't I mean, know if that's what I'm going to do with it. We're going to take it. But, you know, just thinking if we're gonna go ahead and hold down the stuff, fort. I appreciate yeah, that, yeah. man. Be, I knew you'd come I think through. As short as possible, yeah. You know the people well, out there that are saying these things about you? They're wrong. And you've proven that right Just I want you to know that the likelihood that that coffee makes its way into the booth in a glass as opposed to poured over your head uh, is very, finish, very right? small, but the likelihood the two aces will perform <laughs> well against a6 <laughs> is very, very <laughs> great. Yes. Jans surveys the landscape here. I think you got this one, Henry. I think I do. It does come with the 3x from the small and Cat Lee with a hand that doesn't hate jamming over the top. This 3x from Aaron's. Not always going to be aces. Has plenty of fold equity. And more often than not, has the best hand blind v blind. 
He does announce himself cool. and a snap Sorry. call from Aaron's as he looks back down okay. and his two hole cards just gets to click the call button. Catley has him covered, but only just would be down no, no. to... I think you got me covered. You said six, right? Yeah. Do I have more than six? Maybe would be down to just a quarter of a big blind. Unless by some miracle he can crack the two black aces of the online legend Graf Tekul. And Zarens, first time at a Triton Not series. Sure. Not sure who's all in. First final table. Oh, Queen 7 5. Some connectivity. Around that six of hearts in Kiatli's hand. And well, what do you know? Even with aces, it's never easy open as Kiatli turns an open, open ender to pick up eight outs once. Doesn't do it. Seven of hearts pairing yeah, yeah. the board and Jan Zerens doubles up to just shy of 40 big blinds. Going to get an official count by the dealer does look like he had Jan's covered oh wait here's another one Sorry. with that Jan's separating himself from the other two 222,000 guarantee 271,000 for third Oh. He's saying there's a chance. Oh, wow. Five. There we go. Oh, they go live. Can't leave. Nice surprise, huh? Still in with a chance. Can obviously pick up the big blind ante yeah. as well as double as 75,000, maybe triple as 75,000 as I welcome Mr. Randy Liu, aka. Nananoko into the booth. Randy, Ali's had to step out to grab us some coffee and you're in here doing the Lord's work. Four left, event number two. Kept my seat warm. I'll take it. Thanks, Ali. Yeah, B team stepping out <laughs> as they should as we you know, approach the, the important part of the tournament. Where the big prizes are, of course. But um, yeah, that was, that was a bit of a... Cooler, right? Blind versus blind. Asex into bases. <laughs> They're just folding now because they know that Kiat Lee's got to get it in here. How much trouble is this? You wake up with an ace, folds oh, to you. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> big fucking house. It is pretty good, but oh, Barbero has woken up with better news in the big blind. So Kiat Lee, after losing that big pot, against Jans, blind versus blind. Finds himself all yeah, in against our chip good. leader That's and finds himself almost dead on the Jack-Jack douche please. drunk to running will cards. And he finds himself officially dead on the 10 of diamonds turn. But, Randy, another impressive run from Kiat Lee. Four point, you're four point one. Third place finish in Cyprus, second place finish in Cyprus as well. Now adding a fourth place finish here in Vietnam, knocking on the door a of a Triton trophy, but coming up just shy in event number two. I'll tell you this much, we'll be seeing plenty more from Kiat Lee, including the short deck events at the end of the series. Loves some short deck, but also showcasing that he knows how to hold his own in the No Limit Hold'em streets, Randy. Fourth place finish for him and find ourselves down to the final three players. It's none other than Jose Barbero, so known as Nacho, now in front. 271,000 locked up, 600,000 for first. It's good for TV. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and this is where the big pay jumps come in. 120K pay jump. They can survive from third to second, and then Great. roughly 200,000 for the heads up match. Action's not slowing down. King Queen suited. Yeah, thoughts on those big ladders at Triton events. It makes you want to play for the top even more, right? That's what we want. We want to see some blood. 
A lot of times it's first, let's get into the money, the first few pay jumps on the final table, a little bit smaller, mm. still significant, but it's really those top three spots is when it gets really juicy. So that what that means is the sec guy in second place doesn't want to be too reckless to bust out before the third place guy, especially if there's a reasonable gap like right now, whereas Brian Kim is the clear short stack in a position where he's going to have to shove it in soon. Welcome to those of you over on the East Coast just waking up. Live in Hoi An, Vietnam, the Hoi An Golf Resort and Casino. Triton Super High Roller Series, event number two. We're down to the final three players. It's the Argentine Nacho Barbero with the chip lead flopping top two. This bottom V big blind spot. Aaron second in chips. And he smashed that shot. He smashed the sport so hard. It's hard for the opponent to have much to continue. And a downsize, despite the deeper stacks. Check. Check. Queen of spades on the turn. 2.5 out there. I'd imagine Bar Barrel is going to want to fire some more chips in here. It's getting a bit more connected. Probably size up a bit. Give him two flush draws. Four line straights could roll off. How much? One point five. Twenty million in chips, Barbero. So because Brian Kim is so short, Jans is pretty much going to play a very limping, heavy strategy from the small blind, big blind. You don't want to blow up the pot, give your opponent the chance to three bet you, and then you know, maybe get stacked. 1.1. That's why Barbero is putting pressure on. Against this limp, expecting Jans to limp fold a very wide range, probably more so than normal. Brian Kim's only sitting on 11 big blinds right now. Oh. Not yeah. scared, but he has contained the pot. You put too much. To yeah. be a single race pot. You put like oh, sorry, meters. I put like 20, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <sorry. laughs> I was thinking there for a second. He's, he's cool, right? Do, right? Yeah. So if he didn't say call, that would be a raise. That would have been a raise. You're right. But yeah, like this from Barbera, as Randy was alluding to, the presence of Brian Kim, the you know, shortest stack by quite some margin, just offers that opportunity to Barbero to really lean into Aaron's 235, sorry, 135,000 difference between second and third. Barbero going to continue with a C bet on the ace 3 3. I mean, as dry as it gets, it doesn't need to bet too much to get a lot of hands to fold, I think. But this price, King High, you knowing your opponent's going to raise your limps with very weak hands, definitely worthy of calling one. Seven's a nice card for him, just in case he was kind of outkicked by some better king. 3.3 out there. Does Barbero fire twice? He is going to wave the white flag and 10 of diamonds completing the board. 
Jans with the check mark. Now, I don't think Jans thinks he can get called by worse. He could occasionally put like a really small blocker bet to kind of just set the price. Otherwise, check is standard. Do yeah. I show first? I like that from the chip leader. Just knowing when to shift back down through the gears. Yep. And the main thing was the pre-flop and the flop bet. Once you get called on ace, 3-3, three, three, rainbow, usually your opponent has an ace uh, or some king highs, but it's hard to guess which one it is. Let us know who in the chat who you're rooting for. A lot of you players back home that do play online are big fans of Graf Tackle. Down Zarens. Looking his first trip to a Triton series. First event. Did not play the 25k according to Trent Poker app. The audacity. Mm -hmm. Not playing that one. Showcasing why he is one of the most feared online players in the world. Kim's got ace deuce. Chip leader open on the button. Gonna lay it down. Normally, king queen suited. Definitely a hand you can consider re raising. But once again, we're gonna look at who's in third place. He's sitting on less than 10 big blinds. Just contain the pot size. Try to get the showdown. Does flop a flush draw against ace high. How have these chips not found their way into the middle, Randy? It's mainly because of Brian Kim's stuff. Right, exactly. And, you know, King Queen suited. I say that, I just realized they're 40 effective. I do <laughs> apologize. But yeah, you know, these two very aggressive. Well, you know, check raising is a decent hand to use King Queen suited here. You usually will not see that when it opens the door to put all the cool. chips in. It's not what you're looking for. So you're going to take more passive lines when ice <laughs> is involved and there's a guy who's going to bust soon or potentially bust soon. Oh, Aaron's breaking on the five of diamonds turn. Let's see what Nacho brings. Takes a free one. Ace 10, a lot of hand. Yeah. Beating, you know, a decent amount of Aaron's continuing range, the three X's, the six, sevens, those types of holdings. I feel pretty comfortable taking King Queen to showdown. It will win a lot of times. There's no point in turning into the bluff. King High. King High, no good. 2.7 oh, million chip King pot. King, King, King Queen. Okay, King. and 91 likes over on Triton Poker YouTube channel. We Appreciate all the support of the people <laughs> engaging with us in the chat. Do drop us a like. Helps us grow the game. Show some love and support for the Triton team, not just us here in the booth. For the players for coming out, setting new records to the team behind the scenes. Production crew. Take a few seconds to just click that like button. Otherwise, Randy is going to 
cut the stream. <laughs> I'm gonna. You, you, you think I'm gonna cut the stream? I wouldn't do that to my fans. Uh, to your fans. <laughs> All right, hey. sorry. To Triton fans. Heck on a minute, pal. I know there's a lot of love out there for Nano. It's the Nano Noko. Went pot. Nacho thinking about taking a stab. It's not. It still seems like one of those spots where Queen 3 is just trying to contain the pot. Got an inside straight draw. Looks like they're both happy to check it down. No one with a piece. Don't think Nacho thinks the jack high is good. Just is he getting trapped by a hand that's going to call bet? Going to start by betting. Wow. wow. I mean, this designed to fold out precisely. Queen high. King highs and king. Uh, king highs and queen highs. <coughs> I don't think Jans is ever folding a pair. And how about that? Mr. Barbero just dialed in. Really feeling it out there. Came into this final table two of nine. Yeah, really good recognition there. I think he was probably thinking that Graftikel would find a value bet by the river if he had a pair. Once he saw the third check made it seem more heavily a high card type hand. Daniel G. Williamson, I'm a Nananoko fan, Ooh. especially with the Nananoko Rotterdam duo. I tell you what, that for me personally, during the pandemic, during lockdown, was one of my favorite things to, to watch good old Rotterdam. <laughs> Haven't seen him in a while. Good friend. Loves poker. Really loves poker. Kim. Going to be loving this spot if he can find the call here. Nice. Barbero effectively putting him all in. And Kim. <laughs> Six to four favorite, Randy. To double up here. And be back in the game. Yeah, slightly ahead. You know Nacho's going to jam so wide. In the spot pre-flop, got to call off King High. Five to come. Nine, four, four, so far, so good for the American. Seven of hearts on the turn, changes nothing. Is this going to be the first blow to Barbero's stack? It is indeed, Jack of Spades. Completes the board, and now we've got a real game on our hands, Randy. Yeah, with five million, he's he's got a uh, room to put some reshoves in, you know, some raise folds. Definitely got some got some moves he can do besides just all in. I mean, he can do some damage, right? For sure. If someone he gets one more double in, you know, they're going to be the short stack. Two three twenty five. Two three twenty five. So with that, Brian Kim. Thank you. Playing around. Thank you. 18 bigs now. Big fucking hands. Fold the best hand. Yeah? What do you fold? Air 9. <laughs> Closed. Are you that guy at the table, <laughs> Randy? <laughs> you're yeah. like, oh, you're lucky I folded, pal. Mm -hmm. oh, if I was in better. the hand. I would have had two pair. With my 9-3. <laughs> yeah. so, oh, I would have flopped quads. Those are my favorite players. I do love them. But you, it, they seem to be in the mix a lot more in PLO as well. <laughs> oh, I would have had a nut flush. Yeah. So, all right, pal. With your ace, nine, six, deuce, triple suited. Would have had two pair. Or full house, right? And it's like six deuce. <laughs> okay. Well, Brian Kim in contention, American. 
believe he's plays in LA. Rathakel. King Jack suited. Still going to play on a more passive line because he does have quite the advantage in terms of chip stack relative to Brian Kim. By the way, our production crew asked Jan Zarens what his most memorable moment in his poker career was, and he said busting Phil Hellmuth from the main event, the only time he's ever played it, believes it was back in 2019, got his ace nine into Phil Hellmuth's ace king, rivet a nine, and said, on your bike, Phil. <laughs> I don't know if he actually said that or whether he's just That's that a bluff. It seems saying a bluff. that now. But if you're ever going to say on your bike, Phil, I feel like that would be That's the, the ideal one. moment as we try and back into this. Jan's going nowhere, outflopped by Barbero. Barbero. What is funny now? <laughs> I'm telling you, Jans is an absolute memer. It's a funny anecdote about you as he spikes the best hand on the river. Let's see if he can squeeze out some value from Barbero's flopped bottom pair. I'll fill you guys in on. Yeah, I kind of think he thinks he's most likely up against a nine or four to get value 800. from. So I think it's smart for him to bet here because those hands won't likely bet if it gets checked to. Not a reader for me. Oh, Barbera with the read. Not a good river for me, lets it go. So back to the funny anecdote about Jans. So in the first live tournament he ever played, he was incredibly nervous when he sat down. After a few minutes, he decided to listen to some music to loosen up a little. So he started blasting music through his earphones, and after around 10 minutes, he took them out, only to notice that the music was actually just blasting from his phone. He hadn't plugged the earphones in correctly, and nobody at the table had said anything. Followed by, he was pretty embarrassed. 10 minutes, and nobody said a word. Mm -hmm. In a live tournament. some gold in there. Well, let's jam these pocket deuces as you research more things to talk about. What a legend. I hope that story's true. That's a pretty specific story that to is, make up. That is. When asked what his Poker Dreamers said winning a live tournament would be nice. It's achieved pretty much anything and everything you can in the online realm. But he still has a lot to prove on the live felt. Short term, he's going to settle with beating Linus in any pot. That is quite the achievement. It is a big achievement. You ought to say that you've won a pot. Nacho opening ace nine. Brian Kim's got a reshoving hand, ace ten. I can easily see these chips getting in because it's only going to be about a ten big blind reshove. Ace nine can certainly going to call. Yeah, just notice that the blinds have gone up, Randy. And given that Barbero is going to be opening incredibly wide on the button, wouldn't fault him for then calling with the ace nine. Here we go. We're just saying how another double for Kim would really bring him back into this. He can win here. He's gonna be in good shape. Yeah, I mean, Barbero's gonna be tied with Jans and Kim's gonna be on their tail. Certainly a cooler, though. Nothing he can do. Standard as played. Standard as played, indeed. 
Dave. What a queen out. So far, so good Just for Brian holding. Kim. King of Hearts on the turn changes nothing. Does present some chop outs. Seven or an eight would chop it, but a nine yeah. of spades. Nice game. Well played. Randy. Almost did Three it. outer. I see the nine is hot. For Nacho <laughs> Barbero. <laughs> on the river. Should we do a small break? To yeah, yeah. yeah to send Brian Kim yeah, home in third. That's brutal. Just talking about three outers earlier on, Brian Kim heading home. 271,000 for his third place finish here in event number two. What a brutal way to go. Just one card away of really bringing it back to a tightly packed three-handed play, Randy, as we welcome you viewers back home into the broadcast booth. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. Didn't expect that, Randy, no. to be part. I was just saying, you know, there are a few cards that would obviously present a chop, but one card to come to bring him right back into it. But Nacho Barbero spiking that nine on the river now finds himself heads up against Jans Ahrens with almost a two-to-one chip lead. But 30 bigs, the effective stack of the online legend. Plenty of heads-up play to be had here in event number two. Anything that we can expect to see that's going to be slightly different? Uh, I wouldn't expect too much different, but... It's good. They got good stacks. They're definitely aggressive. I think it's going to be a good match. Well, we're about to find out as we're going to head into a quick break. These two players are going to come back and battle it out for the title. It's Nacho Barbero against Ian Zerens. We'll see you guys on the flip side. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker.
stands up, microphone off, straight into the 20K mystery bounty. Look, he's got plenty to be happy about, obviously, but you and I have both been around a lot of poker players who don't exude the level of joy that Linus Love does as you get a look at that smile one last time. Finishing in ninth place, collecting 60K to head to his already in Las at Vegas. The, the Aria. But no, not at the Aria, uh -huh. at Resorts World. I actually, believe it or not, stumbled upon Aaron Zhang, of all people, Yes. in that game. Yes, that is true. I saw him there as well. Couldn't believe my eyes. Out oh, in. Was splashing around West in a mix game, by the way. He could be dangerous if he suddenly decides to redirect his efforts into those streets. Meanwhile, the efforts of Kianwei Tan are placed upon an ace five, which should Barbero click call with ace ten, will have its work cut out for it in a real way. Nacho choosing to flat, Henry. Dicey proposition. We can see he's getting it in in great shape against the plus one open and six players behind Barbero. It looks pretty strong, too, to the remainder of the field from time to time, or you, you think it doesn't? You think it's it looks like something you can squeeze? I, I think... It's, you know, playing with fire, but I'm in the booth. He's out there. It's made the call for six bigs. You mean the ICM. Yeah. By the way, he's not even looking on, by the way. In the, he's deeming this three million chip pot not worth peeling his eyes away from the IG app. Anyways, one card away from becoming the chip leader. Needs to fade a king, queen, jack, or an ace, or an eight for the chop. And the 10 on the river improves Barbero to an even better aces up as Kianwei Tan gave it all he had, was up to over 4 million in chips at one point. The first timer to the Triton Tour, finishing in eighth place. Not a bad performance at all, and certainly the kind of experience that one would imagine is going to give the Malaysian the bug and plenty more poker available to him. Seth is that he doesn't know right now. I promise you these hands will be reviewed with the team post-series. You know, I'm the type of guy, if I don't know sometimes, something, sometimes I'll Google it. These guys, if they're unsure of a spot, you can bet that they're putting in the work to figure it out, whether it be back at the hotel room or post-series study lab with the boys. Now, I'm not going to mention who this player was in order to protect their anonymity, but you and I were in a conversation yesterday with someone who kind of peeled the curtain back a little bit to just the depth and extent to which research and effort is being committed to becoming the best at the craft. And for me, it was just outstanding to bear witness to as we see Seth Davies getting after Barbero with Jack four and Nacho slams the call in there with Jack five, Henry. Looks like he's going to ask for the, the last 25K. Huh. <laughs> I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> and you folded that. We would have had problems, Nacho. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It comes 4-4 for sure now. Good luck, bro. Oh, the space. All high cards. High cards is good for you. Good like good to me. This looks a lot like a chop to me. Easy now. Ooh, oh, easy now. What a fucking time today. What do I need? Wow. Six or higher, non spade? Or yeah. four? Six or higher, non spade indeed. Oh, oh nastiness. Seth Davies. Jack 
four against Jack, five on that flop. <laughs> so <laughs> often, next? it would have been a chop. How but can I be ahead? <laughs> Please, no. Am I the next? Running like spades. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Will show the American the door. And a 102K payout as Seth Davies dispatched seventh place. Back-to-back -back FTs for Seth. I don't know about you, Henry, but you know when the cheese melts across all of the tortilla chips and creates Go on. an adhesive single, so you know, you reach for one chip in the nachos the, the whole and then put the whole, in. right. Right. That counts as one nacho, as Jack Black famously shed light upon in the cult favorite Saving Silverman. Jack Black. Wow. Who also, by the way, played Nacho Libre, just to bring it full circle. He didn't see any of those movies, obviously. I'm actually going to, after the stream, <laughs> One minute. tie you to a chair and force you to watch those two films. Kulev tying himself to pocket nines, making it 1.5 million to go. Ooh, and Kiatli welcomes Ace Queen. Six figures in equity. Very warm welcome back to live coverage from event number two, the 15K8 Max here at the Huana Golf Resort and Casino. He's Randy Liu. I'm Henry Kilbane. And Randy, we find ourselves heads up. Nacho Barbera with a near two to one chip lead over the online crusher legend that is Jans Ahrens. What can we expect is going to be different from today? 60 bigs plays 30. I mean, there's definitely room for play. Uh, we know both these guys are going to be very well experienced uh, playing heads up. They've won a lot of tournaments in their lifetime. You know, I, it is the guy with more chips that does have advantage, but, you know, if they're equal in chips, I would say it's a fair match. Well, we can see there, 56 plays 30. The final two players of this event, number two, 172 runners, another record-breaking field here in Vietnam. Took us less than 24 hours to break the record that was set yesterday in the 25K as we throw it back down to the main feature table for what we can only assume is going to be an epic heads-up battle between these two poker legends. Jan Zarens playing his first ever Triton event, looking to go one for one in tournaments played and trophies earned would be quite the feat. Nacho Barbera only played one event prior to coming to Vietnam. That was a 20K, I believe one of the first events that we had in Madrid. Didn't play a full series. He's here for the full series in Vietnam. I assume that coming off the back end of his incredible run out in the Bahamas in the PSPC. Looking to add a 600K score to oh, his yeah. records. Uh, here. As we dive back into heads up play. 8 8 5 board, Randy. Both players connecting with that 5 of hearts. Note the kicker issues that Barbero finds himself in. It is a limp pot. So in limp pots, you will see it just check to the dealer button and they're gonna have incentive to bet a very wide range. Ranges are extra wide in limp pots. Any room for a check raise here from Barbera? Always opting to just check call and reevaluate turns and rivers. Oh, there's always merit to check racing some kind of there pair. There is. In heads up, you're not worried about kicker issues as often. Just some leveling wars, you get your opponent to float a little bit wider. I assume this just protecting his check raising range. Oh. Going to have some trips, going to have some nine sevens, yes. six fours of the world, those gut shots out there that are going to want to try and take the pot down right here, right now. Oh, it's going nowhere, 3.6 out there. It does get a little confusing sometimes, though, when you get called by the check raise, whether you're up against, you know, an eight, better five. It does have some connection with those straight type hands, straight draws, so eight. 6-7 would make a pair, 7-9 would have a straight. Changes things up a bit. Yeah, the 6 of hearts. 
Rolling off on the turn, as Randy alluded to, completing some of the potential draws that Irons could hold. Let's see what Barbero brings. If he brings in a bet, it's kind of like trying to kick out those maybe high card floats. Going to slow it down. For Jans here, I mean, the six does connect with a check raising range, so. Do you want to put in more chips when maybe you're behind? Take the free one. Well, the free one. Chop it up. <coughs> Queen of clubs. They are going to chop this at showdown. Should it get to uh, should it get to showdown rather? There are still ways. I don't really see. I'm trying to think. Is the blocker bet coming in? Set the price. Five. Same. You got lucky. Lucky, lucky. A little lucky. A little lucky indeed. Not going to begrudge anyone some you luck. lucky that the six came. Otherwise, I win the hand, maybe. Ah, how did you plan on winning that hand? <laughs> In another turn, maybe I win. <laughs> uh, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me dream. Yeah, 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 okay, sure. <laughs> you would have won it. Okay, so verbal you jousting, Randy. I didn't love the six. <laughs> the worst cards for both of us. True. Barbero said that Jans was lucky that the six rolled off, otherwise he would have won the hand. Aaron's promptly responding with, in what world would you have won the hand power? Listen, okay? It's not his first rodeo playing heads up. Love the banter between the two. Let's a quick look at our chip counts. Courtesy of Poker Stake. 200,000, 400,000 with a 400,000 big blind ante. 55 bigs for Nacho Barbero. 31 bigs for Graf Tickle. Jan Zarens, 406,000 guaranteed for these two players, both looking for their first Triton trophy. Deuce 5 suited on the button. I've seen some limp on the first hand. Seems like a holding might continue. He's going to raise it up, mixing it up. Very nine. Ace 4 suited. Cool. I don't like too many big blinds to put in a re-raise. Yeah, a lot of hand to defend with, but well, doesn't want a three bet and be forced off of his equity in the form of a four bet from Barbero. Yeah, this is just absolutely <laughs> terrible board for five dudes suited. About as bold as it can get. However, the betting lead, for the Argentinian, just a little min bet. Designed to fold out random hands. All the undercards, no yeah, all the undercards that Hans is going to have plenty of. Yeah, Jans is, he wasn't really looking to continue <coughs> against a big bet, but against the min bet, might as well. Got a straight draw. The board's getting a little scary. It's pretty hard for Nacho to fire again. I can see Jan's having a nine pretty easily. Some kind of pair with a flush draw that might call again on the turn. Gives up. Well, it's going to check down to the Jack of Clubs River. Jan's with the check mark, but we've seen aggression displayed from our chip leader. Should Aaron's opt to check, will Barbero just wave the white flag? By not betting the turn, he's not representing a straight anymore. Um, Jack X, I guess it's possible. He knows he's capped his range by checking the turn, so betting is a, a little bit tougher to do. Wow, he's going to make it, though. So no flushes, no straights in range is what you're saying, but still some two pairs that could potentially value bet? Yeah, I can see that. Jack, like, ace-jack, you know. There's a decent amount of jacks in there. Well, Barbero 
Getting it done in the form of half pot on the river. It's correctly deducing. Jans is going to have some one heart type holding. Some I, I think result. he thought that Jans would bet if Jans had a straight himself or like some kind of flush. He wouldn't expect that to check again on the river after it goes to turn, uh, turn check check. Pretty good hand reading. I mean, you got to fight for these small pots, and you really do add up. So you can't wait around too long in heads up, especially in tournaments. Uh, you know, you don't want to dwindle down to, like, say, 15, 16 blinds. Some limps going on. 25 big blind stacks tends to limp the button a lot more often. Blank out. Heads up is, it's just really a different animal than ring game. Just those wider ranges, you're forced to play. Big SN Nacho gonna bring it home. Well, the Argentinians are known for bringing things home, unlike the English football team. <laughs> you play they actually know how to win yeah. a World Cup. See if Nacho knows how to win a Triton event in Who great shape. In Holland? Two hmm? to one chip leads. Your friends in Netherlands. You mean poker player wise? Yeah. Um, not people that you would know, I, guess, I think. Okay. Yeah, don't be giving out that information for free, Nacho. Trying to get some free info. <laughs> You're friends with uh, Noah, right? You must be talking about Noah Boken. Cool. Yeah, I know him for since 2018. He, he always no, plays. 2000, 2000, no. 1998, I met him. Wow. He seems to play like five tournaments a year and always literally goes deep in every single one. Since 1998. <laughs> he was too bad. The year before the 2000s. It's tough for you. After that, he won everything. He won like, he went on like a three million hitter. He was never catching a tournament. Check. Do you still have people in your life that you were friends with back in 1998? No? Like, no, not that I can think of right now. Riz, then leave England out of it, please. Hey, listen, as an Englishman, I can get away with it. This is painful Check. for me as it is for you guys. They're taking their high cards to showdown cheaply, just checking. Well, if you get to this river with King High and you got two checks in, might as well go for the Ace third. High. It's good. good. Thank you. Yeah, just keep it, yeah. He has 15% of me in this tournament. In this one? Yeah. 50? 15. Oh, I was going to say. One 50. Five. So yeah, you're playing with lucky money. Hey, listen, that's a good tactic. He's, he's running hot. Yeah. I've got friends that whenever they buy action, whoever it is that they buy action in, they just seem to you run friends with him? No, but I, I know him. I played a little bit with him also in the Netherlands. What? I played a little bit with him in Amsterdam, yeah. for, for example. Check. Keeping the ace axes in his range in limp pots, so he's not capped. Interesting board, the 8-4-4. Four, four. Barbero with ace high, Jans with backdoor clubs, a gut shot and a potential hand wow. to triple off with. Barbaro is actually leading out. It's not a common move in a limp pot. Usually you would check to the dealer button. I think Jans knows that. He might attack it a bit. He would think that someone, if they flopped a four and eight, they would just check to the button. He's going to raise it up. Yeah, he tends to agree wait, wait, with you, Randy. Okay. Told him. Told the waiter to wait a second. No, no, he told oh. Jans to just wait one second. So, hey, let me. 
Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> just like, hey, stop the clock, okay? Let me just tip this guy. Then we can play some poker. I'd love to see it. Not going anywhere with Ace High, Randy. And all tip of a sudden. Call. It's the first time I've seen it. New strategy, new meta, the old tip call. Four million out there. Jans just 8.3 behind. And the Ace of Hearts rolling off. This could be. The final hand. So let's idea. think. He led from. He didn't raise preflop. He led from the big blind. And he called a raise. I wouldn't expect Jans to think that Nacho would have an ace. An ace a lot of times would check the flop and call bet. Leading on a. Pre this little curveball of this lead has kind of changed the way the hand's being played. Three million into four million on this ace of hearts turn setting up a river spr of 0.5 unblocking diamonds blocking some of the hands that you'd maybe want barbero to kind of stab call with and then fold turn some seven five six fives yeah i don't think Jans would think barbero would fold an eight right now as played With this call, it does seem most more likely that Nacho is holding an eight than an ace. Surely Don't some think alarm he thinks bells. the fours in there lead the flop. It's unlikely. Alarm bells surely ringing. And Smiley does have equity. Missed it. Ten million in the middle. Diamonds, brick. All the inside gut shots, brick. Zaren's going to wave the white flag, or is he going to try and get an eight to fold, as Randy alluded to? Yeah, I don't think he thinks that Nacho would lead a four on the flop. Doesn't think that Nacho would lead an ace on the flop in the limp pot. And even that eight lead is, is like it's changed things up a lot. Well, exactly that lead, precisely the reason why we're playing a 10 million chip oh. pot going to the river. And Aaron's is going to triple off, follows oh, through on the brick river. And as you already mentioned, Randy, not many aces in Barbero's range. This looking a lot like an eight or bricked diamonds. And that's why he's making this move. Aaron's feels that his range is much stronger given the action. Nacho is actually way above what you expect him to have. Yeah, given that the perceived range that you alluded to looks like an eight or missed diamonds, maybe too high up in his range here with that very disguised turn top pair. 15-3 in the middle. Getting 3 to 1 on a call need to be good just 25% of the time. And Aaron's certainly capable of having bluffs in this spot as we can see the busted gut shot. It's a 200k pay jump they're playing in this heads up match. Thinking it through. If Nacho makes the call. We have ourselves a Triton newcomer with a Triton trophy. Third ever Triton event for Barbero. By the 20K Madrid, the 25K GG Super Millions Live Edition here in Vietnam. If he can find the call, he's going to find his hands on that trophy and the Shambhala Jewels bracelet. don't see how he can fold ace deuce it's just too high on his range and it's not what his opponents are going to expect him to have yeah it's really putting barbero to the test here i think barbero thinks that if he's losing his hands against a four it seems like a four or nothing spot 
does flick in the one chip call, Randy, and with that call, wow. gets shown okay. the seven high from Jan Zerens. I love the handshake there at the end, the sportsmanship being displayed between these two. We have ourselves a first time Triton champion, and it is none other than one of the most decorated Argentinian poker players of all time, Nacho Barbero, taking down event number two here for 600,000, Randy. Can we just give some credit, though, what? to our runner-up, Mr. Hey. Jans Ehrens, first ever Triton event, 406,000 going his way, and hey, yeah. listen, man, if there's, I, I there's a cool way six, to bust six, the seven. tournament, bust the diamonds. It's, uh, the good old-fashioned triple off. Mm. I let actually, because I had, I sort of had the ace of diamonds. And then I look back again and I had the ace of diamonds. Some words, some strategy talk between <laughs> the two. Now that's over. Now that it's over. <laughs> that's just saying he was leading because he thought he had the ace of diamonds. Slight misread, but the misread being a fortunate one in this case for our champion as it did get Jans to, you know, take it upstairs with the 7-6, then barrel on the turn and follow through on the river. What an epic hand to wrap things up. Kind of, you know, yesterday as well, the Jack-3 mm -hmm. for Webster Lim, if you recall, the ISO from the big blind flopping middle pair and then making an epic call on the river, similar-ish spot here. Yeah. Is, is that going to be the trend at these Triton series? You have to make world-class hero calls <laughs> if you want to win Triton trophies. We welcome you back into the booth. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. Randy, big smile on my face, big smile on your face. It was a fun one. It was an ultimate fun one. I and mean, before we got to this final table, remember Nacho made that call of the King X against the seven deuce uh, from the player from Vietnam on that four flush. That was a big point when just faulted him to the chip lead. And he used those chips to just cruise through this final table was able to take it down. Eventually, um, that last hand is that one of those bet bet calls. It's not like we're getting it in pre flop with you know a coin flip and see yeah. who wins the tournament. Yeah. These are some big, um, big bluffs happening, big call downs. Nacho, I mean, he's got to be happy. He flew out to Vietnam. He said it was a long journey, but definitely worth it now. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't know what the luggage fees are going to be <laughs> on a flight from Vietnam back to Argentina. Uh, Argentina, Argentina, rather, with that trophy in his suitcase, but 600,000 coming along with that trophy. I'm sure he's going to be more than happy. Just reflecting back to that hand that you mentioned, uh, where he did make the hero call with the king three, that really did kind of propel him into a spot where, if I'm not mistaken, that was prior to the bubble, was then leaning into a lot of the middling stacks and just kind of went from strength to strength coming into this final table. And some final table it was, if we just look over some of the names, you know, Kat Lee, Brian Kim, Alexis Ponikovs, Alex Kulev, Seth Davies, uh, Linus Love, you know, like, look, this was a star-studded final table. Kian Wei Tan as well in the mix there on that one. So G, G's, Tanacho. Randy, we've got something to tease to the viewers at home in the form of event number three, mm -hmm. the mystery bounty, going to be bringing you guys action from that 20,000 buy-in mystery bounty. But before we bring you live coverage from event number three here in Vietnam, we're going to have a quick word with our champion, Nacho Barberos, down on the main stage talking with Ali Najad. Well, anyone that has been around tournament poker for any measure of time knows that the idea of momentum is a very real one. Coming off of a fourth place finish at the PCA, Nacho Barbero, a first timer to the Triton Tour, now can call himself a champion. 600K richer. Nacho, I've always known you as a cash game player. Often looking by you, the table right next door, you're playing mixed games. Here you are at your first ever Triton. First and foremost, what prompted your decision to come and join us here in Vietnam? Um, I knew it was going to be really good. I mean, everybody was telling me that, like, it was going to be really good feels. Um, Phil Nagy told me, he said, hey, come over. I mean, I'm like, why not? I mean, sure, let's go. I, it was a good idea to come to visit Vietnam, um, play the tournaments. I was still a bit tilted about PCA, so I wanted to like keep playing some more tournaments. 
it was a bit of a minefield, your path to this final table, and I only know that because you and I had a discussion on a break where you recounted a hand that really didn't make a ton of sense. People really put you to the test out there, in particular, some of the less predictable first-timers, amateurs, if you will. Yeah, um, yeah, it was on the bubble, yeah. The guy, like, just, like, uh, put, like, a really <laughs> criminal bluff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, like, bet, 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 and I just call, call, call with one pair and, like, four hearts. Um, but, yeah, I mean, sometimes you got to call. You got to go with your gut, and I went with my gut. I saw he didn't have it, and he didn't have it. On the topic of going with your gut, as we were in the booth, at one point Henry Kildane said, ICM is for poor people. <laughs> You're coming off of that fourth place deal. I know that you have some strategy going in, but more so than the average player that we saw, not only here at this final table, but maybe in situations that you encountered, you made your decisions really quickly and went with it. Would you call yourself a field-based player? I mean, like the problem, <laughs> I mean, like, it's not like I want to be like super fast, but the problem is I had no time banks coming into the final table. So before, like I literally like use all my time banks and then I only have four left. That means like 20 seconds, like 80 seconds I have. So I mean like I really didn't even have like I just have to think like super fast and like I have to like take the best decision like I could. Like I mean it was like I didn't want it to be to play that fast for so much more money but like I needed to keep my time banks for like a really really complicated hand like this one like the last one. Well I'll tell you what you looked cool in the process could have fooled us Enjoy the moment. Nacho Barbero, your event number two champion here at the Triton Super High Roller Series Vietnam. Thank Congratulations, you. Papi. Let's go, Papi. Let's fucking go. By security. Drop kicked. I mean, I've tried. I get side eyed, and I've got a, I've got a pass. Chidwick's got king eight. Is he thinking about trying to make a stance? All eyes are on him as he is way down there in chips. How much you play now? One million? Right about four big blinds. Is that, you have a white between the blacks now, right? I wish. <laughs> no, 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 between Gonna the make blacks. a stance here. Oh, right. no, 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 Just no, no. try to hopefully t pick up these chips. Yeah, I think Chitters knows that Sometimes I, I can't use my phone. he's not gonna be able to sneak like, into the money that, here. Like that. Oh, really? Six handed table, that big blind coming round. Yeah, if he doesn't take this spot, he's right. really just folding down the 50k. Like, uh, like yeah. Right? Uh, like less, King less. eight, more Around than enough. 1.7. Sub four. 1.6. Fold yeah. equity. Thank you. You're welcome. Not a lot, but just enough fold equity to kick yeah, out these matter, types of hands. It matters a lot, this tax. Yeah, yeah, two off the money. It's going to be a lengthy bubble. Freeman asking, who's, who's the bouncer? In the security team. His name's James Dempsey. If any of you have any problems, you just ask for head of security, James Dempsey. He's doing the math here. He's getting 38%. We can call here. That's, that's annoying. I, 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 I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So we don't tell, let Mateo tell us what it is. It is a call for him. Let's make the call. Nine do suited. Chidwick. 61% equity. TV. All in on it's the, the first bubble. Time in my life, I'm not. I'm not rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear. At least Wait, who just said that? John So said that to Stephen Chiwick. For the first, first time. time in his life, he's not rooting for him. Wow. 
Brutal. Well, there's a deuce on the fob with an eight. Saw the deuce first, I got a bit excited there. Mateos flopping a pair, Chidwick with middle pair. Needs to fade a nine or a deuce to double up on the bubble here in event number two, and he does exactly yeah, that. 740,000 chip pot going yeah, Chidwick's way. I think it's awkward now. He just told him, I'm not rooting for you. He's still at the table. We're still on 60, the blinds, or it's 80. So he's, oh. now he's comfortable if that stack maintains. It's the same. It is safer in here. It's safer. Well, I mean, it depends. If you have YouTube and Twitch chat open, it can get dangerous. You know, every <laughs> now and then you catch a stray bullet. Shots get fired. It's all right, let me go. <laughs> let me go by and get away from that chat. Uh, one in the chat saying, "What time is it there?" It is four coming up to four p.m. local time. It's so going to be playing down to a winner in this one today. I'll be giving you guys updates as and when they come from event number three, the twenty k mystery bounty. But again, if you want to see who's involved in that one can quite literally download the app and sweat all of the action from event number three, Nacho Barbero at this feature table. Chip leading the entire field, 25 left, 23 paid. And note, by the way, Randy, Nacho, chip leader with just 40 big blinds. Yes. So a really shallow field here, given how these short stacks have just continued to double mm -hmm. over the last couple of hours. It's Nacho going to take a free one. Jack Deuce. Rob yeah. saying you should go and play cash with the guy that called with 6-4. Uh, if you're talking about Mr. Bong, as much as I would love to play cash with Bong, Randy, I've got a funny feeling his pockets are way too deep for me. <laughs> and no matter how many times I would chip up and win a hand against him, he would just keep reloading until he busted me. So we might not be able to, that, That's a big game he's going to want to play. That is a big game. That is definitely a big game. Mateos, obviously not going anywhere with his nut middle pair. Barbero with the stab with just Jack High, picking up equity on the turn in the form of a gut shot. Let's see if he fires again into... He might use those chip leading chips to put some pressure. I mean, he could get some high cards to fold. That might check call. Ace highs, 4x, weak 7x. Are we too deep for him to, to double barrel here? Is, is that the reason why he's just knuckling back his kind of... I also think that he knows that Mateos is a pretty good hand reader and it's harder to shake him off of those weaker pairs. Well, Mateos improving to two pair. 540 out there, unfortunately for him. Not going to get any value from Nacho. Snap mark, Jack Deuce. Just scanning the around down. the other tables. Close. Brian Kim on the up oh, and up. Slow played Ace King Pre against Linus Love. Seth Davies. Stop after three hands, basically. Seth Davies going for another cash. He's out there. He is out there. I mean. He must have like one of the highest final table <laughs> rates in these Triton events. I couldn't agree more, man. You were talking about how important it is to get that monkey off your back and ever since cashing in Madrid, Seth Davies has just been on an absolute tear this past year. These last Assistant. three stops. Let's see, Mateos. Does have a chip leader in the small blind. 
so doesn't really look too sweet to play. 9-3 offsuit. Not much of a hand, but he's got the chip lead. He's got a guy who wants to survive with 10 blinds. Maybe you see a flop? Try to at least. We'll see how Van Dien proceeds here. It does knuckle back in position. 240,000 in the middle. Flopped well. it. And that's actually a decent piece for Lee Van Dien. This could spell disaster for the local Vietnamese hero. <coughs> Two overs and a gut shot. Nacho with trips. Can I knuckle it on over? Yeah, he smashed it so hard. I was just hoping his opponent. I mean, you just saw him bluff seven deuce against you. Maybe he'll take a stab. Yeah, I think Nacho always going to extend the rope, if you will, given the small hand samples that we've seen so far at this feature table already. You can s It feels like check calls the right play if you've seen someone multi-barrel off against you. You could kind of go for a tiny raise if you really thought your opponent would read that as weakness. He's trying to look weak. He's going to check Ooh, raise. Wow. It looks suspicious, doesn't it? Like 10 big blind stacks, check raising, 9x on 997. All in. Wow. wow. Hang on. How have all the chips worked their way into the middle here, Randy? This feels exactly like what Barbera was going for, the clickback, just really extending the rope to Van Dien. I think Van Dien didn't expect that a nine would check raise him here. Felt like he was up against a bluff a lot. Bit of a misstep. Still Some has a chance. Some leveling going on. on Barbera with the min click on the flop. Picking up an additional two outs in the form of two tens. No dice okay. as the three of hearts on the river boats up Nacho and extends, or sorry, regains his chip lead with 24 players remaining. As you kind of have to if you're the tallest man ever to ever live, right? April 11. Someone in the chat pointing out that the 20k mystery bounty that is being updated over on the Try and Poker Plus so app is in real time. Uh, yeah, it is in real time. Mm -hmm. Doesn't contain spoilers. We're currently covering event number two. That one could have been in real time until the stream starts, which won't be until around 10 p.m. tonight. Low you know all that. Aaron's all in. Steven, seven's hijack. Six, six, five. I think. Ace Jack for Chidwick. Good time to clash. High Jack cut off. I think it's easily could be dominating type of hands that Jans would jam to High Jack with. Picking off those Ace All tens, in. Ace nine suiteds, ten Jack. So two people are in. One jack dead. So Ace king suited for oh. O'Dwyer. Wow. Three ways. Another three way all in. Well. Oh. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I loves to see that. Pair is good. O'Dwyer and Chidwick sharing outs. How much do you have, Stevie? It's less, right? Or? More than you. More? Okay. Yeah. Ah. One jack's been folded too. So Chidwick is in very bad shape. Million chip pot, Dwyer covers both. 655, So far, so good on the 10 9 4 4, the two red sevens seven of, of Aaron's. It's a bit greedy. Hmm? Seven of spades. About the three of clubs. It's the fade, Why you ace, ruin it for us? king, or a jack. Damn, I had pocket threes. Six fold. One card to come. No dice. It is paint, but not the paint that O'Dwyer or Chidwick were looking for. 
So with what that, does it feel like I've never dodged that many overcards my whole life. Actually, it's also my first time. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. What's it feel like? You look pretty happy about it. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> I mean, good game, Steven. Oh, I had a thing black silent. Maybe club. Thank you. Ace Queen under gun. Right. Big blind is a hundred K now. Yeah, that's wild. Half a starting stack now. The big blind, 20 players remain. Average stack, just 17 bigs, Randy. It's shallow. Byproduct of them short stacks just doubling up. You see how Dwyer is thinking about making a stance of Jack-10. Figures it's gonna be an overlay from the small blind, big blind, big blind ante. Yeah, currently seven-handed has three hands to find a spot before he's going to be forced to put in half of his chips in the big blind. Does he want to take it with Jack-10? Also asking how wide Undergun is opening and how it would fare against Jack-10. Ying Chow picks up Ace Queen. This is going to be easy all in. Chop up coming. Oh, whoa, whoa. Now, we hold, early. hold your horses, Randy. <laughs> We've had our fair share of insane runouts already so far this series. Yeah, more often than not. They're going to yeah, chop this one up. And okay. the Ace Jack Six. Can I say it now? They're going to chop it up. You can indeed. I'll allow it. This one up, boys. 20 players remain. And everyone currently received their first ladder. 32,500 guaranteed for these final 20. Next pay jump will come when we get down in fifth, rounding out the top five. Yeah, Nacho's had an amazing day so far. That insane hero call earlier. Dude. Love it. Dude. Can we talk about the bluff as well, though? I, mean. I know. Like, jeez. Insane hand. These two Vietnam newcomers yeah. are just really just putting on a show. Uh, have you have you played poker in this part of the world before, like like Thailand, Vietnam? I have it? not. 325. They don't call it the Wild East for nothing, mate. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's some cool. street poker being played out here, pal. I love street you, poker. You take your theory and you can, yeah, you can stick it. Can't put people on ranges. Ace three suited. Tempting. Hijack yeah. jams, 3.5 blinds. We know he's desperate. Four bigs. Maybe he can get the overlay from the big blind. Lay it down. Go. Wow. 325. That's going to ask for a count. Does make the call. Cards on their back. Steve V. Player at risk. Let's throw Dwyer. Getting it in good against Graftickle. 870 in the middle. Five to come. And you said five to come, didn't you? Five to come and a five on the flop, giving Jans the best hand. A pair of fives, however, a four of diamonds, giving O'Dwyer an additional 
four outs. No dice as the four of spades pairs the board and we lose Steve O'Dwyer in at 20th. Going to head home with 32,500 in this event number two of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in Hoi An, Vietnam. Is it possible to get uh, some color out? Seat open on three. Booker pictures are great. Everyone just has these gigantic stacks. But the pace of the of play though and like Counting stacks is right. just terrible. You just open, it's like three stacks of time. <laughs> there was a culture of creating beautiful stacks, right? Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, like building building a nice tower. For people who played limit cash games, that was a big thing. Because they would always just have, you know, tons and tons of chips and limit cash. That was back in your day, Randy. Yeah, I missed those times. <laughs> <laughs> you see it a lot at the World Series main. Yeah, right? yeah. It's got these mountain of chips. No, I think you do a lot. I've seen some pictures of you with towers in front of you back in the day. Have you seen the ones of no chips in front of me too? That would normally, so yes, yeah, so let me just reiterate. Uh, the pictures that I did see of you, I had to scroll to like the 15th page on Google. The ones with no chips were the ones at the top of the searches, but I was trying to do you a solid. Mark saying you guys have got to try it out here in the Philippines. Money just goes flying. You can have, a, have 14 starting stacks to losing your car inside 15 minutes. Well, how about... You play? Uh, Getting it in against Ponikovs and losing your remaining 440,000. That is potential outcome for Nagy, although he is going to be getting it in good against Ponikovs unless Mateos. It's actually pretty interesting because Mateos gets to close the action, or if he thinks that Ponikovs might so fold to a jam, then he could maybe I'm make curious. a move. He's going to close the action. Like it's going to be three-way. Uh, no side I've pot. Really Everyone loves a three-way, Randy. Odds. 19 left. Thinking of a very particular flop. Turn in. <laughs> <laughs> Does that include three fives? Nagy, by any chance? It's like that one. That's nope. not a very similar picture. But Queen, <laughs> Jack, <laughs> 10, <laughs> Rainbow, yeah. Ponikovs. You guys are both good looking. Way out in front with middle pair and an open ender. Gargoyle. No, no, no. Nagy no. and okay. Mateos so yeah, drawing to Broadway. It, it, when did it live? I believe it was in the 1920s. Right. Like, when he died, thinking whether died it's really better young, to obviously. Yeah. Bet those, or guys check. Don't make, those guys don't make it very long. And how tall was he? Does it say? I'll find Should out. I'll figure out what hands. He's 8 foot 11 feet. 125? I have no idea so about it's a that. really, really I small bet. 125k is 1.5 million. It's less than 10 percent. Almost three, I think. It's no probably way. like it's probably like 280, Whoa. two eighty. Two two seventy four. Yeah. For its price, I don't really see <laughs> how Mateos can go anywhere. Wow, wow. He yeah. agrees with you, Randy. Two seventy four. I went to this place that had a. Like you hit the ceiling everywhere. Yeah. That had a full size statue of him. Now 250,000 in the possible? side pot, three of diamonds rolling off, and that yeah. should should be the end of the hand for Mateos if Ponikovs elects Would you rather be really short to barrel really again tall? on this turn card. So Ponikovs is wondering how often he's getting trapped by Mateos. Right. Like, let's I mean, we don't have to worry about ace-king, didn't get in pre-flop, so what? Jack Just 10, queen 10, queen jack. But these hands might race the flop sometimes, limit. right? Since the stack to pot yeah, is pretty limit. small. Yeah. You only bet 125k into 1.5 million. So let's say one meter versus 274. It's a little tricky, King Jack. It's it's a tough one spot, meter, right? Because sure. so one meter. Mateus one can meter, still yeah, have queens, the queen queen nines, queen eights yeah. of the world. Yeah. If you're that tall, you just can't do anything. And Mateus yeah, might so be the one that's concerned that Ponikov's just flat off of 16, maybe you're trapping so from the cutoff, so like, yes. opening the door for someone behind to slip up and make a mistake. He could easily have kings, aces, queens. For sure. Queens. 30, 40, what, I mean, 250 is already so tall. So. Oh, How often does he have ace, king? Does he reshove ace, oh, no. king? Likely. I think he reshoved ace, king, but we don't know if 100% certainty. He's going to bet again. Really well calculated. Needs a king. Nagy drawing to just three outs. Ace, no good. You can see just 7% equity. I think about like two Ponikovs holds. We're going to be down to the final 18 players and holds. He does. WPN CEO Mr. Phil Nagy out in 19, fatting another cash to his Triton track record. I mean, you probably are allowed for getting cash at each stop he's been to so far. Doesn't play every single event. Take it, Ponikovs. 
forty percent. Movie going up. It is right now. It would be horrific. Yeah, it's already, already it's already bad, bad enough. And if you're tiny. Jans puts Ace three into the muck. Ace deuce also finds its way there. Early position, not where you want to have that stuff. Nine eight, not much of a hand. Pitch it. King. Well, normally you would try and trap this type of hand, but Linus has got 500k remaining. It's only like four blinds. That's right. Hold on. Yeah, not going to bother. Is Jack 4 off enough, though? Oh. It hurts. You can feel it. He's got the big blind and the big blind Annie already in the middle. I was wondering how many, I mean, could be up against like 10 nines, 10 eights. These hands would jam. Eight nines. Is there some pay jumps around the corner? That's another question you might want to look into. Thank you. See, he's in the tank. Big blind anti hurts. He goes for it. Yeah, decides he's going to take a stand in this spot here. Jack four, obviously, not performing great naughty, against naughty Ace King. Line. Jack four up. Naughty, naughty line. But he knows the Jack four hand. <laughs> At least you tank. <laughs> At least you tank, says her ends. Linus being called naughty. And a naughty little gutter ball on the eight high board here as Lolliger picks up added outs in the form of sevens. And there's one. No waiting on the turn. We could still chop it. Four or a nine would get that done. And instead, a useless king. That is brutal for Mark. I'll tell you who it's even more brutal for. Everybody else. else in the field. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Mark ripped it over the top of him on the button. Schwan woke up with the two kings. And it was ace-king for Chow, ace-jack suited for Ponikovs. Chow's ace-king was suited as well. And then king-king for Tan. And an unbelievable 10 deuce four with two diamonds on the board where Chow had himself the nut flush draw, then a five on the turn, gave both of the ace highs wheel gut shots, and then on the river came the ace. So Chow was able to double, Ponikovs had him covered, and the two kings were downed, and that was all she wrote for China's Tan Xuan, who adds to his career Triton Earnings. Yeah, that's it's unfortunate for him, but uh, I love seeing him play. One of, you know, he, he missed the last couple stops, but it's good to see Tan back in the mix. Get jumping that mystery bounty that is growing in field size as we speak. 14th place, by the way, was good for 39,000. Uh, sorry, 13th place was good for 43,900. Static payout at 12th, which is where we find ourselves now. 8-7 suited for Mark. Small blind versus big blind. Tan, by the way, will go. One million. One step closer to almost seven million in career Triton earnings. The one-time Triton title winner, his ninth cash. That title's in short deck, isn't it? It's a good guess. It was actually a 100K GBP, British Pound short deck event at the Lese in London in 2019. There were some epic cash games that got played yes. on that trip, if you'll remember. Upstairs in the salons.
Seth Davies officially the short stack now. 11 bigs, just 10K shy of Lolliger. Pocket fives for Kiat Lee. Push all the chips in there, putting the pressure on these short stacks. Yep. Ace Queen. You're, you cover me, right? Ooh. 22 blinds. It's not, not what you expect to see. Seventh in chips overall is Jan Zarens right now with 12 remaining. You've got five shorter stacks than yours. And by the way, the cluster isn't tight. In fact, the drop off starts at Jan's, who has 23 bigs to start this hand. And then goes down to Brian Kim at 15 bigs, oh, all the way down to 11 bigs. Nonetheless, he decides he is going to spin the wheel of fortune against these two fives. ICM pressure be damned. Yeah, he felt it was, yeah, but he was dominated that spot just enough. Well, he is behind, but 46% equity pre-flop and a lot more than that post-flop, as you see him slip to a 9-1 to one favorite with two to come against these pocket fives. Brilliant developments. The advantage even more solid, courtesy of the nine of hearts. Just got a fade of five, and he's done exactly Do that. Well, that chip lead wasn't held too long. <laughs> sure wasn't. Yeah, but it's Kiat. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Showered Mateos and then slid the chips over to Jans. Well. Look at just part of what these guys will be playing for. The trophy, the Shambhala Jewels bracelet. Points, of course, toward the Ivan Liao Player of the Year award. Just one flip. Setting 172 entries built this prize pool here in event number two. 2.58 million total. 600k is going to go to the champ. That's plenty for a 15k. <laughs> it's it's a lot. Been a joy to watch the first timers, Randy. It's uh. It's like your first trip to Poker Disneyland, right? <laughs> Poker Disneyland. You're like, I didn't realize that the Magic Kingdom <laughs> was out there somewhere. I mean, the experience really is bar none. The best around for those looking for a place to play safe, secure, and professionally administered high-stakes poker. Well worth the travel, wherever you're coming from. Two queens. It is two Three solid four. stacks here. He's got the the chip lead. Yeah, the overall chip lead, not just here at this feature table. I think he's going to put pressure on because it's going to be interpreted more as you know him trying to steal the pot. Might expect his limps to get isolated or raised a lot less given the stack situation. Kulev with a bazooka on the button. Yeah, Lee's got Queen Jack. 20 big blind effective. Just lost that monstrous pot. Take a flop here. All straightforward stuff thus far. Two 
Two spades, two sixes, and a seven. Swing and a miss in both seats. Very, very dry board. This far in a tournament, you don't really see people get as creative. So you can kind of just throw some chips out there, expecting your the big line to play relatively straightforward. Betting the minimum, but you know what? Kiat Lee is thinking the price is good enough. I'll make the call, see what develops. Maybe I can make a move on you on the turn or river. Maybe I hit my card. Nine of spades is a bit worrisome for Kuliv because you know you can see the straight draws to check call and now they've got a pair or maybe even slow play. Plus draw got there as well. The min bet on the flop does invite more loose calls on the flop. Yeah. So Kulev is aware of this. Going to play pot control with a check back here and then make a decision on the river, which is a good one for him, I'd say. Seven pairs. Yeah, not too shabby. Queen high, it has some showdown value. Not a lot, but just enough. He does beat those counterfeited pocket pairs as well. But does jack high or worse check back? I don't, I'm not sure, but you can see that Kiat's figured that he's got to take a stance at it to take down this pot. He is up against ace high and king high a lot. 575k. 574? It's credible. Yeah, it is. The sizing is appropriate. Obviously, a lot of times when we know we're bluffing, we want to size up and just really discourage our opponent from calling. But against top tier opposition, such as Alex Kulev, we know that that's going to read transparently. I'm not gonna push him off his hand just because you've sized up. So let's see, what kind of hands is Kulev? He needs to ask the question, well, would, uh, would an ace high ever make this play? Try to move me off the same type of hand. Counterfeits, oh, what a lay down. Well played by Kiat Lee. Yeah, very much so. I think that really small bet on the flop allowed Kiat Lee to still stay in the hand. If he was faced with a bigger bet, might have just pitched that queen jack. Mm -hmm. One of the pros and cons. Well, I can tell you my face is not to be visualized when you're <laughs> looking for <laughs> they didn't think of us smart today. input. <laughs> yeah, it depends on how many coffees I've had, of course. The Looks like the all-in button has been placed. In front of who? And a call Three, has been made as well. Good luck. Good luck. See an ace. Where did the jam come from? Thanks. Looks like. Bear two, with us here. Two from the big time. There it is. It was Linus off of the shortest of all stacks of these remaining 12 players. Ripped the ace six suited and has run into tens for Kulev. I don't see an ace on that flop. In fact, we're correct. 8-4 deuce. Walliger looking for an ace. And right away on the turn, it shows up. Needs to fade a 10, and he's done it. Second straight time that Walliger has been all in with the worst of it. Jack four, now a six against ace-king and pocket tens, mm -hmm. respectively. My ex area of expertise. There is. That's going to push him straight up the leaderboard. Line has got ace-eight suited. Huh. Going for a pocket deuces. It's had enough of Linus. Well, the deuces are technically in front of this ace-eight suited is Kiat Lee. Awakens to king queen offsuit. Obviously, it's a far less attractive hand in this situation. Puts it into the muck. And Get him. Tan should be happy. Not He's answer. not up against a bigger pair. Good luck. But obviously, you got to fade five. This is as coin flip as it gets 50 50. Mm hmm.
10-9-3, and the Deuces are still in front here for Tan. No heart on board, so no concerns about a backdoor flush. Straight draws could be acquired, though. And there's one. That Seven of diamonds. Scary. And it's suddenly, exactly. Lolliger with 10 outs, one time. Can the Deuces hold? Yeah, they can. I heard all. GG. I heard I GG. And I, and I got no GG. concern, no. Well, there's our title sponsor, GG Poker. But <laughs> other than that, in this particular okay. spot. Wishful thinking. There is just a, I really a, come down, huh? a double up oh, with Don. Can you call the floor? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, is it? The, the do we hand for hand? Yeah, I mean, yesterday it was hand for hand. So is it hand for hand? It's not hand for hand, it's just hand for hand. So if someone, bu if two players busted the same hand, what happened? We split the money still. Okay. It's nine out of five table, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yesterday it was hand for hand. So but what's the point of splitting the money? But uh, I don't know. Usually, yeah. Just to step in there and clarify things, Kulev, under the impression that yesterday, when we were down to the final table bubble, that we played hand for hand, but producer James stepping in to remind us, to in turn remind you that it was not hand for hand. It was just at the very first hand that we got down to the final table was a double elimination. And as such, we split 10th and 9th place money and had eight players at the final. Meanwhile, 10 with the pocket sevens finds a customer in Mark Rubathon, who is in very bad shape with pocket threes. A date with the final table very much in jeopardy as 10 makes the call. Bad shape here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do have a pay jump around the corner. Tenth place money, fifty thousand three hundred. Ninth, sixty k. You know where the rooting interests of the remainder of this field lie, and they aren't on the Union Jack. That's for sure. Eight four deuce sevens, still in front. No straight draw on the turn for the threes, and the bell tolls for the Briton. He's got two outs once and an almost two million chip pot. Can he hit a set on the river? Nice no. Good luck, well, guys. And a wrap of the rail. The solid sportsmanship that we've come to expect out of all Triton competitors, as he says, good luck, and we'll leave the two. I can only describe as murderer's row of a final table. Some of the best players in the world here in Hui An. That man on your screens with the... Is that, is that a strawberry shirt? That is a strawberry shirt, right? I thought it was birds. I, first it was sea turtles. And I'm, anyway, it's ace three. We know that much. And Nacho Barbero is going to give him a spin. and. What a fortunate spot this is going to be for Lolliger as they share a three. <laughs> Nacho, who earned his bankroll being a stunt double for Hugh Jackman in the Wolverine series. I, I make that up. That's that's not how he made his money. Queen 10-10 on the flop here. Lolliger sitting very pretty. Just needs to dodge a king. Oh, wait a minute. Now suddenly, add a jack to the mix of cards that he's looking to avoid on this river. And he's done so. On the prior two occasions on which we saw Linus double up at two tables and beyond, he had the worst of it. On this one, he had the best of it. But a flush wound to Barb. Will you? <laughs> All short deck, though. Yeah, and two real close calls in Cyprus. A second place finish in the 40k and a third place finish in the 30k short deck. That 40k was a one bullet, I believe, right? I believe so. Pocket sevens now for Kian Weitan. Up to four million. A little slower pace than short deck. Yeah. Min raise open. 
Nacho Steak just makes me so tired, though. Because you're in so many things. Nacho really grinding the Instagram stories hard here. Yeah, that's true. A lot of us can't. Something against Instagram, Ali? Or something? Okay. Nah. There's nah. a lot of room, even like 50 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Instagram's real life, Henry. Yeah, it's like Everything you see, you can believe. Decisions, but more complicated. You study. So you're telling me those guys that say if I sign up to their course for 49.99 a year, I too can become a multi-millionaire crypto yeah. trader? Yeah, 100%. And you can just say Carl Schapegati and you don't need to say those guys. I don't know. I'm just kidding. No, he's I, not, he's I, not. I, that course, I would buy into. I believe it, yeah. Party. That's the course. He's not out here posing next to a Lambo next to the Burj right. Khalifa, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Ace 10, by the way, out flopping these sevens, which have followed through with the bad end of the gutter. You like shock that ball? Check. Okay. Now Forda was straight rolling off. Jans checks again, having picked up a Broadway draw to go with the tens, and in comes Broadway on the river. For so long, yeah. Good for the nuts. Do you enjoy Odin or something? I think I enjoy it. Any argument to just checking here and maybe seeing whether or not really your opponent like wants to represent the ace that you hold? Yeah, this is exactly what I'm thinking in terms of scary runouts. The jack x's, the 10x's, the check call flop, all of a sudden shrink up in value size on the queen king runout. And look at this. Reaching four chips, 350,000, little one third. Yeah, yeah. On the river. Yeah, yeah. It's some hand just meant to step off. Mm -hmm. It's not like hold them. You can see hold, yeah. make you a hold. Right. Yeah, it, it feels like. Can't really fault Tan for, for sure. recognizing the sevens just aren't going to be winning at showdown very often. Took his shot, and now it's been raised to 850, so. He can comfortably put it into the muck. By the way, the chat's stepping in to advise. And I thought this might be the case. That the Gucci. Lolliger is indeed rocking Gucci. To the booth tomorrow. I mean, looking above us, I think. We're going to have to find a nice seam. Barbero back at it with Queen Jack, 425,000 under the gun. Uh, I grabbed one over there, but I think it was the last. Ace 10 uh, for Linus in the small now. If I wave somebody down. Linus with the three bet rejam. Three bet rejam. Come on, Henry. Just, you know what? Rejams, Bavero. See, priced in. Decent chunk of equity, 41% here. And uh, it's not just the 15K, but also the loss of the threat of Linus Love that will leave everyone rooting for Nacho Barbero mm -hmm. at this final table. I, I told you. And the flop is 10 high, but coupled with the 8 does provide Barbero with plenty of outs. 9 jack queen as it stands. And there is the 9 of clubs, and Linus drawing dead, showered. He just, he's always happy, man, you know? Regardless, stands up, microphone off, straight into the 20K mystery bounty. Look, he's got plenty to be happy about, obviously, but you and I have both been around a lot of poker players who don't exude the level of joy that Linus Love does as you get a look at that smile one last time. Finishing in ninth place, collecting 60K. It's ahead to his already. This really is the nectar of the gods here. Light you right up. Did they bring straws? They did not. Well, flag them down. I mean, I got to have my bamboo straw. I don't even know if it is bamboo, by the way. I just said that. Oh, really? And you've kind of just run away with it. It's all right. I'm trollable. We flag the garçon down here, Kilbane. 
4.50 to go from Kianwei Tan, I suppose the more important matter at hand. And for Kulev, King Queen off suit out of the big. Hijack open. 2.25x from Kianwei Tan. King Queen, a lot of hand in the big. Is it enough to jam over the top of Wei Tan's hijack open? It's nice, you know, just flatting and keeping in some of the hands that we actually dominate. King Jack, King Ten, Queen Jack, those types of holdings that Wei Tan can have. And Queen Nine Eight could spell disaster for. Wei Tan after flopping middle pair SPR sub one Ali. Good news is he does have Kulev covered, and of course for Alex, part of the calculus for him was just how significant a quotient of his remaining chips the 450 open represented. And here, here is just going to jam, and Tan is going to be a customer, suspecting that maybe there's some sort of combo draw. Straight draw, diamond draw. Yeah. Load of gut shots out there. Yeah. Have some 9x in rough shape as well with the ace kicker. Two to come, 3.4 in the middle. Huge pot for the young Bulgarian. He can hold here, he'll be up to 17 bigs. Five of spades is a beautiful sight. Now, just needs to fade an ace or a nine. And he's done it. Thank you. You drunk? Almost. Match guy. <laughs> Say it, Ali. Say it. Come on. Match guy. Match guy. Is that, is that thank you for in Bulgarian? <laughs> in Las at Vegas. The, at the Aria. But no, not at the Aria. Uh -huh. At Resorts World. I actually, believe it or not, stumbled upon Aaron Zhang, of all people. Yes. In that game. Yes, that is true. I saw him there as well. Couldn't believe my eyes. Out in. Was splashing around West in a Coast. mixed game, by the way. He could be dangerous if he suddenly decides to redirect his efforts into those streets. Meanwhile, the efforts of Kianwei Tan are placed upon an ace five, which should Barbero click call with ace ten will have its work cut out for it in a real way. Nacho choosing to flat, Henry. Dicey proposition, we can see he's getting it in in great shape against the plus one open and six players behind Barbero. It looks pretty strong too to the remainder of the field from time to time, or you you think it doesn't? You think it's it looks like something you can squeeze? I, I think it's you know playing with fire, but I'm in the booth, he's out there. It's made the call for six bigs. You mean the ICM? Yeah. By the way, he's not even looking big on, big by big the big way, and he's big deeming big this 3 million chip big pot big not worth yeah. peeling his eyes away six, 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 from the IG big app. Big oh, he's one card away from becoming the chip lead and needs to fade a king, queen, jack, or an ace, or an eight for the chop. Oh. Good game. Good game. And the 10 on the river improves Barbaro. To an even better aces up as Kianwei Tan gave it all he had, was up to over is. 4 million in chips at one point. The first timer to the Triton Tour, to the finishing <laughs> in eighth place. Not a bad performance at all, and certainly the kind of experience that one would imagine is going to give the Malaysian the bug. And plenty more poker available to him. Seth is that he doesn't know right now. I promise you, these hands will be reviewed with the team post series. Yeah, you know, I'm the type of guy. If I don't know something, something sometimes I'll Google it. These guys, if they're unsure of a spot, you can bet that they're putting in the work to figure it out, whether it be back at the hotel room.
post-series study lap with the boys. Now, I'm not going to mention who this player was in order to protect their anonymity, but you and I were in a conversation yesterday with someone who kind of peeled the curtain back a little bit to just the depth and extent to which research and effort is being committed to becoming the best at the craft. And for me, it was just outstanding to bear witness to as we see Seth Davies getting after Barbero with Jack four and Nacho slams the call in there with Jack five. Henry, looks like he's going to ask for the, the last 25K. Huh, <laughs> I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> And you folded that, we would have had problems, Nacho, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It comes 4 4 for sure now. Good luck, yeah. bro. Oh, the space. It's all high card. High card is good for you. Look like a chop. To me. This looks a lot like a chop to me. Easy now. Oh, oh, easy now. now. <laughs> what a fucking card today. What do I just need? Wow. Six or higher, non spade? Or a four? Six or higher, non-spade indeed. Oh, oh no, nastiness. Seth Davies. Jack four against Jack five on that flop. <laughs> so <laughs> often next? it would have been a chop. How but can it be ahead? <laughs> Please no. Am I the next? Running I spades. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Will show the American the door. And a 102K payout as Seth Davies dispatched seventh place. Back to back FTs for Seth. I don't know about you, Henry, but you know when the cheese melts across all of the tortilla chips and creates Go on. an adhesive single, so you know, you reach for one chip in the nachos and, the, the whole and then put the whole, right. right. That counts as one nacho, as Jack Black famously shed light upon in the cult favorite Saving Silverman. Jack Black, wow. Who also, by the way, played Nacho Libre, just to bring it full circle. He didn't see any of those movies, obviously. I'm actually going to, after the stream, <laughs> One minute. <laughs> tie you to a chair and force you to watch those two films. Kulev tying himself to pocket nines, making it 1.5 million to go. Ooh, and Kiatli welcomes ace queen. So six figures in equity flip potentially three, coming up. Yeah, 3.3. Kiatli and Kulev three, three million, three hundred and tied in the bottom half of the pack. Currently covering the Bulgarian only just. We also have Ponikovs in the big. This jam coming from under the gun. Is there a time for Kat Lee? Well, to just muck the ace queen. Not going to happen. He does announce himself happy to run it. And Kulev didn't open to 1.5 off of 3-4 with the intention of folding as the rest of his tokens are deposited. And we are going to play for 7.3 plus. Nice. Good luck. Good yeah. luck indeed, gentlemen. 40,000 difference between fifth and sixth as Ponikovs yeah, on yeah. five bigs just gets to sweat this one out. Regardless of the outcome, if Kulev holds, Ketley going to be down to just two bigs. Five to come, 7.3 in the middle. King for Trey. Not the flop Kiat Lee had in mind, but a threatening one for Kulev's purposes. Oh, Queen of Diamonds on the turn. Disaster. As Kiat Lee vaults in front, Kulev left with two outs. And the veteran knows that's how the cookie crumbles from time to time as he collects his belongings and of course not to be overlooked the collection of 138k to go with six place points in the Ivan Liao player of the year leaderboard we're going to see more of this guy 
Oh, that's for sure. That's for sure. He quite literally said to me yesterday that he doesn't mind losing performances from the young Bulgarian here. Listen, if I was a betting man, I'd put money on him getting his hands on one of those trophies, whether it be at this stop here in Vietnam or ones later on in the year. He's two for two. Ninth two for in the two. GG Super Millions, event number one for 96,300. Oh, yeah. And here, collecting a tidy 138K. So a force to be reckoned with, clearly, on arrival here in Vietnam. But he leaves five to do battle, 178K, locked oh. up. And Brian Kim jams from the button with ace-five. Call. Panikovs going to take a stand from the small blind with pocket fours. Understands that he's going to need some spins at some point. Why not now? Could go from six to four. A matter of a couple of hands, Panikovs. So he's thrilled that he already got the ladder. And equally thrilled to see Queen 9 7 not connecting with Kim's Ace 5. Nor is the Deuce. One to come. No Ace, no 5 is what Ponikovs is thinking, and that's exactly what the river delivers. Mild nod of affirmation from the Latvian. No secret, he's a bit of a. Ponikovs now with 10 bigs, 2.6. Kim, who came in as chip leader, hasn't really had the opportunity to just run away with it. In fact, now moved down to third in chips. Nacho Barbero, the overwhelming chip leader, Kiat Lee, has now moved up into second. Still plenty of time for the American. Not down and out just yet, Ali, but Ponikovs. One, two, four. Putting the new tokens to work with no hesitation. Why not? Ace nine from the button. Kiat Lee, though, in the big blind. Has got him covered and has got pocket fives. Looking over his shoulder, undoubtedly, at the Triton Poker Plus app in real time, just to ensure he knows no. how things <laughs> shake up. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant from Kiat Lee there. <laughs> I just wanted to remove one hand. <laughs> so listen, you've opened off of 10 bigs, so you just have to have aces, right? Ponikov's ace nine have. looking to catch something. And catch he does, although Ali notes the three clubs on board and mm -hmm. the club in Cat Lee's hand. Lee with the flush draw. Doesn't connect on the turn. Just look at those outs. Two fives and all of the clubs. Four a dime is not going to cut it, though. And Ponikov's back-to-back -back doubles here, Henry. And the collar can be loosened. Or I guess in this case, the zipper. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Tell how got. tight it is mm. down there. Everyone bar Nacho. Right? Snuggy yeah, really between wide, yeah. 19 and 26 three, bigs. Three average stack 28, so Barbera, the only player with more than I'm average now. Five, right. Thank you. Slightly under five. Huh? Slightly under five. Yes, slightly under five. Please. Really adds to the, the ICM nerds out there. Got the notepads out. Sorry. Masterclass on display here from these world class poker players. You know, it's interesting, Henry, because often when engaging in conversation with, you know, the viewing public in person, if they come up across us as we're, you know, at stops or, you know, back home, a lot of times they'll say, well, why don't you get in and play tournaments? You know, you get to watch the best in the world all of the time. Surely, you're going to be better than the average player. But just observing what's going on and actually understanding all that goes into the decisions are two very different ideas. 100%. Couldn't agree more. There's so much that you can take away from these streams. But you know, it's one thing 
seeing the spots that they implement them in. It's another thing, actually understanding mm. how to execute on the stage with the bright lights, pressure that you get put under by these guys. Just, it's not easy. Not a lot of pressure being applied to this one here as Kiotli and Barbero play a limp pot, blind versus blind. Paired flop. Fly in the back of your throat there. No, I got Vietnamese <laughs> condensed milk in the back of my throat, my friend. It's glass number two is about to go down. Still no post-flop chips being deposited here as the queen high of Kiat Lee will be good at showdown. Barbero going to let him get there free of charge. Jack high. <laughs> so that was good. Yeah. Maybe vultures, you say? Yeah, vultures, yeah, just okay. eager to jump into the next tournament, yeah. yep, the even though they've still got poker to play here. I, I would lean more toward birds of prey. They'll get you signed up and you get a vultures, not birds of grace prey. Period. So vultures circle carcasses, Henry. Thank you. Flick on the telly. I'll tell you what. Aren't you responsible for David Attenborough? I'll flick you in a minute, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Two tens flicking in half a million here from the button for Kiat Lee. Sorry, do you happen to know how much you started with? Uh, it's all right, it's all right, I could see. 2.5, 3.5, 4.7? 4.8 yeah. behind. Kim going to defend with 5-6 offsuit and troublesome is the King 7-6 board with two hearts as it will be enough for him to continue presumably bottom pair. Backdoor flush and straight draws but sits. And welcome back inside the broadcast booth here from the Hoiana Resort and Golf in Hoi An, Vietnam. Ali Najad alongside Randy Liu, and we just crowned Nacho Barbero, our second champion of this Triton Super High Roller Series here in Vietnam. I was out there doing the winner's interview. I said he was a newcomer, but upon further research in the Triton Poker Plus app, and I think you and Henry picked up on this, Nacho had already slid in and played a lone event in Madrid. It was a 20K short deck, if I'm not mistaken. So this actually his second stop, but uh, kind of slid under the radar there in Madrid. 600K winner, and obviously going to be parlaying those bucks into future buy-ins here at this series. But it is time to turn our attention to event number three. It is the mystery bounty event, Randy, a 20K buy-in. Players have already been in action for 11 levels. Those levels are 30 minutes in length and now registration has closed but unlike your typical mystery bounty randy there's some special wrinkles about this one yeah and you know usually when you collect one of these bounties you can open it whenever you want to here we're going to wait to the very end and just have everyone open at the same time you know add some expense you can see you know, someone's going to collect like 20 envelopes 30 envelopes maybe not 30 but you know it's quite a bit uh we're going to do that and also, you're not able to collect a bounty, and I believe it's until the start of level 14. Is that right? After the conclusion of level 14, I want to say, is when we are able to uh, collect bounties. So thus far, players aren't playing for any bounties, and that's a little bit of a different wrinkle than what we normally see. I, for one, given our familiarity with some of the gamble levels in players that come to these Triton events, would love to see envelope swapping envelope swap you're like hey <laughs> you want to trade you know kind of a let's make a deal kind of thing uh so some cool wrinkles uh could come into play of course 5k 10k here uh at the onset of level 11 and as we look at the triton poker plus app we do find canada's timothy adams at the top of the leaderboard that is brian kim <laughs> who is definitely not at the top of the leaderboard. Our apologies for that there. Uh, Tim Adams has 1.34 million in front of him, good for 134 bigs, obviously, at the 5K, 10K level. There's something else to point out, Randy. What Event number one, we, we broke a record. Event number two, we broke another record. 
Okay. And here in event number three, no. 179 <laughs> entries yet again. Three events up, three records broken as this Vietnam stop continues to just shatter our expectations, truly humbling and flattering the level of enthusiasm that we have had in the room. And we're just getting warmed up. Yeah, and, you know, maybe it's a byproduct also of the bounty. You want to kind of build that big stack early so you can bust out people, collect all those envelopes. Now's the time to build the chip stack so you can win half of that prize pool out there. Yeah, and for now, of course, as we mentioned, bounties are not available. But once they are, you'll start to see some different things taking place because those envelopes are so coveted by the field. You're playing not just for the chips, but also that overlay. Of the 20,000 buy-in, by the way, as you look at the chip counts at our feature table, brought to you by Poker Stake, our official staking partner here on the Triton Tour. Apologies. Um, now I've lost my train of thought, but uh, <laughs> I think I think we're okay. Why are we being descended upon by the staff? They're all taking a, an acute interest in what we're up to here at the booth, guys. The uh, half of the 20K yeah. buy-in that you have is put yeah, into the prize pool, yeah. and the other half well, is put into like the pool like that gets divvied up like into that. those yeah. bounties. Yeah. As we see, oh. Boss yeah. Man, co-founder yeah, like of the Triton Tour, Paul Fua, 27 big deep, 266K in front of him. And I understand Luca Vivaldi, Randy, still hasn't fully yeah, kind of batten down area, really what the biggest of the bounties is going to be yeah, yeah, and what the yeah. smallest will be, right? Yeah, so, you know, when re registration is exactly closed and, they, you know, they got to do some calculations to figure out the prizes, but it seems that what will likely be the case is that the smallest bounty will be about 1.5 to 2 big blinds, um, not big blinds, buy-ins, and the uh, top prize closer to about 200 cares. <laughs> Boy, that's a tidy little sum that somebody's going to pick up just courtesy of having busted someone. As we see Q-Dom, better known as Andy Kim, with Ace-Jack suited here in the small blind. Action folded around to him. And he is going to get after Kiat Lee, who just made the final table of event number two, the 15K. Defends with King-9 suited for 3x. Seven high flop, not connecting with either player. Well, going to show some weakness. This is the type of board where it does kind of hit that big line a bit more. And the uh, nine. there's a really nice connection for Kiat Lee, top pair 35. on the turn. And with a second check in front of him, he is going to bet half pot exactly. Feeling pretty good about that nine. Now ace jack feels like he kind of underplayed his hand, but that board is pretty connected. So if he's calling here, he's going to be trying to pick off 10x, two diamonds, 8x. I mean, there is a decent amount of draws he's got to pick off. The question is, would a river bet come as well? He's interested. Slides him in. Jack. Oh, and the jack rolls right off there for Andy Kim. And is he going to try to check it here just to avoid maybe getting blown off of this hand in the event that Kiat Lee were to put a raise in? It looked Ooh. like he wanted to bet, didn't it? But then he came with the check, and I wonder if Kiat's going to make anything of this. Sometimes you see people stack the chips and check. You might think it's they're trying to get the showdown, and that might make Kiat Lee think, his nine is good and is worthy of a value bet. And the jack is not doesn't really connect with the check calling type player. That's why he's value betting here. What did he bring out? Thirty five again, I think. Was it? No, not too small. I don't think he's two chips. I don't think he's bet. Did, did he put it out there? Okay, yeah. Forgive me. There is a bet. And he's gonna be surprised to see this ace jack. Yeah. One oh five into one forty. Very fortunate river there for Andy Kim. I don't know if you see that little patch. It says bluff catch. What he just did. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be well, fair. Not really a bluff catch. He had a pair of nines. That's not a bluff. That was a bad time, you <laughs> Value catch. Value catch. Is that <laughs> a move? I think that's a move. It is now. 
，理論上個積應該唔係好關事啊。All in your call? Snap. You snap? <笑> Mr. Value. Let's go. No, he's gonna call. Yeah, there's definitely that extra layer of strategy right now, since you can't collect the bounties yet, to accumulate a bigger stack. Because, just, okay, let's just say you play your tournament as normal. You get to the part where you can collect some of the bounties, which is half the prize pool, and you don't have a stack to collect any bounties. You're basically put in a buy-in to play for half the prize pool. So it's not advantageous for you. Now's the time to try to build the stack maybe push some edges a little harder than normal. Because if you can have stacks that cover players at your table, now you can start collecting that other half of the prize pool. All good points. And all good cards here is Orpin Kisachikoglu, the Turk, with two queens. And there against Sam Greenwood's ace seven and a disastrous flop. For Orpen. Navigating here to Queens is actually quite interesting. Let's see if he goes for a cutesy bet or maybe check the side. It's hard to get called by worse. But then you feel obligated to kind of bet this flop with your bluff, so the mixed strategy makes sense. Check is the option. Greenwood going to check back the trip aces. Trappy. Very much so. Of course, not impossible for Orpin to have a bigger ace. Yeah, and Greenwood also is probably thinking, well, it's hard for me to get three streets of value of a, against a hand that doesn't have an ace in it, so might as well put some deception in there. Mm -hmm. Get two streets at most, usually. There's only like one main card that Orpin's scared of is the king if in terms of giving free equity to someone. So it, it's okay for him to just keep checking here and maybe induce some bets, contain the pot. On the other hand, for Sam Greenwood, one would imagine that here on the turn, chips going in wouldn't be a terrible idea. Yeah, it's about thinking... Well, he Checks back, though. He's playing to the... Slow, slow play. Going Backdoor for spades coming in. Maybe just thinking he can induce Orpin to bet on the end. Yeah, he might think Orpin's hand's quite weak, too. He would think that he would want to bet for value at some point if he had something, but checking twice seems weak. But it's actually pretty strong right here. Two queens. I think Orpin will go for values from his point of view soon. Third and third. If someone's going to stab, they would have stabbed by the turn, so... Half pot. Yeah. Greenwood definitely has under his hand. The but question. also, is there really... Is there is value there in raising? Yeah. With backdoor spades having shown up, what are the hands that are going to call you if you do put in the race? And I think that's exactly what was on Sam's mind as he flats and gets shown the trip aces. And I think Orpin, despite being disappointed by the outcome, is going to be pleased with the way that he chose to play that pot. Yeah, he easily could have lost um, two bets in this pot and lost more. And, you know, if you're new to the show, you might be thinking, well, why didn't Greenwood raise? It's so likely he's got the best hand. And it is very true. He's likely that best hand. The thing is, you need to think about what hands would call by mm. raise. Am I value owning myself, only right. getting called by better? Am I producing bluffs the way this hand has been created with three check three checks to him? Probably not. So then that's when you kind of call, expecting to win, um, but cannot, unable to produce some hands that will pay you off for more. So ultimately, not nearly as much damage as potentially could have been inflicted to Orpin's hand as you see him. Very much 
a veteran of the Triton streets. Not at all shaken by the beat. Right back at it with eight, nine suited. Stu suited now for Andy Kim. And he is going to three bet from the cutoff to 53,000. Getting aggro. Oh, he's going to run into Kudinov's ace queen from the big. Kudinov, one of the most feared no limit cash game players. High stakes, nosebleeds. Well versed in ring game, man. Heads up. He's not scared. He's going to put in four bet. That makes the decision very easy for Orpin. I can see this. He's still suited. He would have position here. Against a cold four bet, though. Cold four bets tend to be a bit stronger than regular four bets from the original Razor. Get away. Well maneuvered ace queen. Yeah, very much so. And let's take a look at Victor Kudinov's Triton track record. 218,000 in earnings on tour, courtesy of a couple of caches that came in Cyprus at our last stop. A 14th and 7th place finish, both in No Limit Hold'em events. Not a short deck player. Yeah, he, he's been battling mainly online, just all the highest stakes you can play. Play anyone. Folds all around to boss on the button. And then raise open off of jack nine. Open with king eight. Defense. Standard fanfare. Looks standard to me. Top pair against a gut shot straight draw, courtesy of the King 10 6 flop. Inside straight draw, worthy of a bet. Put some pressure on. Boss tends to agree. King 8 is not really the hand you see check raise top pair too often, especially on this kind of board. I think you'd run into kicker issues a lot if you get continued. Keep it small, keep it controlled. Bossman can maybe fire in multiple barrels if he wants to. He's unimproved on the turn after Orpin called and checked once more. It is reasonable for him to continue betting Jack 9. He could put a lot of pressure on 10x, 6x. You know, some straight draws that would have check called that likely wouldn't, wouldn't call a turn bet. So he's betting 45K. Bet is targeting those unpaired hands as well as those bottom card, bottom pairs. Definitely not King X that he's trying to fold out. Still top pair. Navigate by calling. Seems ideal. And unimproved is Paul Foix on the river as Orpin checks one last time with the best hand. 181 out there. There's a lot in there. The runout's just so dry here. Oh, he, he's looking at it. 
Has he got enough chips to put it on? 158K. And he waves the white flag. Probably going to be pleased to have made that decision, although who knows whether or not Orpin would have gotten suspicious. No, draw. It is a draw. It's dead. There's a dead on the board. It's dead spare, yeah. Maybe check the. I, I, no, I'm not, I'm not ace check. He meant ace check. That would make more sense than ace ten. Sure. Taking yeah. a look, by the way, at Orpin's track record, Randy, a very impressive sure. one. Just shy of 3.5 million in career Triton earnings. Three caches, one of them, a title, and that title coming in Rosvedov in 2019 in a 100k euro. Super high roller, where he finished first for 905k plus. Yeah, Orpin just loves the game. I see him at a lot of stops, you know, and it's not his main affair playing poker. No. You know, he, he's, he is a businessman, played that Triton million. But just some of these guys are just so good at the game as well. You know, players like Kerry Katz come to mind, right? And mm -hmm. um, Tala Shikurski, like these guys. Yeah, Shikurski, they, definitely. You're like, are they a pro? Because they play so good. Well, they play with pros so often that a lot of times their acumen really exceeds what one would expect out of a rec player. So we see Kudinov. He's going to run into two queens of Milos Skrbic, the Serbian. Three betting to 50K. So they're playing 19 big blind effective. What's crossing? It's good enough. Might as well. The price is good. It's just too good to not to fold. So, Victor comes along and is unimproved on the King Jack 5 board, which isn't the most pleasant one for Milos as he's staring at that one over card. The Queen of Spades is working hard, though. Yeah, definitely not ideal. I mean, I just blocked King Queen a little bit, so that helps. Those are hands I would call 3 bet. Keep the aggression up. I like the size down here, two queens. Keep control, but no, not too big where you can get some hero folds from hands you want to get the value from. Milos will collect the pot. That's Kudnov not feeling heroic or sticky. Releases. Another one of the Triton newcomers is Skurbich. <laughs> Can't say the same, of course, for Kudinov, whose resume we already took a look at. Only one name we haven't called here at this feature table, and it is that of Jeffrey Allen. Don't know too much about him. Slozinski. First timer, along with Milos. Suited wheel cards have really come into favor, courtesy of the solver streets. Yeah. And especially Ace Five suited. It's got like 100% yeah. frequency from everyone. Sluzinski, also known as Bosky, on the social media platforms, he's laying it down. Hey, Sarah I brought some, a bunch of people. It seems. Yeah. Yeah. Saw the patch there, Phil <laughs> Nagy. Usually don't play binds this big, so. Nice to see like this mix of characters. I think he streams too, so I'm sure like his fans are cheering him on. But he's got some tough competition. That's an arena that really has uh, proliferated over the course of the last few years. <laughs> I think the pandemic in particular, when a lot of people were sitting at home, a lot of people were playing online poker just decided, you know what, I'm going to throw a webcam on. I'm going to start 
mm -hmm. creating some content, see whether or not I can catch fire in that space. And it's been pretty lucrative for a lot of people. Oh, for sure. Who have amassed audiences and subsequently gained interest from online sites, now have backing deals and more power to them. I'll tell you what, Randy, mm -hmm. you know, you think it's grueling for us coming out and taking on these long streams. At least the festivals come to an end yeah, and we so get we're, down we're, we're there for two weeks, right? They're right. there for the full year. Right. And putting themselves out there, getting, you know, praise and criticism yeah. from all sorts. Yeah, a lot of vulnerability. I, I tip my hat in admiration to those that will put themselves out there. Hey, I've in tried it arena. for a little bit, and you know what? I had to give up. It's too much. Yeah, yeah. Well, on the topic of too much, top two pair here on a 10-7-6 board for Greenwood, the defender. As ace-5 offsuit for Orpin was the opener. Board is expected to hit that big blind. Ace-5 doesn't connect too well. Still going to reach for some chips. Sees that five of diamonds may help give him some extra equity in case he needs to fire away or check on further streets. Small bet. Top two. Uh. Well, despite the fact that straight inside straight cards are available, mm -hmm. not sure whether or not Greenwood is going to be altogether concerned about that stuff in terms of seeking to check raise here as opposed to I don't think he'd be concerned about those cards improving his point more so that those cards will kill his action so because of that raising seems quite a nice play to try to get some value out of something and he agrees as he check raises 3x and takes that one down a little grin there on Greenwood's face Grin usually means, like, I got away with something. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Whenever I lay it down, <laughs> I see my guy doing that. I'm like, did you really, you scoundrel? <laughs> 0 for 2 is Orpin, by the way, against Greenwood. By the way, this mystery bounty format, uh, first time format for mm -hmm. us here on Triton Tour, but... Another thing that, in addition to those ace-five suits, has come into favor. A lot of the big series have added a mystery bounty to their schedules. Mm -hmm. It's been really, yeah, it's uh, really caught well fire. received from by Very players. Very well received, you know. Like, it's also nice for players who aren't like seasoned pros, you know, being able to have that little gamble lottery effect, right? Sure. Um, it's. Fun, like you can still profit even if you bust out of the money, just bust a couple people. You know, it, it really is exciting. I think the bounty is one of the greatest things they created, and the mystery bounty just made it that much better. The mystery aspect of it, really <laughs> wonderful. Our title sponsor, GG Poker, Scott Ball, in one of their mystery bounty oh, events, yeah. pulled the $1 million envelope, and I don't think he even realized it, as Greenwood certainly isn't going to have to be told what the bounty is here for this Jack-10, one that he shares with Kudinov in a three-way affair where Andy Kim has the gut shot straight draw that could really play spoiler to both of these trips. Blinds checking over to the opener, Kudinov, who obviously will be very happy to follow through for 27K. Coming from the small blind, you probably will see Greenwood strongly consider check calling rather than check raising because there's still the big line to act. If you were to raise, you might kick out the big blind who's got a hand that's drawing very, very slim. So I like this smooth call here by Greenwood. Discipline lay down. I think he doesn't like to see the bet in the call. More likely to continue if one had folded. I thought maybe with backdoor the clubs, green? Yeah. there would be a little a bit green more smoothie? interest for the gutter. Obviously, straight draws on paired boards are always a, a yeah. bit of a concern. But like you said, you've got two other players involved green. in this pot. so <laughs> It's a good point. Um, I think the main reason is I'll let know how it when is. someone else calls, it's harder to take it away pay. if you don't hit. So you know, you're forced to hit the pot. Yeah. Whereas if okay. a plane heads up, you're C-betting C some air, check, check, 
turn, no one hits, I bet I win. Good point. Hey. Kudinov, by the way, picks up the diamond it. draw. I already marked this one up as a chop pot. No, 21% equity for Kudinov, the only player out of these two holdings that has a shot at the scoop. Interesting yes. line here. Yeah, Greenwood choosing to lead for 40K. Yeah, trying to confuse his opponent. And Victor going to play pot control. Flat call, and now <laughs> both of these guys are thinking Just this pop. is gin and tonic on the river. Ten's full of jacks. Right, just in case I'm up against ace, ten, king, ten. Well, no problem anymore. Um, about the turn lead, I think he wanted to kind of make it the most chance he can get three bets Banana. in. Sometimes people bet twice, pair check back their river. So by leading, he's created this situation to get more chips. I like to see these kind of new, like newish creative lines. I think it's um, that's why it really, the game's just always time. evolving. Yeah. Tournament after tournament, these players are just pretty crafty. See what Greenwood's gonna do. All sorts of different bet sizes seem logical. Got 230k back with 204 in the middle, and really, the thought on his mind is, how can I best get all of it in there? Yep. It's kind of does he bet? Trying to get, trying to get his opponent to hero call. Um, does he check to induce from two diamonds, like an eight seven diamonds, eight nine diamonds? These hands probably would blast away. He knows his lead on a turn is peculiar, might confuse his opponent. Seems like he wants to bet. All of it? Snap. Yeah. What's that hit? Wow. What a hit. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Good day. Good How day. thrilled do you think Kudinov was when Green was so at all thrilled. in the snap call and he's like, ah, showers. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Chop it up. He turned it up so fast, like, don't bother showing you your hand. Just two times. Time bank winning. You're folding if I check raise, right? Huh? You fold the flop if I check raise, right? <laughs> Don't think so. <laughs> Maybe could have got me out of it. Because check raise, three bet. Great job. I pocket aces. Nothing. Pocket aces. I'm just full. I think I, I thought I, think I, I had like 70 clubs. Not sure whether or not you're able to listen in on the announcements from Luca Vivaldi there, but he is confirming that it is at the start of level 15 that the mystery bounties will come into play. Yes. Slazinski in the cutoff with ace queen. All in. Just rip it in. Wow. 20 blinds. Interesting. Try to make people think you're gambling it up. Maybe it'll splash around. It's interesting. Two queens for Andy Kim. Yeah, that's going to be a very easy call for him. Kiat Lee's got an ace in the muck. Finds its way there easily. The bigger point to be made, of course, Hold is the fact there. that that's one less ace available to Slazinski. Ace of spades, baby. Who obviously Thank you. hates having the Queen of Diamonds shared. Use my one time. Use your one time. A little early, but why not? That is the remaining Queen. Diamond. Backdoor Diamonds Backdoor and some Broadway yeah, stuff is available as top set. 
As a stranglehold on Listen. top pair, the Six of Hearts is not going to be Slazinski's one time, and he will ship the rest of his chips forward and over to Andy Kim. Open jamming 20 bigs with Ace Queen. Randy, I. Not really the standard at all. Um, I, I can see that if you were like known to be kind of like yeah, one of those yeah. guys just want to gamble up and run up a stack, which is something that could happen in the mystery bounty. Like I said, you want to run up a stack to cover other players. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was the case in this decision making, but I would have. Yeah. Usually you would see people right. try to just raise and hope to get people to jam on them with like. I don't know, ace-jack suited. Not or necessarily ace hope to get them to jam if they have ace-jack, <laughs> yeah, because ace-queen is somewhat vulnerable. But I hear what you're saying. It's kind of more of an open, face-to-three-bet, evaluate. Yeah. <clears throat> open jammy just doesn't get people to put in a lot of chips poorly. Yeah, you just narrow the range of hands that are going to be finding their way to a flop with you. And many of them perform well against ace-queen. Exactly. To be fair, there's some hands that are going to call a raise and take a flop with you that have you beat. You know, the pairs of the world, mm -hmm. not big enough. Of the world, of course. Oh, there we go. Rubs off on us. You know, those those class of hands, by the way, are the, the ones that find the muck mm -hmm. when we jam. So it's not only bad things, but obviously on occasion, bad things do happen. As they happen to Slazinski there, who parts ways with the feature table. Race and take it for Greenwood, who's got over 350K in front of him. Fog machines working over time. Henry calls that the Michael Jackson thriller. Every time we show this shot coming out with the fog. I don't know. I prefer your R2-D2. That was better. I, I, I feel like it's more a David Blaine kind of thing. <laughs> Next brick. Yeah. After 14. So After 14. Yes. So before that, if we knock out somebody, it's nothing, right? You got the chips. Just, yeah. just get chips. Yeah, yeah we gotta, we gotta <laughs> like, uh, you know, we gotta keep Paul alive. <laughs> gotta make sure he makes it to, uh, <laughs> to the break with like, you know, like 60k chips or something. Yeah, other than that, just, just bleed him down. <laughs> All right. Torture. Yeah. You understand what's going on, Ali? Talk to me. This is my so you don't collect playing. bounties until level right. 15. So they're like, let's keep Paul around as a short stack so we can collect his bounty once it turns into level 15. <laughs> <laughs> That's just brutal. You're talking to boss man there. You can't no do that respect. to him. I'll tell you what, though. He appreciates the humor. <laughs> I spy another favorite player of mine, Elton Sings here. Oh, he's going to make for some good times. Elton with such a unique style. Two red nines for Kiat Lee. Yeah, it's all the OG Asian Triton players are here. Yeah, yeah. Kudinov going to defend with 10 7 out of the big. See what develops. Dryness. Nothing whatsoever. Nines is vulnerable. Only one over card. A lot of times you'll see people put in a little bit. 20? 20? The bet is 20,000 total. Less than a third. Oh. Enough. I don't know if you're experienced in bounty tournaments, but do you ever get those situations where you don't, 
you double up through a guy, but you leave him with one chip, and then someone else takes that bounty. That's oh, the most that's, annoying. <laughs> you're not wrong about that. Certainly a point of frustration anytime one is playing a bounty event. And take this opportunity to shout out Shambhala Jewels, the official partner of the Triton Poker Series, crowning our champs with exquisite men's jewelry. High-end designs with diamonds, precious stones, and 18-karat gold, braided and polished by hand in Copenhagen, Denmark. Greenwood with ace-queen, showing a different approach to the holding as he opens to 26,000, granted off of a deeper stack than his predecessor, Slazinski. True. Blinds are up, though. 6K, 12K. Yeah. Dude, I want you to have it yeah. on, the, on oh. the way. I'll just put it in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Too many things in my pocket. A six off into the muck. No surprise there. Queen six suited. It's, a, it's an interesting one. Feeling good after knocking out Slazinski's ace queen with queens. And he makes it 27,000. Got that big stack, obviously. Looking to put it to work here. You talked about wanting to run up a big stack into the bounty period because then you can really afford to spin the wheel, take some chances against the shorter stacks. Yeah. You notice people are playing probably a little bit looser ranges than normal too, just not minding increasing that stack. It's just so much more valuable for that phase of the tournament. Spades. Yeah, not one but two spots as both blinds defended and both have picked up flush draws. Advantage Orpen, of course, with queen nine. And believe it or not, that queen nine high is actually the best hand on its own, unimproved, as both he and Milo Skribic checking over to Andy. And he's going to try to represent this board. 34K investment. I don't fault him. You know, he raised an early position can easily represent an ace-x, but he's going to get resistance. And depending on how Skirbish wants to play this, it could get pretty dicey, right? He might just see a bet and a call, go for some big check raise, thinking, you know, he got the wheel going on. Mm -hmm. From his point of view as right now, it does kind of look like someone's got an ace, but you know what? Gamble it up. Make a play. That's exactly what Milos Skirbich has done as he jams for 191,000. Of course, this is going to be a very easy decision for Kim, but back over to Orpen. He does have Milos well covered. Asks for the count. I'll tell you this, Holly. If we were in a bounty phase of the tournament, he would definitely be calling Queen I suited. The overlay. Yes, the bounty is an overlay, but here you're just getting chips. It's different. Well, to be fair, Getting those chips in just a few short 30-minute levels are going to be worth a lot in terms yeah. of bounty hunting. But Or if you call and lose, you become the hunted. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Using time bank. You want to think about how many f weaker flush draws you could be up against. Definitely exists. Occasionally, you're up against 5-6. Knowing your player helps a lot. Figure out what the best decision is. Oh, and ultimately, Orpen does settle on the call. And you see Milos recognizing the devastating nature of the hand he's up against. He does have that wheel draw. It's not the worst, 28%. Jack in the 5 are both live. As we head to the turn, there's the spade, and it's the end of the road. Ooh. 
for the Serbian. Milo Skrbic, who hit the wheel on the river. Take that seven of spades and put it somewhere else, he's thinking. Well, he already took. I paid or? You paid? What time are they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Orpin thought maybe he had a marker out on time banks, but Bossman stepping in to bank. say, no, you already huh? That's how you paid your debt. That's value of your time bank. When you have something to accomplish. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't spend any in this spot, I guess. Thanks. Would you? Oh, this one here. I had to, like... I didn't, I didn't see exactly how much he shoved, but I would have probably just... Yeah. yeah. I don't want to make a stupid mistake. He bet, like, two big blinds, you called, and he shoved, like, ten big blinds, something like that. He bet like 30, 15, 34? 15 big blinds. And the, the... He bet 34? Some post-mortem exchanges there between Orpin and Greenwood as Kisser's Jacoblu climbs the leaderboard, inheriting Skrbic's chips and vaulting up to over 800K ahead of Andy Kim. Yeah, and you can see him winning that pot. If we were in a bounty stage, he, now he can collect all five bounties, but... He was down to like 550k, he can only collect two bounties. So this is definitely going to be important right. when we get to that level 15 and onwards. Paul Foy on the hunted side of the spectrum. Granted, no bounties in play yet, but just 13 bigs. Uh, I need to want to make it three times that I make it 60. Oh, yeah. 6, 12, you're like, oh, I got to get... I, I do all the time. So yeah, I got to brush up on my 12 times tables. <clears throat> Greenwood saying he's struggling with the 12k big blind. I don't believe it. Getting bluffed. Great. Victor Kudanov. Cash game crusher opens. Double down. The answer is yes, as <laughs> another 13K is stuck out there by Greenwood. Two clean cards and two clubs, but he's king 10, not the board he had in mind, as he quickly checks it over to the top pair of Kudanov, which follows through, and bye -bye. should be that, yeah. I think every time I hear bye-bye, I'm going to be thinking of our... Local hero. <laughs> <laughs> what are you sending off, KT? <laughs> Just, you had to be there, man. I mean, <laughs> the uh, jubilant nature with which he was doing it as the board developed, too. It wasn't even like... It's not even the ending. Yeah. Not the finish line. People were so confused. He knew. And they were watching me. And I almost said, like, it was a misclick. But I knew if I said that, someone's going to free bet. So I was like... <laughs> and the fish opens like opens so big with pocket tens or pocket jacks, and I was just sitting like this. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did that twice in like one hour. I love the honesty that comes out of Andy's mouth. Just having a good time, playing some good poker, makes some mistakes, yeah, not afraid like to admit it. Yeah. It's a process, and it's yeah, one that's never careful. ending. Just ask Eric now Seidel. I put chips, like in order. <laughs> So I don't like He's been playing poker that, across the better part yeah, of four decades. The game having evolved so much, and he will readily tell you that he is always learning, especially from a lot of this younger generation, which has advanced the game courtesy of yeah. these solvers. So much computing power being applied to the game, sport, whatever you want to call it. Uh, willing to learn is definitely very important in this game. Ego take hold you back. Oh. Was there a misclick? 40 is what I want. <laughs> 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 Love me some Andy Kim. Sizing's a bit too big for him, so he's going to lay down suited queen. Yeah. 39, maybe? What? Maybe 30. <coughs> nah. Nah, 30? <laughs> I think of it that occasion, like if we make it 39, he calls, then there's 90 in the pot. Very hard for you to count a pot. Yeah. Because the, that's the odd number there. Yeah, no, but, but like, that, then it works. 
Ah, nah, you get, no. If you I get, against you, I just bet, keep betting the odd number. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they try to do that where I'm like, oh, if I bet this amount and he calls, then we'll have like a hundred even in the pot and then I won't need to worry about it the rest of the hand. <laughs> Hello. Let's put a lesson. Tretton OG. <laughs> He's using that. Trick. Another one from Malaysia. Yu Wei Sheng. Xiang. Actually. Yes. Orpin. Off of that big stack. Opens the king 10. Andy in the small blind with the little suited connector. Shouldn't be interfering. Flats and allows Kiat Lee to take the best of all prices. Close it. Joins the party. Three way affair. No cards oh, shared. Yeah, no card share, rare thing. <coughs> Three ways. A delight. Nine, eight, three, and it is middle pair for Andy Kim, the current leader, but of course, Kat Lee has the spade draw working. And the blinds is the one with the connection. Preflop razor is Orpin. Orpin's got that backdoor potential, two overs. But it kind of smacks the one of those blinds a bit, this board. So C betting should have intentions for multiple barrels depending on what drops off. So let's start for bet. Analyze the situation. Yep. Depending on how they respond. It's just 15k. Ten of hearts interacting, of course, with the eight, nine king of spades with the two spades. Of course we do see Kiat Lee with the spade draw. And he calls the 15. Got some deep stacks and thinking about racing because of this very small bet seems weak and the just call against the near min bet also sure. seems a little weak. Bump it up. I kind of like this. It draws the pot into focus for Kiat Lee. Obviously, he can very credibly rep a wide variety of holdings, having closed the action from the big blind for a modest price. Yeah. He relieved to see Orpin put his hand into the muck. And now for Andy Kim with second pair. Seven of diamonds working, of course. Problem is he's out of position. Yeah. So it becomes a guessing game. Nothing wrong with continuing, but got to realize trouble could easily come. Mm -hmm. Could be up against a, if you're up against a made hand, well, you're almost drawing dead. Suspicious, right. but going to play cautiously. I think if the spade drops off, you should be able to get away easily. Well, the king of diamonds does nothing for either of these players. And this is why I think the call with at least a single diamond on the flop is so much more attractive mm -hmm. is... Kim would have picked up the flush draw. Yeah, I feel you. Got the best hand though. Checking over to Kiat who is blocking spade draws. Blocking some of the straight draws as well with that queen. The king's pretty scary. If he doesn't bet now, he's basically telling everyone he's got a draw. So he figures, let's put some pressure on. Small blind doesn't hit the king too often unless he's got the king ten of spades, king jack of spades. It's likely that Andy Kim here is holding. I got you. I think I got you. Yeah, I think once the exchange begins, you're not going to be <laughs> calling and then. Although I've seen Andy do some talking and then continuing into that. Really? He did. It was on day uh, event number one. What? So, yeah. don't rule it out for him. It's <laughs> off. <laughs> Speed play definitely makes for an interesting dynamic. I don't know what you have. <laughs> I have a pair. I think my hand is good. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and you can see that it's, it's hard to navigate out of position, even though you, you suspect you got the best hand on the flop, but Suspicious. it's so hard to you continue unless you improve. <laughs> How long is the delay? Like 30 minutes? An hour. An hour? <clears throat> I thought it was 30 minutes like yesterday. I think it's just an hour. Just tell me. I'm going to figure it out later. You figure out later. <laughs> My friends are going to text me. <laughs> I'll let your friend do the job. Kudinov the opener on this occasion with an ace nine. Boss man. Trash with 11 big blinds. No fun. Hey, that trash won Doyle Brunson a couple of bracelets. <laughs> Another man, one man's trash is another man's <laughs> gold, right? I appreciate the wildlife support there on Kudinov's shirt, but I do confess I've yet to see any green cheetahs <laughs> or leopards in the wild. Supposed to Same. Or? I mean, you can. Maybe that would be a special St. Patrick's situation. Once a year, we dye all of our big cats <laughs> green here at the <laughs> sanctuary. Like Xiang's open pocket jacks for the OG Malaysia. I grew up watching you play poker. <laughs> Such an honor. Now How I are you? <laughs> what is it? How are you? Uh, really? 35. No. 30. How old are you? Yeah. He said he grew up watching you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, first, <laughs> the first started playing poker. Like, <laughs> it isn't that anyone grew up watching me do anything. Not playing, crushing. <laughs> yeah. I took a little break off crushing the last couple of years. <laughs> I had to let some other people catch up. <laughs> Fair enough. You're here. Uh, Hello, I new think, guy. I think that's my favorite way to describe not running great. I, uh, yeah, I took a break off of crushing for the last couple of years. How old are you? As we bring a crusher into the streets here in Patrick Antonius. Some people, like, do people now play these things who like No sooner is he welcome to the feature table than he opens to. When did you start playing? 24K with Ace Jack and the timing's bad. Greenwood. Look at from the app. He's queen. Uh, I don't know. I think it's around. Well, we can calculate. I mean, some people grew up watching Patrick Antonius play. Sure. He's been around a minute. Well, many minutes. Greenwood off of 374k announces 60,000. Three betting. And Kim not liking this three bet in front of him. Lays down Queen 10 suited. <laughs> the worst is when you haven't been able to play a hand for orbits on end and then you pick one up, you think you're ready to play and there's a raise in a three bet in front of you. It just annoys me so much. Yeah, mm. it's frustrating. This also annoys me when I've got ace jack and someone three bets me a small size. It feels like weak to fold. Then it's not fun to call it a position. Jamming seems excessive. Just lots of bad spots to be in. Let's just start with a call. It seems like the less the least variant route. Okay, never mind, I like it. Flop it. Top pair. Top pair. Jack pair. high board. Such a great one for Antonius as he hits his side card, though dominated pre-flop, and has backdoor diamond options available to him as well. As he checks it over to Greenwood. Sam's going to tell the story. Very small story. 
That is... He's not shouting it, is no. he? 20% pot. A little bit of a whisper. He does like to use these smaller bets. Allows them to maneuver more. Mm -hmm. Multiple barrels. Increase stack to pot ratio with shallow stacks. Makes sense. Ace jack. Check car, check raise. He knows how to trap them in. Nice. Yeah, really a, a great card for this ace jack for Antonius as he flatted the 30k and then slides some rope Greenwood's way. It is the type of card, though, you don't expect someone to fire multiple barrels into as a bluff on the turn. It does check through a lot. There is some stuff that Greenwood could consider targeting with a multi-barrel approach. Yeah, it'd mainly be like eights and nines. Um, I guess some, since he bets so small, he, he would get called by... Well, I don't know. Ace Queen. Ace Queen might jam preflop too. It, it's. I just don't see it happening too often. So it does go check, check. Safe. Nine of Hearts, a clean one. In terms of river cards for Antonius. Two ten in the middle. Pretty good run out. The opponent checking the turn. Try to rep those missed diamonds. You know, you can represent king, queen of diamonds. King, ten of diamonds. They would call that small three bet pre-flop. He thinks his opponent's pretty weak. So the small bet here is to, hope to also get crying calls from like ace, king high. Uh, ace, queen high. Which might feel obligated just with the price alone. Yeah, getting better than 5-1 to one is Greenwood here on this board. And not sure how much of the inside stuff Greenwood's going to be giving Antonius credit for here, the 10-9-9-8, 10-8. As played. Resist the temptation of better than 5-1 to one as he correctly puts the ace-queen into the muck and a pleasant first hand for the Finn, Patrick Antonius, who has over $2 million in career Triton ah. earnings, courtesy of seven caches and a title. His seventh cash coming just a day ago, two days ago. It's all a blur already. <laughs> but in the GG Super Millions Live 25K event number one, a 13th place finish for 70,500. But that Patrick Antonius title was sweet. I remember him calling down a pair of deuces for like a bet, bet jam. That was awesome. In Cyprus, I believe. Or was it Madrid? That was in Cyprus. Cyprus. And yeah, I remember that hand as well. He, like, he took a long time on the river. Used, used a lot many, of time Many bank. time banks yeah. because something felt off to him. It's like an ace on the board and everything. It was bottom pair, obviously, well, I mean, yeah, the deuce. I mean, but yeah. How many overcards? Four, four or five? Well, it can't be five. has to be four. But, yes. It was insane. It really was an insane call. The, the room kind of buzzed about it once it hit the, uh, the stream. Yeah, Social loved it. Everyone was just talking about how great it was. They're kind of defining moments, aren't they? Yeah. Very memorable. Antonius back at it here with Queen-10 suited. Ace-10 looking juicy in this spot. A lot yeah. of overlay. For sure. And a lot of what maybe Paul Fua considers to be dead money available to him. He's using a time bank here. Is the juice worth the squeeze with Ace-10? Yeah, I just because of the chance you could be ahead and the overlay you can get, like, you know, original guy reshubs two eights or two nines, kicks out the other guys, big blind, big blind ante, small blind available. Uh, you're getting a pretty good price on your hand. Yeah. In comes the jam for 127K, and obviously quick work is made. Oh. Uh, Ace King, Yu Wei Xiang. What a timing, huh? Just a big blind wakes up I, with it. You know, I, I forgot that people are allowed to wake up with better. 
in this spot, and we know that Chiang is not going to be throwing it away. I thought for sure we were on to Antonius and Kim folding Queen-10 suited and then leaving <laughs> Kiat Lee to make a decision. But instead, it is an all-in of his own for Xiang. And he's got boss in a bad way as the decisions are made even easier for the two Queen-10s and the sixes. <laughs> he's like, fucking nines, come on. We're going to look, look. We're I like your play, Paul. Just unlucky. Yeah, ran into it, but it was out. Seemingly well timed, but can't say the same for this King 7 5 board as Shang is 98% from this point forward and on the turn. Boss draws dead with no re-entry available here in event number three. Won't be collecting any bounties, but on the flip side, no one will be collecting his either. But with Ken, there's just so much dead money and you just get his heads up a bunch. And yeah. Especially like, I would have won. You it looks like Patrick's polishing like off the tail end of that fresh young coconut. Yeah, Is that? Are you one of these coconut water people, Randy? Yeah, I like coconut water. You don't like it? You don't like it, you don't like it out of the actual coconut? I don't care I get, where I don't it comes <laughs> from. Oh, you don't like the flavor of it? I think it's vile. It's vile? I, it's You're look, vile. Okay, listen, clearly, <laughs> we've already established <laughs> this, but... I don't know. I just think it's it's hyped up a little bit too much. Maybe vial is a bit strong, but yeah, I can try. Uh, it's a six or two. I don't get the hype. Let's put yes. it that way. Next time I'm mad at you, I'm gonna throw a coconut at you. Stuff, so That'd be great. Just wait till <laughs> it's on camera. <laughs> that way, I have evidence to Please. present in court. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't sue you, Randy. Over a coconut. Kudnov with pocket tens. King eight suited. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get tempted. To like throw a coconut at your co-commentator? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Orpin. Going to throw 75,000 at the button. Helps suited Queen King. Jack find the muck. You see people make some stances with uh, King X suited sometimes. King X, King Eight, King Seven, King Six, Tens. A lot of stack to play for. I think um, standards to call here. But Kudanov is he splashed a lot of chips and cash games for <laughs> for much more and much less of a hand. Rip it in. Orpin took his shot. No posturing. Consummate Pro puts it into the muck. Dealer advising the players that it's time for a new blind level, Randy. 10 and 15K. Those levels come around awfully quick at 30 minutes. We're getting close to that, uh, well, closer. To that envelope stage. Mm -hmm. Let me see what they look like. Do you think they're like the Chinese New Year envelopes, the red, <laughs> the red ones, ones with I the gold? So. Uh, for, that'd be cool. Wouldn't that'd it? be really cool. Look like Greenwood's shirt. Nine eight. Playable. You got some stack. Two point five X on the button. Respecting those opponents. Wanna discourage them from continuing. Well. King ten. One might posit that the eight nine offsuit is not the most respectful pursuit. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Well, disrespect. Yeah. King 10. Oh, suit. I wonder if it's a byproduct of seeing the bigger sizing, too. Oh, maybe thinking this is designed <laughs> to 
encourage me to put my hand into the muck? Why would you do that if you had a real holding? It crosses some people's mind, yeah. for sure. That's why Such I skeptics we are as poker <laughs> players, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we're always looking for a reason to do what we want. Mm -hmm. Whatever excuse I can think of. Welcome David yeah, Peters something. to the party yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally as he yeah. occupies yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the vacancy left behind by Paul Pua. Uh, and one time when dice, so it doesn't affect that much. <laughs> you know the cool stat on David Peters, of course, Randy. You mean there his it's not even number of trophies? He's got one, right? Yeah, but... <laughs> no limit hold him. Has to know him, hold him. I've only seen him play that game. Six max event all the way back in 2018. Jeju. Peters played in the Philippines in 2016. Philippines. Wow. He went two for two. That's just how far back we go. And Jeez. Yeah, there were a couple events before we started streaming these. Philippines. Get the other stop. Macau. Macau. It's, uh, what a warm welcome. We give Mr. Peters. Who so this is an OG. That's what a real OG looks like. It's got 5.1 million. Hello, Aces. Career tournament earnings. Isn't it suspicious the guy who just sits do down three bets now? first hand? Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Is all good? That's good. Yeah, you really don't have a reference point <laughs> for what he's up to out there. Nevertheless, 85K. All right. A little bit too rich to continue. Yeah. When they, since your chips were like <coughs> the dealer brought over your chips feet, it looked like you just sat down at the table, sunburned, <laughs> just confused, because like, you just wander over, sit down at the table, you don't have any chips. All right. <laughs> Peter's rocking the beard and I believe Petrangelo is clean shaven now. It's almost like they've Space they swapped. swapped. <laughs> Face off. Yeah, right. What a good movie that was. Starring David Peters and right. Petrangelo. Yeah, Petrangelo. The spin off, <laughs> <laughs> the prequel. <laughs> Pocket three is here for Greenwood. A lot of guys actually just hope and rip this one. Uh, well, count playing, Sam Greenwood among them. Play the raw equity with the hand. Stop three shoves on you. Don't let the big blind who's going to defend pretty wide. And, you know, it's hard to play threes if you don't flop a set. He show everyone. <laughs> he just showed one three, though, as if to... Come on, we know what the other card yeah. is, Greenwood. I can't be the sick block. Three five suited. Three five suited. Yeah, they're all teasing him here. <laughs> How do you like this place? Do you like this place? Yeah, I see the first time Sam is showing a card. My huh? only complaint about this place is uh, I've never seen him show a card before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So slow. Even in the room? He's like, ah, it's on the Are you staying somewhere else? Yeah. I don't know where you stay. Where are you staying? I'm staying here. Huh? You know where it's slow? I'm staying here. <clears throat> this hotel? This hotel. Pretty fast. Yeah, just pretty fast. I'm staying here as well. Oh, not in my room. I don't know. Oh, it's, it's unstable. Oh. Yeah, I think I got disconnected once, yeah. but just once. Internet's too slow for Greenwood here. Stability's overrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> overrated. Everyone else, everyone else said it was fast. He said it was slow. He said it was unstable. Stability's boring, Sam. Everyone knows that. He's not getting invited to the next party. King, queen. It's like a raising hand to me. Yeah, limp here from Kiat out of the small. Start a pot. Peters. Other than that? <laughs> other than that, I like it a lot. Takes another one. Without having good to good. reveal his goods. Room is nice. Jason Kuhn was complaining there's nothing to do besides poker. <laughs> I did. Uh, do you play golf? How on earth? No. Do you do any spot? <laughs> mm. 
but at least like you know, nothing serious. Like, too there being nothing to when do but kid, poker. That's what we're here for. And I messed up my shoulder. So then wow, I did four titles play. complaining. Oh. It doesn't look like you play rugby though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so then I was always like hesitant to like learn golf or stuff like that because it's. But now I wish I learned how to play golf. Well, there is a lovely golf Jason course. Has too much, yeah, too true. much muscle mass for golf. Yeah. You know, he doesn't have the he doesn't have the flexibility for the swing. Don't know how to swing. Yeah. Here at the resort, Kiat Lee. Swings with King Queen, picks up the Russian out of the big. Oh, hello there. Six, seven, eight. Kudanov fluffs the joint, checks a quick check back from Kiat. Oh. Four liner on the board now. A bit of an action killer beyond what. Six, seven, eight was already going to be doing to this king high. <laughs> no set, no bet. <laughs> Let me catch out a bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm too much to afraid. <laughs> you up. Maybe clap up here. I played before, like. Used to top fall. Top off, like, the range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's pretty good in golf. Golf. Oh, that's not a long time. Nick and Seth are good. Nick who? Nick Petrangelo oh. and Seth Davies are both, are both good golfers. Seth seems like good in everything. He yeah, Seth is a good app. He played like uh, college baseball. Yeah. Also good at poker. Up front. Opens to 30,000. Do you golf, Randy? I was going to ask you that question. I mini golf. <laughs> I mini golf too. Do you really? No. Let's really. find the closest played. mini played. golf course. Let's play. We can get down. I know how to find the clown's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the windmill. <laughs> <laughs> Producer James hopping onto the headset <laughs> to advise that I am the clown's mouth. <laughs> Not one, but two suited aces in there for the 30K. And Orpin can go set mining, closing the action for an extra 15K. Lovely price on these two sixes. 135 in the middle. 10 high rainbow flop. And ace deuce and ace four have both turned into wheel draws, hunting one another's side cards. King Jack comes up empty, and Orpin sixes are in front of the field. It is in front, but it's hard to navigate against four players. You know, lots of overcards. Morse coming. It's actually Andy Kim reaching for chips in 45. position. Inside straight 45. draw, backdoor flush draw. He can represent that 10x pretty well. Jack 10, 10, 9. Makes sense. Pocket 8s, pocket 9s. Very credible. But you know, Kudanov's got like practically the same hand. So the 45K bet is called by Victor. <laughs> Can they get the best hand out? Two sixes? It is worrisome. And you still got to worry about a turn and a river. Best hand in the muck. You can understand it. Yeah, it's just awkward. Where do you really go from there? Nine on the turn would have delivered a gutty to King Jack, but if you don't like sixes, you certainly don't like King Jack in this spot. Now the two wheel draws do not pick up the backdoor flush equity they were looking for. Let's see if Andy Kim wants to continue the story of representing a 10X. He bets again, trying to target those ace fives, ace threes. Maybe some straight draw potential. Giving up. 
Does Ace Deuce Hive have enough showdown value? I didn't think so either. To not bet this river card. That's the question. It's hard to find out because it's four way on a flop, so it's hard to define hands right now. What are we targeting though if we decide to make the bet here? Yeah. I don't know. I guess it'd be like those little pocket pairs. Has played. Could be a check. Chop it up. Chop up those other guys' money. Nice win. I need to say that. To show down they go after yeah. one street of betting. Chop it on up. Orpin gonna yeah. tell people he folded the best hand. Now is it something you keep <laughs> taking to the grave? That's new behavior. <laughs> new behavior. <laughs> yeah, he's silent. Cantonese, Randy. Existent. <laughs> suppose that's better than non-existent. As we take a moment to remind you that the Triton Poker Plus app is certainly the best of what's around in terms of giving you the viewing experience you deserve. It is a better way to watch poker course supplement that with all of our Triton accounts give us a follow on Instagram Facebook Twitch Twitter YouTube like and subscribe be a part of the Triton family from wherever you are hand incoming by calling does let Xiang here consider completing jack nine offsuit playable price is right price is right indeed a lot of interference here connection jack eight six all diamonds nobody has the flush draw but everybody's got a pair advantage Xiang with top pair, round of checks as Kudinov closed the action. Safe card. Tricky in a sense that you got two opponents, you don't want to see that fourth diamond. Orpin might feel pretty good about his hand, despite <coughs> not having the best, but as played, I'd love to see Xiang throw a bet out here. It's just, it's dicey. What if I Nice sizing. Don't give people too good of a price. Kunanov could easily have the best hand here, though. Gonna take one off in position. In position is helpful. People tend to give you the chance to show down a little bit more often. Been laying down the third best hand in a three-way affair and leaving it to Kudinov and Xian. Feels connecty this card. Let's see, seven nine, eight ten. Cautious. It's understandable. The nine kicker. Yeah, shut down there. Kudinov maybe was hoping for the naked diamond to be rolled over. Yeah. At a shank seat. Which it would be a decent amount of the time, by the way. It doesn't have to be top pair there. Of course. It could be like King X. Because uh, he's closing action from the big blind, so he's right. going to have a lot of these unsuited hands that would be able to take a stab.
King Nine of Diamonds now for South Korea's Andy Kim. Dominating the Queen Nine suited of David Peters. It's a calculated face. Smirky. Yeah. Feels a little naughty. Think about three Benny, aren't you? Mm -hmm. yeah, oh you are. yeah, you sniffed it out there. Randy, and obviously he's not performing well against Andy's holding should they take a flop, but it not is not entirely certain Andy wants to put another 65 out there with the King-9, and he yeah. doesn't take long to put it into the muck, so nicely timed work there from David Peters. You're not calling three bets of King-9 trying to dominate the nine hexes that are three betting you. Yeah. You're more likely to be dominated by these kings out of position. No. It's not about always trying to find hands you beat. It's all about avoiding the awful situations and putting yourself in more good situations. Trying to win every single pot's a recipe. <laughs> Finding the exit quickly. Mm -hmm. Undeterred, Andy gets back after it with the King Jack, and he's going to face resistance yet again, presumably Orpin in the cutoff here. Yeah. You can actually do kind of a mixed strategy of calling and yeah. three-betting here, Just especially because against Andy's under the gun. Under the gun. Yeah, yep. that's a lot to do with the choice. See? Told you. It's still resistance, though. True. It's just not... Slowly open the door and just <laughs> ram in there. <laughs> Not as aggressive, the resistance. And Greenwood with what he deems to be a pretty one, rightfully, in the big. It's actually a key information here is that the undergun opened to 3x, exactly, which is not standard. No, so, and, uh, you huh? wonder what he's thinking of that 3x. <laughs> I, we it's really don't need to wonder. Obviously, he lacks respect for it as he jams. 269. This is snappy. <laughs> yeah, Orpin makes the call. And interlocking are these two hands. Broadway one gappers. One king jack is down. Great That's point. Trouble. So Greenwoods. Event three life hanging in the balance here with 73 remaining. And Jack 8-4 puts him in front. Hard that was do. easy. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, God. Why'd you, know, you say it was easy? I purposefully didn't want to point out that he needs to fade the ace or the queen. I, I've done it so often, and then it just rolls right off. I didn't say a word, and the queen still came. The bad beats continue to flow at these featured tables here in Vietnam. On this occasion, the victim, Sam Greenwood, the beneficiary. Orpin Kisichikoglu. And that is a solid boost to Orpin's stack, Randy, yeah. which was already multiple wins he's gotten. Super deep. Right? <coughs> Setting himself up nicely for that level 15 that will come. It's going to be one big one, right? Nine hundred and nineteen by our account. Good for tenth overall in the field. Solid. Suited King once again. <laughs> Min Ray's open from Shang. Antonius on the button with a couple of sixes. 
Kind of a funny stack size, 24 blinds. There is a dead small blind, so there's one less player than normal. And Patrick's going to jam despite the lack of the small blind in there. Obviously, from a chip standpoint, the lack of that money is not something that he likes, but that's one less hand to contend with when we jam from the button behind us. True. Quick work made of the big and the opener by Patrick. Spent a couple of hours with him earlier today, reminiscing over the no <coughs> origins of our friendship, which uh. began as a result of battling one another in the Limit Hold'em streets on nice. the now defunct Ultimate Bet software, which is where I first came across your screen name. Nanonoko, you and I also rumbled back then, did we not, in those streets? Who made it out alive? <laughs> you used to hold over me, buddy, in a, in a way that made me talk to myself. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're connected to the poker streets. People usually know you as a commentator, but I know you've been playing a long time. I listened to some of that podcast with Jungle Man you did. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. It was less of a podcast and more of just a, a phone <laughs> call between the two of us with a video <laughs> camera involved. As Kudinov opens the ace-king. Orpin flats the pretty connector. We'll have the benefit of position here. Yeah, Table yeah. for two. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. runneth over. You give it, you give it a luggage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clean now. Yeah, okay, no. <laughs> Not the kind of board that's going to encourage Kudanov to continue. He deems check the optimal approach. Check doesn't necessarily mean weak, though. You're right. It's just being cautious on paired boards. It makes a lot of sense. So even if Kudanov had like some kind of pocket pair, he could easily check as well. By the way, you know, this bet from Orpin, we're looking at a guy that's been stringing a lot of pots together, might be feeling it. If this isn't necessarily emblematic of a hand that has the ace-king beat here. Yeah. Just taking a stab in position if it looks like you're not interested. Now a super dry turn card. Yeah, and by betting small and flop, you leave the door open to start building that pot. Did get called, so doesn't really change much. I wouldn't expect much check folds for a 20k bet. Maybe it's time to start getting even more value. Just depends on whether you think you're up against a pocket pair or like ace high. Maybe some differently played flush draw. Sizing up, of course, makes a lot of sense. Try to rep that bluff, pot size. Yeah, he wants this to look suspect. Mm -hmm. And Victor Kunov is someone who is suspect with players. Very well versed in hand reading. Ace King knows spades in hand. If he does call, would we'll he be trying to pick off those flush draws? They're playing so deep though, and you wonder whether or not that is of concern to Kudinov, or maybe something that he can leverage <coughs> in order to threaten Orpin. As a cash game expert, I don't think he's scared about deep pots. Doesn't look that way, does it? As he calls the 140k, drawing dead. This run out, by the way, not one that's going to make him worried. No. If he thinks ace-king is good, we could see a big call on the river here. Spade draw whiffs. If Orpin's going to go for a pot size bet on the mm. turn, it's probably likely he's going to go for a big bet again. With that, I'm trying to represent that bluff. 420 in the middle. I do think Orpin thinks he's most likely to get called would be up against some kind of pocket pair rather than ace high. Ace high would usually call two bets. Or put in two bets. I don't know what would be more likely to get a call out of Kudinov, though. The jam asking for it all and overbet at 573 effective? Or something milky? Yeah, the story is odd. I don't think. Not a lot of people go like pot and then start getting milky, like 140 on a river. Right. It's it, just it, not. It doesn't add up. Yeah, it doesn't add up too well. 
Yeah, so he comes with the all-in, it sounds like. And no, Kudinov was certainly thinking about this possibility when he made the call on the turn. Now that he is facing it, he is running through the scenarios. Making sure that he knows how I feel as though we take a lot of those middling pocket pairs that maybe would look for two streets of value and mm -hmm. remove them from the range here on the river. And if we do that, it kind of comes down to a lot of, is it 10x or dust? Yes, Busted exactly. spades. Yeah, and that's what the pot size bet is designed is to kind of be polarized. So that people can hear a call even more, right? Mm, it's like nice. you got it or you don't. Well, don't got to worry about pocket I sevens or eights, right. which Actually, would be ridiculous. When he was tanking there. Oh, yeah. No, I did. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So we will swap dealers here at the feature table and give you a peek at the chip counts. Brought to you by GG Poker. Blinds of 10 and 15,000 with the 15K ante. And it has been the Orpin Show. 1.155 million in front of them. That stack puts them into fourth place overall by our count. Big drop off between he and David Peters who sits in second here at the feature. Kyat Liu Chun is the short stack. Oh. Oh, just muck the pocket threes. Uh, or been probably still better than running Jack's, too good. So. King Jack suited for Patrick now. Yeah, smelt that behind him. Looking King Jack is Jack. Uh, mini raise. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I can't wait to see Aaron say, <laughs> just say mini raise. I just want to hear him. It's in his voice that, that those words should only ever be muttered. It's got to happen this trip, or I'm and not leaving. Low place, so Suited ace. Small play. In comes a three bet to 100k, just shy of 3.5x. Makes the decision considerably easier for Peters' as ace nine. And now back over to Antonius, who, if he were to get curious, will, of course, have position moving forward. Trouble, of course, Kiatli has him covered. Yeah, they are playing Psst. not the most deep, but it's got good playability. As long as you know your opponent is capable of three bat light, then it's fine to continue king jack suited. Flopping nothing though. Queen four deuce. Backdoor clubs. Backdoor wheels for the three better. Kiat Lee, bottom pair of course. The most relevant development. Small bet is a, a common place. This kind of texture and stack. Size to play for. Yeah, 65 into 230, snap fold there from Patrick. 7 7 7 stack. Perfect. <laughs> Level up to 10 20 20 now. Here in this third event of our Triton Super High Roller Festival in Vietnam, the first on the 2023 calendar. Already broken three records in terms of field sizes here in Hoi An. It's unheard of, back to back to back. Right. Paul Paul is like tweeting a new one every every day. Yeah, we just broke the record again. Right. And we never have an event four. Event five, the one after this, will be our first 30K buy-in. Another no-limit hold'em. Seven max as scheduled. I suspect that one's not going to break this record, but you know. It'll knows? still be a, a sizable field. Yeah, though. I agree. As Kiat Liu Chun 
with a sizable 249K open, a little over 12 bigs. Yeah, Lee on the button with sixes, Ugly. getting curious. Six. Six Awkward. Four. Yeah, he wants to know how much the guys behind him have, and they actually have a decent amount of stack, which makes this a little bit less exciting. Four. Still thinks it's enough of a hand. Gins. Hi. Got a slight advantage. <laughs> Malaysian on Malaysian action. Oh, Tyson. New, new Tyson. Yin <laughs> <laughs> On his feet <laughs> is Kiat <laughs> Liu Chun. At oh, risk. No, I don't know. Advantage Kiat Lee with the two sixes pre flop and much more so courtesy of the nine high flop as aces and queens mm, are sought. Saving. Mm. Counterfeit. Oh, Obtained on the turn. Oh, Is one available yeah, on the river? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, GG's uh, issued, and that is the end of the road for Kat Liu Chun. This yeah, he sends his tokens Kat Lee's way. Present was short lived. Short it? stint. No. Definitely a couple guys at this table who's built some stacks. Orpin and Kiat. Lee. Thank you. That part of this tournament is going to be really fun. You're going to see Ollie. The bounty phase. Incoming. We don't get to open the envelopes right away, though. Oh, we gotta wait till tomorrow. Maybe you can just hold it up to the light. <laughs> you actually, see, you don't. Okay, it. the prize is not in the envelope. You gotta take them out of a box. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then the size of the box. <laughs> oh, you think all the boxes are the same size? <laughs> Boy, Kiatli needs to turn the hands in when they're done being played as he picks up sixes again. I think it's the third time he's had them here at the feature. Yeah, it's a boomerang. Shang, the upfront villain with the pocket threes, by the way. A hand that found its way into an open muck for Orpin earlier. Ace in early check, position. closing the action. He's thinking about something naughty. Seeing these smooth calls. Might treat him as a little bit weaker. Original guy sitting on 30 blinds effective to start the hand. Is he going to go super aggro? He's Would love to see it. Just like 240,000 or something. He's got the stack for it. Yeah. I don't think it's the kind of weight that oh. any of these three holdings would be able to bear. Nah, time bank call. Trick. <laughs> time bank call is a little telling of something. I'm not sure if they're going to read into that, though. Yeah, what would that something be? Is there a correlation? As a very dry King 7 Deuce Rainbow rolls off and Kudinov smacks top pair. Oh. Young wants to bet pocket threes. It is. Check. Once he checks here, though, it's pretty much done with the hand. Okay. Safe Nine card. on the turn is safe indeed. No flush draws on board. I'd imagine Victor is pretty tempted to clear the field. Four, op three opponents. Well, he wouldn't mind at least one caller, but certainly doesn't want to have to play the river yeah. four ways. And because he's playing four ways, he's sizing up a little bit, too.
one of them going down shortly. One down, two down. Show six. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder what the other card was. Well, we know, but the rest of the field's not going to. They know. Come on. It has to be pocket sixes. You never know. It could have been Naughty Kiat. He's got a lot of chips now. <laughs> Maybe some 6-7 suited. Possible. King-7 deuce board, though. I think maybe 6-5 <laughs> suited would have been better, I guess. Oh, low, low, low. Yeah. <laughs> Gutty on the <laughs> turn, not interested. Yeah, Upstairs we go. Min rays from Kiat. Oh my god, I thought for sure he had sixes. <laughs> that should not have made me laugh. <laughs> right, I appreciate a good courtesy laugh, Randy. That's all right. <laughs> it's late. Orpin got his ace jack back, though. Same decision. Call. Top two on the Ace Jack Five board against the Broadway Gutty. Jack of Hearts working as well for Orpin. Just smashes this one. Knuckling it over to Lee, who thinks he's got range advantage as the opener. And he's not wrong. Betting one third pot. Yeah, top two. You know, I can really see it. I mean, you're deep, so you kind of tempted to raise to kind of start getting chips in. And again, looks pretty strong for your check raise. Flatting small blind, ace jack, very credible. Pocket fives, you underplay your hand. Now, let's see. It's going to raise it up. Yeah. Queen 10, draw two. Nuts is possible. Would it be nicer, though, if there was a jack of clubs? Or if the flop was rainbow. Deep stacks. Welcome to the table. You might want to think about if you hit your straight, you can you get paid off for the rest? It's important. I think that answer could be a yes. Let's see well, what he thinks. One of the kings that Kiat Lee would be looking for is a heart king, and obviously. How much value are you going to be able to get? What did we do? In that spot. And, you know, I I kind of understand this play from Kiat Lee, who's thinking, what would Orpin be check raising me here with that makes a lot of sense to me as the pre-flop raiser? Yeah, so he's clearly discounting aces and pocket jacks. Those hands will very heavily three-bet pre-flop. Maybe he thinks the ace jack would be more inclined to slow play, but that texture is so wet that you kind of understand why Orpin would take the line that he did. And in doing so, he has created this opportunity, but he blocks aces, he blocks jacks. How much 5-5 five, five do we assign? 5-5 is incredible. But just, I mean, once you check raise this pot, like, you're looking to get all the chips in, but you're out of position. You know there's a flush draw out there. Huh. Oh. Just soft spoken jam here from Orpin and that is a devastating development for <coughs> Kiatli who promptly puts his hand into the muck. The rich are getting richer here at the feature table. Orpin Kisachikoglu has been impressive. Really just playing very solid and Two? collecting tokens, as you call it. Yeah.
Drawing close to midnight local time here in Hoi An, Vietnam, Alina Jat and Randy Liu, pleased to have you with us. As we bring you coverage of day one of our 20K mystery bounty event here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. Nine off suit in the cutoff for Victor Kudinov. And raise open. Unfortunately, dominated. You don't really expect that when you flat from the smaller 9 7 suited. You think you're live. Xiang in there, and Antonius joins the mix. Three-way affair to the Ace-A-7 board. Not bad. Where that dominated 9-7 has now turned into the best hand. Of course, Xiong content to just check and see what the preflop Razor wants to do. I don't mind AC betting here, because if you look at the stack sizes of the blinds continuing, they're probably going to jam a lot of Ace hands that have an Ace in it, you know, like... He's queen, ace, jack, ace, ten, so we discount that a bit. So a C bet actually would get through a lot of the time. But once you get called here, it's usually you think you're up against the I, ace. I mean, the board is just so dry. You're also blocking a curious king high mm -hmm. yourself with the king nine. Exactly. You know it. Young checks. We've seen spots though where three barrelers in position can get middling or weak aces to find the muck, depending on run yeah. out and obviously other context, but uh, not the situation we have in our hands here. And the check back from Kudinov allows him to bink a king on the river, which gives him the best hand. Little bit of showdown value with the seven. Mm, Do you ever turn this into a bluff? I don't know. It's not. It's not a common play. What's well, worthy of thinking? Value betting the king. It'd be tough. I don't know. I think he could. <laughs> He's definitely capable. Chooses to check back the conservative line. Far be it from me to question a man of Kudinov's caliber. I don't think he thought he was going to lose the pot that often. He just didn't think. Who's going to pay him off? Yeah, what are you going to pay me off? Like a seven, six? You've got to be able to think of a hand that, that will pay you off if you're going to bother to risk chips on the end, that's for sure. Because you do open the action. It's always that curveball you bet and you get raised. Like, yeah, let's just avoid that situation yeah. altogether. It's so funny because think about how many times on the river you, myself, anybody out there listening has been guilty of exactly that, where you just kind of have this strange, not well thought out, instinctive, mm -hmm. ah, let me get value. You bet, then the raise comes in. You go, wait a minute, what was I thinking yeah. again? Why did I do this? Why did I do that? Instant regret, lamenting. It happens to the best of us. Nothing specific comes to mind, but I certainly feel as though it's it's happened at our feature tables here oh, at Triton. I'm, I'm sure it has, most certainly. Antonius getting a, a little Hold something. Hello, Mark. Go on, take a pass at it. Rubathon? Sounds accurate. That's what I was going with earlier. Looks like he stole Paul Pua's hoodie, by the way. <laughs> the boss hoodie. Yeah, you can't wear a boss hoodie to a Triton event unless you're Richard Young or Paul Pua. That's the rules. San Antonius jams and takes it down. Look at everybody on their phones. You know it's not all Triton Poker Plus activity <laughs> here. 
<laughs> we, we can't sell that story? No. My favorite was the way Nacho en route to the title in event number two, even in the middle of all in situations in big pots, was grinding the Instagram. <laughs> it is addictive. Mm -hmm. I've gone down that rabbit hole. Yeah. I it. always end on like exotic cats in Dubai or some girls that are like super out of my league. Like those are the two <laughs> destinations at the end of all of the the swiping as we see Kudanov opening with Ace King. This King Jack suited is going to look real good to Orpin. Looks like goes with the, the flat call. Yeah. You know, you gotta remember, he three bet earlier with King X suited, got jammed on by pocket 10, so he's like, all right, let's not waste a hand like King Jack You're suited. You're not calling PTSD on Orpin, are you? <laughs> You gotta have the memory of a goldfish out there when it comes to negative experiences. You just let it go, move on, do your thing. You're supposed to. We can't help it sometimes. Flopped it. Hits the side card on a jack high rainbow coordinated flop. This is the second time Ace King is underperformed here for Kudanov. You hate to see it, Ace King. Flat calm position, the middling cards. Just the speaks to that player, Orpin. It's pretty connected that we tempted the bet. Orpin likes to control the pot, I notice. It's a good habit to be in, by the way. Uh, there's not Controlling any, any the criticism pot. of it. No, no, not a criticism at all. Um, and obviously he balances his plays. Okay to that kind of tendency okay. to make it much more solid, fundamental, nice strategy. It is check again. Board's getting a little funny. Well, Ace King's not laughing. <laughs> Florida was straight out there. I'm just totally disconnected is Kudanov. I think Orpin might be able to sneeze at this one and take it. Oh, we are racing it? I was gonna be like, you have so many. Yeah. Like, he <laughs> just doesn't want to give up that free equity. Smooth. 80k. Gets it done. It's been smooth sailing for him. 1.5 million in chips. Sure has. Glassy waters beneath his hull. It's a top four stack. Joao Vieira of Portugal, currently the overall leader, 2.8 million. That guy loves online poker. I believe he's like number one on pocket fives at some point at least. Pedro Garagnani. Also MTT Pro. Yeah. Brazilian, 2.2 million. Second in chips, Gitis Lazanincas. Not too familiar with him. One and a half million, third place. And then it is Orpin. Kudanov with Ace Queen, hoping to fare better on this occasion. 0 for 2 with the Ace Kings. He's got a dusty customer and. Kiat Lee, referring to the holding, of course, not the player. <laughs> I see all that dust all over his clothing. <laughs> Ace King Deuce. Kiat. One of those spots where every now and again I'll just open fold it. <laughs> just like, come on, Victor, we both know you're C betting that 100% yeah. of the time. Just save us the trouble. I've seen it early stages, by the way. At our feature tables here in Triton, <laughs> and the dude always has a big hand, and is like, "Really, really?" <laughs> Trying to tilt your opponent. Yeah. Classic open fold.
pocket eight. You know what to say about that 40. in Asia. 40. Lucky hand. Yeah. On the opposite side of the superstition spectrum in Asian culture are the eights, fours, deemed unlucky. You notice there's no fourth floor or 14th floor in the elevator. Henry and I were riding yesterday. He pointed that out to me. And, of course, eights are considered symbols of prosperity and good fortune, I believe, in terms of... I feel ashamed not to know the exact answer wow. to that. Gosh. I've been exposed. By Ali. Randy, I know Iran is in Asia, but I don't think anybody thought that within the booth I would be the more Asian of the two of us since we see Peters with King Queen in the big blind. Making the call. But not hitting the right paint on a jack high board as the eights are still good for Xiang. Pretty dry board. Um, it is an earlier position open. Might change things a bit for Peters. Let's see how he responds. Small bet though. Gives you a chance to react in a way to put chips in. Let's see. Two overs, some backdoor straight prospects. No backdoor flush draws though. Just enough. Nice thing is when you check call this hand, you hit a queen or a king, it's pretty disguised, and people just barrel away, and you just chip up. Interesting one. That's the kind of stuff that Peters was hoping for as he picks up the open ender on the turn. Obviously, a king or a queen would have been much preferred as he still has just king high. So this is the type of card, though, that kind of goes check-check a lot for two weights. You want to get the showdown cheaply. Indeed, the eights check back, and the king high is unimproved. But is Peters maybe going to take a shot at this 180? I feel like he should. Um, he's up against an earlier position raise, so it's very ace x heavy. Jack x would bet the turn at a high frequency. Yeah, I tend to agree. So... And it's actually pretty hard for a pocket pair like eights, you look, five, you look sixes there. to call. Uh, yeah, you look it's great. the ace high yeah. specifically, cool, I feel yeah. like, that Lights, might play pot control. <laughs> the Broadway yeah. combos, right? Ace king, ace queen. Mm -hmm. Granted, Almost Peters not. is blocking yeah. both of those holdings with his king, queen, but. By checking, like, you'd never win the pot. Really, I just can't imagine a high card hand he beats. It's really hard to name one. Nice size, too. The big sizing because he thinks the Jack X would bet a turn a lot. It's be a sick call of two eights, though. It really would be, wouldn't it? Just trying to pick off, like, ace four, ace five, four, five, five, six. Oh, boy, the time bank isn't what Peters wants to see here. Oh, man. <coughs> Not going to pick up anything on that guy, though. No. Oh man, you sick, you sick Malaysian player just called him with two eights. That's OG. I stand in awe and admiration there. David Peters doesn't end up on the wrong end of those pots that often, but on this occasion, Xiang making an example out of that king queen with the eights. That was raw talent. That was yeah, how, how, sick. It's always so much more impressive when there's like no missed flush draws. Wow, 33 big blinds. Well done. Yeah. I mean, Xiang now looking down at ace 
Jack suited. I'm still just going over it in my head. There's really nothing about the line that Peters took that suggested that a Jack wasn't well within his range. It was well within his range, and that's what makes it even more amazing. It's when you get picked off when your bluff is so credible. I think he removed the 10s from the equation, the 10Xs of the world, yeah. given that Jack Deuce tray flop. And he removed all of the Deuce X and the 3X. And yeah. it just became kind of that specific, you've got the jack or you don't have the jack. Maybe some sets, deuces and threes, yes, right? Yes, of course. But those are tougher to make. You just got to tip your hat sometimes, yeah. man. Like, you just yeah. played it you good. You really do. I think even David Peters would give credit where credit is due in that spot, obviously. Of course. Displeased with the outcome. But... Here he finds himself with two sevens on very similar board texture to that of a pot of go. Two checks in front of the preflop razor, Xiang. 55K follow through. Let's see if sevens wants to Call one off. Stack is dwindling. Sub 20 bigs. David's going to peel and ace 10 off starts to look less attractive as Kudinov dispenses it and leaves the boys to play round two. That's a good card for David Peters. Great card for him. Yeah, it's really also the type of card where someone doesn't multi-barrel you, mm -hmm. knowing that you're unlikely to fold. I'd say short of a seven, that's probably the card he would pick out of the deck, right? Maybe offsuit, queen of diamonds Yeah, would be preferred as Xiang checks back and binks a jack on the river. Power so a little dose of run good. Power position, you get free cards way more often. And it goes check, check on the turn. Mm -hmm. This is just one of those spots where you tank, check, say, please don't bet. No, is he thinking about something? Oh, check. A check feels pretty good here. Thought maybe a block bet sizing out of the sevens, Randy? Or? Cross his mind. Then he's like, well, block bet chips are pretty important for my 16 bit right. line stack. That's fair. And the sizing, 105,000 into this 250. Great sizing. Targeting those mid pocket pairs sure. that reflect the small blind. And as played, this hand looks suspect with some frequency. It does because, you know, Queen's got a lot of incentive to bet the turn in order to get all the stack in by the river. Sean probably, yeah, Peters might not think. Good lay down, discipline. Both players just playing excellent. Are you surprised to see those sevens hit the muck there as Xiong hauls it in? Maybe. When he sees it on the stream, he's going to feel cheated out of 105K <laughs> there. <laughs> and so with that, 14 levels are complete here in event number three, the 20K, eight max mystery bounty where Orpen Kisuchikoglu has climbed the ladder to up on over 1.5 million. Good for a top five stack. Patrick Antonius, the shorty, as we Part ways with the featured table and welcome you back into our broadcast booth here at the Hoi Anna Golf Resort in Hoi An, Vietnam. Alina Jad and Randy Liu, just moments away from sending you to a break. But before we do, Randy, let's talk a little bit about Orp. And I was really impressed with what we saw out of him during that frame. Yeah, um, you know, he's got he got multiple knockouts, right? He played really solid. He's not too out of line, um, knows how to puck control a bit and really... You don't need to play fancy to win at this game, and 
that's a good demonstration there. Yeah, unfortunately, of, two hours. of course, those knockouts don't come with the envelopes <laughs> that he was looking for in this bounty event. But as I part ways with all of you and bring Henry Kilbane into the booth, the two of you will have an opportunity to cover the now bounty-laden portion of the program. So we will step aside for a few minutes, but when we return, continuing coverage into the wee hours here of event number three. Don't go anywhere. Back in a bit. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker. There's a really nice connection for Kiat Lee, top pair 35. on the turn. 
And with a second check in front of him, he is going to bet half pot exactly. Feeling pretty good about that nine. Now ace jack feels like he kind of underplayed his hand, but that board is pretty connected. So if he's calling here, he's going to be trying to pick off 10x, two diamonds, 8x. I mean, there is a decent amount of draws he's got to pick off. The question is, would a river bet come as well? He's interested. Slides him in. Jack. Oh, and the jack rolls right off there for Andy Kim. And is he going to try to check it here just to avoid maybe getting blown off of this hand in the event that Kiatli were to put a raise in? It looked Ooh. like he wanted to bet, didn't it? But then he came with the check, and I wonder if Kiat's going to make anything of this. Sometimes you see people stack the chips and check. You might think it's they're trying to get the showdown, and that might make Kiat Lee think his nine is good and it's worthy of a value bet. And the jack is not doesn't really connect with the check calling type player. That's why he's value betting here. What did he bring out? Thirty five again, I think. Was it? No, not two. Oh, I don't think he's two chips. I don't think he's bet. Did, did he put it out there? Okay, yeah. Forgive me. There is a bet. Yeah, he's gonna be surprised to see this ace jack. Yeah. 105 into 140. Very fortunate river there for Andy Kim. I don't know if you see that little patch. It says bluff catch, what he just <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely that extra layer of strategy right now since you can't collect the bounties yet to accumulate a bigger stack because just, okay, let's just say you play your tournament as normal. You get to the part where you can collect some of the bounties, which is half the prize pool, and you don't have a stack to collect any bounties. You're basically put in a buy-in to play for half the prize pool. So it's not advantageous for you. Now's the time to try to build the stack, maybe push some edges a little harder than normal. Because if you can have stacks that cover players at your table, now you can start collecting that other half of the prize pool. All good points. And all good cards here is Orpin Kisachikoglu, the Turk, with two queens. And there against Sam Greenwood's ace seven and a disastrous flop for Orpin. Navigating here of two queens is actually quite interesting. See if he goes for a cutesy bet or maybe a check to side. It's hard to get called by worse, but then you feel obligated to kind of bet this flop with your bluff, so the mixed strategy makes sense. Check is the option. Greenwood going to check back the trip aces. Trappy. Very much so. Of course, not impossible for Orpin to have a bigger ace. Yeah, and Brynwood is probably thinking, well, it's hard for me to get three streets of value of a, against a hand that doesn't have an ace in it, so might as well put some deception in there. Mm -hmm. Get two streets at most, usually. There's only like one main card that Orpin's scared of is the king if in terms of giving free equity to someone, so... It's okay for him to just keep checking here, maybe and do some bets, contain the pot. On the other hand, for Sam Greenwood, one would imagine that here on the turn, chips going in wouldn't be a terrible idea. Yeah, it's about thinking... Well, he Checks back, though. He's playing the, the slow, slow play. Going Backdoor for spades coming in. Maybe just thinking he can induce... Orpin to bet on the end. Yeah, he might think Orpin's hand's quite weak, too. He would think that he would want to bet for value at some point if he had something, but checking twice seems weak. But it's actually pretty strong right here, two queens. I think Orpin will go for values from his point of view soon. If someone's going to stab, they would have stabbed by the turn, so. Half pot. 
Greenwood definitely has under repped his hand. The but question. also, is there really... Is there value is there in raising? Yeah. With backdoor spades having shown up, what are the hands that are going to call you if you do put in the race? And I think that's exactly what was on Sam's mind as he flats and gets shown the trip aces. And I think Orpin, despite being disappointed by the outcome, is going to be pleased with the way that he chose to play that pot. Yeah, he easily could have lost um, two bets in this pot and lost more. And, you know, if you're new to the show, you might be thinking, well, why... All around. To boss on the button. Min raise open off of Jack nine. Orpin with King eight. Defense. Standard fanfare. Looks standard to me. Top pair against a gut shot straight draw, courtesy of the King 10 6 flop. Inside straight draw, worthy of a bet. Put some pressure on. Boss tends to agree. King 8 is not really the hand you see check raise top pair too often, especially on this kind of board. I think you'd run into kicker issues a lot if you get continued. Keep it small, keep it controlled. Bossman can maybe fire in multiple barrels if he wants to. He's unimproved on the turn after Orpin called and checked once more. It is reasonable for him to continue betting Jack 9. He could put a lot of pressure on 10x, 6x. You know, some straight draws that would have check called that likely wouldn't, wouldn't call a turn bet. So he's betting 45K. Bet is targeting those unpaired hands as well as those bottom card, bottom pairs. Definitely not King X that he's trying to fold out. Still top pair. Navigate by calling. Seems ideal. And unimproved is Paul Fua on the river as Orpin checks one last time with the best hand. 181 out there. There's a lot in there. The runout's just so dry here. Oh, he, he's looking at it. Has he got enough chips to put it on? 158K. <laughs> and he waves the white flag. Probably going to be pleased to have made that decision, although who knows whether or not Orpin would have gotten suspicious. No, huh? draw. On Triton Tour, but another thing that, in addition to those ace-five suiteds, has come into favor. A lot of the big series have added a mystery bounty to their schedules. Mm -hmm. It's been really... Yeah, it's uh, really caught Well fire. received from, by Very players. Very well received, you know? Like, it's also nice for players who aren't, like, seasoned pros, you know, being able to have that little gamble lottery effect, right? Sure. Um, it's fun. Like, you can still profit even if you bust out of the money, just bust a couple people. No, it, it really is exciting. I think the bounty is one of the greatest things they created, and the mystery bounty just made it that much better. The mystery aspect of it, really <laughs> wonderful. Our title sponsor, GG Poker, Scott Ball, in one of their mystery bounty oh, events, yeah. pulled the $1 million envelope, and I don't think he even realized it, as Greenwood certainly isn't going to have to be told what the bounty is here for this Jack-10, one that he shares with Kudinov in a three-way affair where Andy Kim has the gut shot straight draw that could really play spoiler to both of these trips. 
Lines checking over to the opener, Kudinov, who obviously will be very happy to follow through for 27K. Coming from the small blind, you probably will see Greenwood strongly consider check calling rather than check raising because there's still the big blind to act. If you were to raise, you might kick out the big blind who's got a hand that's drawing very, very slim. So I like this smooth call here by Greenwood. Discipline lay down. I think he doesn't like to see the bet in the call. More likely to continue if one had folded. I thought maybe with backdoor clubs, a green? Yeah. there would be a little a bit more smoothie. interest for the gutter. Obviously, straight draws on paired boards are always approaching. a yeah. bit of a concern. But like you said, you've got two other players involved green. in this pot. so <laughs> It's a good point. Um, I think the main reason is, I'll let them know how it is. when someone else calls, it's harder to take it away if you don't hit. So you know, you're forced to hit the pot. Yeah. Whereas if okay. a plane heads up, you're sea betting some air, check, check, turn, no one hits, I bet I win. Good point. Hey. Kudinov, by the way, picks up the diamond it. draw. I already marked this one up as a chop pot. No, 21% equity for Kudinov, the only player out of these two holdings that has a shot at the scoop. Interesting Yet, line here. Yeah, Greenwood choosing to lead for 40K. Yeah, trying to confuse his opponent. And Victor going to play pot control. Flat call, and now both of these guys are thinking Just this pop. is gin and tonic on the river. Tens full of jacks. Right, just in case I'm up against ace 10 and king 10. Well, no problem anymore. Um, about the turn lead, I think he wanted to kind of make it the most chance he can get three bets in. Yeah. Sometimes people bet twice, pair check back the river. So by leading, he's created this situation to get more chips. I like to see these kind of new, newish creative lines. I think it's um, really, the game's just always evolving. Tournament after tournament, these players are just pretty crafty. Let's see what Greenwood's gonna do. All sorts of different bet sizes seem logical. Got 230k back with 204 in the middle, and really, the thought on his mind is, how can I best get all of it in there? Yep. It's kind of does he bet? Trying to get, trying to get his opponent to hero call. Um, does he check to induce from two diamonds, like eight seven diamonds, eight nine diamonds? These hands probably would blast away. He knows his lead on a turn is peculiar. Might confuse his opponent. Seems like he wants to bet. Is that all of it? Snap. Yeah. Wow. Oh. What's that hit? Wow. What a hit. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Good day. How thrilled do you think Kudinov was when Green was so all in the snap call and he's like, ah, showers. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Chop it up. He I turned it up so about. fast, like, don't bother showing you your just hand. Two times. <laughs> And, uh, not sure whether or not you're able to listen in on the announcements from Luca Vivaldi there, but he is confirming that it is at the start of level 15 that the mystery bounties will come into play. As Slazinski in the cutoff with ace queen. All in. Just rip it in. Wow. 20 blinds. Interesting. Try to make people think you're gambling it up. Maybe it'll splash around. It's interesting. Two queens for Andy Kim. Yeah, that's going to be a very easy call for him. Kiat Lee's got an ace in the muck. Finds its way there easily. The bigger point to be made, of course, Important is the fact idea. that that's one less ace available to Slazinski. Ace of spades, baby. Who obviously Thank you. hates having the Queen of Diamonds shared. Here's my one time. Just one time. 
Use your one time. A little early, but why not? That is the remaining coin. Diamond. Backdoor diamonds and some yeah, Broadway stuff is Just available split. as top set has a stranglehold on Listen. top pair. Yeah. The six of yeah. hearts yeah. is not going to be yeah. Slazinski's one time, and he will ship the rest of his chips forward and over to Andy Kim. Open jamming 20 bit. A six off into the muck. No surprise there. Queen six suited. It's, a, it's an interesting one. Feeling good after knocking out Slazinski's ace queen with queens. And he makes it 27,000. Got that big stack. Obviously looking to put it to work here. You talked about wanting to run up a big stack into the bounty period because then you can really afford to spin the wheel, take some chances against the shorter stacks. Yeah. You notice people are playing probably a little bit looser ranges than normal too, just not minding increasing that stack. It's just so much more valuable for that phase of the tournament. Spades. Yeah, not one but two spots as both blinds defended and both have picked up flush draws. Advantage Orpen, of course, with Queen-9 and... Believe it or not, that queen nine high is actually the best hand on its own, unimproved, as both he and Milo Skribic checking over to Andy, and he's gonna try to represent this board. 34K investment. I don't fault him. You know, he raised an early position. He can easily represent an ace X, but he's gonna get resistance. And depending on how Skribic wants to play this, it could get pretty dicey, right? He might just see a bet and a call, go for some big check raise, thinking you know, he got the wheel going on. Mm -hmm. From his point of view as right now, it does kind of look like someone's got an ace, but you know what? Gamble it up. Make a play. That's exactly what Milos Skrbic has done as he jams for 191,000. Of course, this is going to be a very easy decision for Kim, but back over to Orpen. He does have Milos well covered. Asks for the count. I'll tell you this, Holly. If we were in a bounty phase of the tournament, he would definitely be calling Queen Nine suited. The overlay. Yes, the bounty is an overlay, but here you're just getting chips. It's different. Well, to be fair, getting those chips in just a few short 30 minute levels are going to be worth a lot in terms yeah. of bounty hunting, but... Or if you call and lose, you become the hunted. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. One nine one. Yeah, one nine one. Using time bank. You want to think about how many weaker flush draws you could be up against. Definitely exists. Occasionally you're up against 5-6. Knowing your player helps a lot. Figure out what the best decision is. Right. And ultimately, Orpen does settle on the call, and you see Milos recognizing the devastating nature of the hand he's up against. He does have that wheel draw. It's not the worst, 28%. Jack and the five are both live. As we head to the turn, there's the spade, and it's the end of the road Ooh. for the Serbian, Milo Skrbic, who hit the wheel on the river. Take that seven of spades and put it somewhere else, he's thinking. Hello, think, new guy. I think that's my favorite way to describe not running great. I, uh, yeah, I took a break off of crushing for the last couple of years as we bring a crusher. Thirty-one. Into the streets here in Patrick are, Antonius. Like some people, 24. It, like there were people now playing these things who like. And no here, sooner like is he welcome to the feature table than he opens to. Like when did you start playing? Twenty-four k with Ace Jack and the timing's bad. Greenwood. Look at from the app. Ace Queen. Uh, I don't know. 
I think it's around, well, we can calculate. I mean, some people grew up watching Patrick Antonius play. Sure. He's been around a minute. Well, many minutes. Greenwood off of 374K, announces 60,000. Three betting. Thank you, Kim. Very warm welcome back to the Huana Golf Resort and Casino. Welcome to the broadcast booth for one last time this evening is event number three, an event that I know a lot of the players had their eyes on and the fans at home have been excited for due to the fact that there are going to be some insane bounties up for grabs. We're going to give more details on that. He's Randy Liu. I'm Henry Kilbane. Randy, I've been away for the better part of the last three, four levels of the coverage of this event. Can you just fill me in briefly on what I've missed and what the storyline is here in event number three? Well, the main thing is that you actually weren't able to collect bounties um, up until now. Right. Um, you know, because there's going to be people rebuying and stuff. So right now it's more of the building the stack phase because now that we can collect bounties starting at the next level, you kind of want a big stack, right? You want to cover the table, be able to take everyone's bounty. The short stacks are going to be just waiting around, hoping to double up. Uh, and that's a big portion of the tournament right now. So we're about to head into the phase where those decisions, maybe the pre-flopped all-in decisions, are going to change slightly given the fact that there is now that bounty effect in play. We're going to have a very different uh, dynamic and style okay. of poker coming up. We're going to have people going to make looser calls, trying right. to see flops with people who have short stacks and try to bust them to collect those mystery bounties that are worth a lot of money. And what does it mean for them shorter stacks of the world? Are they going to have to pay a little bit more snug when it comes to the chips that they're getting in because of what you're saying that people are going to cool them off a little bit lighter? So they're going to value shove um, a wider range of hands, knowing that, that people are going to call off, like, say, suited broadways right. and things like that. So, And then the, the suited connectors go down in value as, well, bluffing is not going to work as well. Well, I can tease that the top bounty has been confirmed, the whopping 250,000 as we throw it down to the main stage. Jao Vieira leading the final 55 here late in the evening on day day three. Randy, I'm losing day track three. already. It's only after been three days. <laughs> losing track after just three days, but it is one of the most accomplished Portuguese players of all time. Javria way out in front. Look at that, Randy, 108 big blinds. I guarantee you this much, that man gonna be going bounty hunting, especially given that the top bounty prize is worth more than a third place finish, almost equivalent to coming second in the tournament overall. 250,000 top bounty. Javier leading the pack here. Another recognizable name, Laszlo Boitash, currently sat in second. Omaha Farol's one of the most accomplished PLO players out here showing it, showing us rather that he can get it done in the No Limit Hold'em streets. Justin Saliba, Mike Takayama, one of the most accomplished Philippine players of all time. Nice to see him out here at a Triton stop. I know he is a frequent crusher on the APT tour. Timothy Adams down on 17, Moonho Xiao on 12, and well, Moonho Xiao, given that those bounties have now come into effect. Big target on his yeah, back, I'll tell you yeah. that. You know that everyone is going to be watching your every move and gunning for those bounties. Now, Randy, bounties, 53 bounties in total. Total bounty prize pool, 1,790,000. Number of 250,000 bounties, just one. Then there are three 100K bounties, five 50K bounties, 11 30,000 bounties, and then 33 min bounties, which equate to the buy-in, 20,000, which is kind of unique, to be honest with you. A lot of the bounty prize pools that I've been made aware of, typically in the form of, say, a 5K buy-in, have, you know, 500 bounties, yeah. 1K bounties, but this, the min bounty, is a buy-in. So that means players should be going for bounties 
even more, right? Saints. Sometimes we main cash tournaments, you just get 2x to buy in, but like you can just get multiple bounties and already outperform those tournaments. Wow. Bounty hunting starting now. Yeah, this is this table is set up for Jalvera here, right? He's got a bunch of short stacks at the table, even covers the guy in second place. And look, he's opening up Jack Do suited and putting himself in situations where the big blind's going to defend. Um, you know, <coughs> like a 12, 13 big blind stack. Can easily stack them. And he is it's just one of those guys who plays all the tournaments online, all the different sites. So much experience. Was definitely pocket five number one at some point. <laughs> maybe still is. <laughs> I mean, like, gosh. Resume. Massive. And it's good to see him out here in the Trent event. Uh, just over 6'10". Straight yeah. off the bat. We know he's going to be well versed in bounty tournaments as well. Flops a piece. Does indeed. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Shiva Katori over on the Triton YouTube channel saying, non-stop Triton action. I'm loving it. I'm glad you are enjoying the show, Shiva. Thank you, obviously, tuning in. And shout out to all of you. You know, the last three days, a lot of support in the terms of viewership, but also the engagement in the chat, Randy. We've been entertained. We've had our fair share of back and forth with the viewers at home. As always, feel free to fire any questions that you may have in the chat. Randy and I always do our best to you know, fill you guys in on... You know, look, if you keep it clean, we'll keep it clean. If you want to talk politics and those kind of things, save that for Ali, all right? You know, let him do the dirty work. Vieira continuing for 75,000 on the 10-7 deuce. Interesting spot for Saliba, facing a bet straight off the bat against the cutoff open. What's Options to check the raise. It's the sizing that's uh, giving him some concern, right? It's a three big blind C bet into his 22 big blind stack. Chuck raising would be a heftier price than normal. Is this the type of draw that you don't mind check raise folding, Randy, in the form of like, look, you've got eight high, try and take it down right here, right now. If our opponent comes over the top, we have a very easy decision in the form of a fold. Yeah, I also wouldn't expect to have to check raise fold too often. Um, when there's no Great flush point. draw on the board, the guy who is betting tends to kind of either slow play or just kind of figure out what's going on. So you can kind of check raise expecting to get a turn card most of the time. So he did tank check raise. jalvier has got bottom pair, back draw flush draws. Curiosity, not the bounty, very important. So he definitely cannot be folding jack deuce to a check raise and just hits it. Well, very easy turn decision now for Vieira. Should Saliba continue to fire 455 in the middle, 400 behind for the American Pro? And Jack is an overcard, which makes you want to bet a little bit more often than not. Stack size kind of awkward. Like, his draw is not a good draw, so he doesn't really want to just push it in and sure. be drawing almost dead. Justin Saliba, one of my picks of players to keep an eye on over the next 12 months. He's been on an absolute tear post-COVID. First try in series for him here in Vietnam. 0 for 2 so far, but showing up consistently. All of the Hold'em events, here he is firing again on this turn. And see, byproduct of the comfort of the commentary booth, we can see the whole cards. This not going to work this time around for Saliba. Yeah, Giles think, wondering, should he jam now? Yeah, I like this jam. Uh, he doesn't think he's up against 8-6 high, but like, in a bounty situation, you kind of want to get your opponent all in so that you can collect a bounty, right? You can't have them leave one chip behind or, or some kind of scare card rolls off and, you know, you don't get to stack them. Yeah, that's a great point, Randy. That old one chip behind. Yeah, that's it's like really dynamic. Annoying. So you do try to get people in on turns if you can. 
Max James in the chat saying, is Patrick Antonis still in? He is indeed. Currently way down the ranks, sat in 54th, just 13 place? bigs. But if there's anything I know about Patrick Antonis is he is more than capable, capable rather, of spinning it up. And talking of spinning it up, Randy, you can qualify for Triton events only at GG Poker. And I often find myself having to spin it up due to the fact that a bit of a station in the PLO streets. You know, sometimes you get to the river with, you know, a weak two pair and your opponent clicks pot and you just get curious. Curiosity killed the cat. Curiosity killed the career of Henry Kilbane. Those of you out there looking to play some poker alongside this stream, fire up some GG. Let us know how you're getting on. As always, curious to hear what you guys are playing. Push those threes in. If you got something reasonable and you cover them, I don't want to call here a lot, right? You can pick up a minimum buy and back, ace five. Yeah, that's the crazy thing is a bounty is a guaranteed buy and back. Yeah. See how Adam's actually thinking about it with nine do suited? Does cover. 209 to five. Just. Good yeah, I'll be completely honest with you, Randy, and maybe someone in the chat can actually help me with this. When it comes to the math involved with these decisions, I am <laughs> down the darkest of alleys in terms of, of the optimal strategy. Um, so I'm looking at this in just that it's a 12 big blind jam, but I know some of the... Uh, the GTO wizards out there have run the numbers and they know the math a lot better than I do. So yeah, feel free to educate me uh, in the chat. I'd love to get a better understanding of, of how a decision like that. See, I look down at the nine deuce and I think easy fold for 12, but it looked a lot closer than meets the eye maybe. Yeah, it'll come down to, well, just different type of bounty tournaments with different rewards, right? So this one, we, you'd have to, do a quick math on it. What's the expectation of how much each envelope is going to be, right? And then you convert that to the amount of blinds. Uh, there's definitely some uh, mathematics you can do to kind of run down. I don't know these pros have, have done their homework, right? They've got a rough calculation that, oh, this many big blinds equals this many chips. It adds to the pot. Then you do the pot odds on whether to call. I'm going to go out on a limb and say they have a much better idea than just a rough idea. <laughs> These guys... Uh, it's hard to do the exact calculation um, very quickly with, with shot clock. That makes so. sense. Elliot saying, GTO, if you cover, you call. There we go. <laughs> Simplified yeah. strategy. If you cover, you Why call. Why did they even talk? There we go. Love that. Well, Takayama, one of Philippines' best. Top two. See some people in the chat filling us in on what they're playing over on GG. I thought you were going to tell me they've got like 10 different theories on how to calculate. No, Jan wrote 2712 over on Twitch saying exactly what Randy is saying. Uh, one false step saying bounty is worth 34k if it was 10k bounty prize pool per entry. And Coolerfish coming in with some honestly overwhelming uh, game theory here. Math says that <coughs> if you lose your chips, you can't win a bounty. It's true. That is some profound. <laughs> well, I mean, your, your tournament life has a, a lot of value here, right? Because it gives you the opportunity to play for the other half of the prize pool. Oh, I, I, lo I love it when you defer to chat for, for any anything. These guys always keep me on my toes, you know? 
Always needling me at any given opportunity. You guys, come on, take a day off, all right? I'll just give in Randy the chance to come in here and, you know, drop some knowledge. Got some Laszlo fans in the chat. Barrett saying Laszlo top five most handsome poker players. Okay. That behind, behind who? Yeah, who's the other four? Henry Kilbane. You're not a poker player. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. Friendship gone. <laughs> Alright, chat. Base 10 for Korea Seal. Awkward stack size. Five K. <laughs> Elliot saying Michael Owen tier analysis. Love that reference. Well played, sir. So people asking if Weasel was still in. He's also known as Mark Rubberfan. Yes, indeed. He's in with a very healthy thirty-two bigs. Your stack. Yeah. We should be seeing Jal calling pretty wide from the big blind, especially if you want to defend the big blind against the, the very short stacks, the ones you can get in easily post flop. Because like the middling stacks, the 20, the 30 big blind stacks, they're, they're hard to stack post flop. So, you know, you want to target these guys. And say straight draw is a piece for Jal Vieira to continue. Up against the 14 big blind open, sorry, the open from the 14 big blind stack rather, had he faced any aggression on the flop. Vieira may be somewhat confused at the check back That's from the under the gun back. range. The king 8 4, a board texture expects CO to maybe continue with range with. Maybe fearing the traps of the world. Take one more. Jal Vera has hit the straight. Well, Jal Vera Vieira has not only hit the straight, has sizable chip lead in this field. 145,000 out there. Now, Jal doesn't think his opponent's very strong. He's checked all through. Well, he's just going to go for all of it. Hoping his opponent interprets it as weakness and just hero calls. He knows it's important to try to get to collect those bounties. Some leveling going on. Yeah, it makes sense, right? 145,000 in there. 2x pot, river jam. If your opponent's calling pot, he's calling a 2x jam. Yeah. How would that bounty in play? Vieira just... Correctly deducing, he wants to go for it all. Nice 10, he's given it some thought. A bit confused on the way the hand's being played out. Why his opponent would just go all in all of a sudden. Is this just like a one spade holding? Does he want to be a hero with ace high? Doesn't, ace 10 in the mark, Vieira. Chipping up to 3.2 million now. Nice. Draco Infinity over on Twitch saying, I'm making an early prediction and saying that Linus is going to win the main this year. Okay. That's, uh, there's going to be a lot of players in the main. It's definitely possible. There's a more than 0% chance there's that he more. wins the main. Yeah. The same way that there was a more than 0% chance that we only had two commentators coming into today, given that Ali Najjar decided it was a smart idea to go swimming in red flag waters. You called him a Persian mermaid? Honestly, I don't know what to call him anymore. <laughs> Timothy Adams, ace 10. See how he wants to maneuver <laughs> this bounty part of the tournament. What, 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 what's getting you? 
the lap this time. Oh, I don't oh. know if I can actually repeat this, oh. but Tom Mull, uh, well played, sir. If you're calling 16 bigs, you're calling 22. That made me chuckle. Very well played. Adams. Open rips it. Let's see. What? Strategies do change, and people are, normally you'll see deuces hit the muck here, but because of the bounty aspect, a lot of incentive to call, right? Getting that overlay of a minimum of one buy in. Let's see out here. He's three suited. Problem is, he doesn't cover anyone. No. It's a good start. <laughs> Are we playing, you know, 20k here, or is this just a 10 pound nightly <laughs> down the <laughs> casino in the UK? Flipping for Adam's bounty. Adam's needs to improve, and well, improve he does on the King 10 5. So invested. <laughs> These two will be playing some football tomorrow morning, but for now. Boytash looking for a deuce to eliminate Timothy Adams and claim that bounty. No dice. Six of clubs rolling off, and Adams scores a sizable double. Randy, up to 30 bigs. Yeah, that's going to put him in a uh, position to actually collect some bounties because there's multiple short MVP. stacks yeah. here, like Saliba, Ciao. Um, Sashi's got a little bit less chips, too. Having chips is just, we know it's important in poker, but like now it means you have access to the other half of the prize pool. Huh? I shove 14 and a half. 14 and a half, maybe. 14.4. Tom saying that Weasel has played more 10 pound live rebuys in the UK. It must be written in the stars. Well, him and I both. Saliba. His turn. Another gun for 11. Oh, what a the timing. Heat. This is, it feels so good in a bounty tournament. The heat. Aces. Someone jams in front of you. Down to the bounty part of the tournament. Gets the double. In the very next hand, Adams looks down at two red aces and an open jam Time from Saliba. In, hoping someone overcalls and them having less. And don't forget, Randy, there's action behind as well. A lot of action behind. It's the first two positions. Um. Adams with the jam over the top. Can I get a count? Oh boy. Oh. Vieira. Two bounties up for grabs. Has the chips, Randy, to go after this, you know? Yeah, normally this would be a snap pull, but if he thinks that Adams is going to play lighter to get Saliba's bounty, it starts to be a play that's oh. worth considering. Oh, He's going to go well. for it. Three-way all in. Someone grab a screenshot Damn. of Vieira, the bounty hunter. Yeah, one run into right? top of range. Huh? Yeah, the green one. Five, two, five. Adams in great shape. 82% favorite to go from 14 bigs to one of the tournament chip leaders. If he can hold here with the aces, we'll move up to third in chips. So <laughs> Vieira optimistic. And well, <laughs> that board leaves him drawing to runner runner. 953. <laughs> Vieira saying he'll take a 10. No dice. Deuce on the turn. Leaves Vieira dead. Saliba was drawing to a chop. Six of clubs on the river. Will seal Saliba's fate. More importantly, Randy, Timothy Adams. First bounty collection on this feature table. We know he's guaranteed at least 20,000. 
Currently the most profitable player in the tournament. This, this was afraid of that of time bank range. Time bank range, important. Oh, I mean, you gotta think about it. I actually, I was actually thinking more like... Uh, Colorful? I'm um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like you had one left. I was like, I mean, okay. It's, uh, it's yeah. likely that it's... Ten, that yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. You gotta love I the know. high stakes needles, man. Fiera is saying, you know, tough spot. The are big. Have to decide between call or fold. I'll fold. Sick, sick hand yeah. for Adams. Well, smart to slide one in. Table got tough. Again, rather quickly. McPoyfin making a wild appearance. A few people asking about the time back from Adams. Was he Hollywooding? No, I think he was deciding whether to jam or just call. And also doesn't want to make it look like he can't wait to put all yeah. of his chips into the middle. Take a bit of time. You know, it would be a genuine decision. There are a lot of close spots given the positions. Yeah, and you want someone who's got a close spot to maybe make a mistake, read it incorrectly. With Boyfin, first hand at the feature table. Open jamming his 13 bigs and Masashi has him covered. Going to get out of the way. Discipline. Yeah. Adams now. Got some numbers to crunch. Seems like a guy who knows the math of this. Let's see. So he's got 1.8 million. Wow, massive stack now. Yeah, I mean, with that, he moves to second in chips, Randy. It is style tournament really speeds things up as people splash around going for those bounties. 325? Right. Yeah. Dominated. Makes the call. There we go. Get your notepads out for anyone wondering whether Jack 3 is a call for 13 with the bounties in play. What a slow Boyfriend in. Great shape. I have to think. Hearts needed for Adams. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Boy, Vitsy. Why, why did I sign up for this? Look, Boyfin. Regretting his decision to take up tournament poker as the Ten of Hearts gives Adams nine outs once. Oh, oh wow. the dirty back door, Randy. Oh, Running yeah. hearts after McBoyfin flopped top pair, leaving Adams drawing to runner runner. And in three row. hands in a row. <laughs> Timothy Adams goes from the one of the ball. shortest stacks yeah, in the yeah. tournament yeah. to tied for the chip lead right, with Jao Vieira and claims two bounties in the space Where's of three this? hands. <laughs> Tomorrow? <laughs> Well, who said only online poker is rigged, Randy? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy is hot. What a, what a silly format. So. Hi, you got super cooler and then. I mean. Am I, am I hearing a lot of complaining out there about the format? Are these guys pretending like they They're don't pretending. enjoy gambling? It's fun. Oh. It's really oh. fun when you're winning. No, oh, no. what a silly format I have to call with Jack 3 suited and win at least 20,000. Grow up, Timothy. It's the ultimate, like, DJ tournament style. It's just <laughs> splashing around. It's fun, though. It really is. It really is. I mean, not only opening the packets, but playing for them. Strategy is very, very different. Yeah, I see a few people in the chat asking about the bounties. So once again, just to reiterate the oh, bounty fine. prize pool, uh, one, 1, 1,790,000 collected, 53 bounties in total, top bounty of 250,000. Then there are three 100k bounties, 550k bounties, 1130k bounties, and 33 20,000 bounties. So the min bounty being a buy-in, and they will all be drawn tomorrow. Look at this. Laszlo actually has a solid stack, lays down a6, dominating ace4 suited. Because it was about, 
30 big blind jam. Blind versus blind. And you're going to see these more ex excessive jams because, well, I either win your chips or you call, I've got some equity, and I collect your bounty from the bigger stacks, especially blind versus blind. We don't, don't have to worry about other players waking up with a hand. So you either win the hand or you don't, it's a flip, is what you're saying? I'm saying you either win the hand and win some chips or you win the opportunity to collect a bounty. More goods and bads. A few people asking as well whether the bounties will be drawn on stream. I don't have the answer to that. I I'm sure we're not going to miss it to some extent. We're going we're to give it some action. You, you're digging yourself a hole. <laughs> I want it to be stated for the record for the production crew and for the decision makers that I am not going on the record saying what Randy just said. However, what I will say, and I don't mind going on the record, is, is if you follow us over on Instagram... I promise you <laughs> that there will be bounty drawing footage tomorrow once the bounties start getting pulled out. Well, we are going to pull the bounties, I've heard, after we finish the tournament. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, I'll just yeah. keep it. Oh, so we're sweating this all the way Do down. We always keep we're sweating this all the way down, yeah. Do we always keep ours, or we can just randomly pick which one? That's interesting. Never heard of that format before. Because it kind of adds to the excitement, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. is the 250k yeah. going to be in play by the time I get to pull my bounties? Well, this jam is for about 10 big blinds. Someone can get I'm some kind of piece. We're going to see a call. Takayama's got queen 10. For a count. Under the gun jam. Has to be somewhat concerned that his queen ten is maybe dominated. So the position jam. Could get your bounty back. He's gonna go for it. Queen ten. Gang gang. Mike Takayama, one of the most accomplished players coming out of the Philippines here in Vietnam, going bounty hunting. Let's have two live cards and well. Bounty coming. CO drawing two running aces. After Takayama flop strips. Oh. Hang on a minute, seven I do apologize. Seven. Oh, seven. seven. Yeah, four up. CO turning an inside <laughs> gut shot. Three apart. Oh. Takayama boating up on the Queen of Hearts River, collecting. At least a 20,000 bounty in the process as we lose our Korean yep. players. What's uh, uh, Mike Takayama. Good one. Yeah, two point something. Yeah, two point something. He loses there or loses here? Oh, you look too bad. <laughs> <laughs> straight. Oh, really? 99A0. Why don't you click the app and save yourself the headache? No phones. You're all these phones. What you got then? Nine seventy five. Nine nine eight zero. Dropping like flies at this feature, Randy. Late in the evening. And that's courtesy of the format of the tournament. Yeah, we did say that was going to be the case. I believe we came back with 55 when I returned to the booth and we're down to 44 in the space of an orbit. You play 1.8? 2.3. 2.3? This is 1.7 by itself. very important to look at the positions of the short stacks out there. There's Masashi, big blind. It's going to make you want to call a bit more because you, you want you him to come along. Four. Two, four, thank you. Yeah. What the 
flop either player was looking for. Vieira with the best of it, ace of clubs in hand. These two, first and second in chips, by the way, in the entire tournament as things stand. Yeah. Kind of unfortunate, if you fine. will. Yeah, you can't really collect that bounty. A mini bet from Timmy Adams. You're not thrilled to see a bet base jack on his four texture, but for the minimum, and you got the backdoor ace of clubs, two overs. Might be one of those spots where you call and see what happens. Oh, he does. Randy, nine of diamonds rolling off. Now giving Adams an open ender. Vieira picking up a gut shot. 200,000 in the middle. Giles thinking about taking the lead. Shouldn't be too many six X's in Timothy Adams' hijack range. Nazza, agreeing with you on that one, Randy, comes out firing in the form of 40%, 80,000 into 20,000 on this Nine of Diamonds turn. Still has a draw to a super straight. Should a jack roll off, he could scoop a huge pot against a 10. Well, both players missing their draws. Vieira, rivering top pair. 360 in the middle. Does he now try? Blocker value bet is in play. Check induce from 10x. Yeah, okay, now beating some of the over pairs, 10 through kings. Some pot control. Just one well, I mean, queen ten doesn't think he's gonna win a hand. Does he think he can get a better hand to fold? Yeah, Vieira opting to go into check call mode. But Adams can still have a lot of hand here on this board. Three sixty out there. Ten of clubs. Very relevant card, Randy. Certainly have Jack 10. Certainly have sets, two pairs. Vieira with the one chip flick in. Queen 10. Adams trying to get the bluff through on the river. Vieira rega regaining rather stronghold over this table. Going up 15,000, 30,000 with a 30,000 big blind ante. Seeing some updates in the chat. A lot of love for Weasel, both on Twitch and YouTube. I believe he has claimed a bounty, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. All right, all right. Winning a package to this Triton series. Final table bubbling the 15K for a career best score of 50,000. Now finds himself out there in the mix. Two for two. Yeah. But does this count as a cash? Well, kind of. I would count it as a cash, yeah.
What would you call it? It's like... It's like points, you know? It's rewards. Because if you don't cash the tournament... No. It's like rake back. <laughs> rake back. You just call 20,000 points. <laughs> You've been using that Amex Platinum a little bit too much, Randy. You've been collecting them air miles, pal. You're worse than Ali. 200k for Jow. Three betting Queen Jack offsuit. It's actually attacking the guy with a ton of chips. Oh. It's actually dissuades Adams from opening too wide if he's going to get three bet a lot of times. For, for big amounts. Yeah, Vieira with this three bet. Again, distan distancing himself from Timothy Adams. They were tied for the chip lead just a few moments ago. Vieira now playing 2.9. Adams Hello. down to 1.9. So, a real difference at the top is, hello. Hello. <laughs> Look who we got here. Look for the fish. You like your own position on the fish? That's what you say. <laughs> Love to see it. Another part of the Malaysian contingent, a friend of mine, Victor Chong. Oh dear, is nice. <laughs> one of the APT CEOs. On the left of an APT regular, Mike Takayama. Yeah, his first try and stop here in Vietnam. 300k oh. stack, 10 blinds. Oh. Yeah. Am I supposed to put the cards? Somewhere. Which were? Which where, where is the action on just, there? Just here. It's the button. By the way, see the numbers yeah. creeping up yeah. over on the yeah. Triton yeah. Poker YouTube channel, Randy. Yeah. Currently hovering around 780 likes. About an hour left of coverage. Try and get that up to 1,000. If we can do, drop us a quick like. Been streaming for 11 hours straight today. Free high stakes poker content. We've got 13 days as Adams goes bounty hunting yet again. Two bounties so far. If he can find an ace, be claiming bounty number free three. Oh, yeah. really free roll? Yeah. Huh? Like 250. <laughs> 250, yes. Yeah. 100 is not bad. Yeah. Maybe, yeah? Hmm. Nine six six. Couple of clubs offering some running with a bounty? flushes. Um, and this Adams has a bounty. and well, just dead on the turn. Seven of hearts, not even a sweat for Masashi. Wow. Yeah, you're gonna see. You're gonna keep seeing these calls. You like bounty hunting. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But you know, Adams has got two. Bounties guaranteed at least 40k in rewards. So, just to give you guys at home some insights to some of the big name bust outs, Sam Grafton not going to be winning event number three. Out in 42nd place, Alex Kulev will not be going three, th three for three in the form of Cassius, Fedor Holtz, Michael Adamo, KT, all out. Some of the big names still in the mix. Patrick Antonius, Victor Malinowski, Dan Smith, Punat Punsri, Seidel, Ape Styles, mm -hmm. Kyan Mockery. Ben Heath. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm doing a disservice to anyone that I don't name. I mean, they're all <laughs> well, big names. Well, keep going then, huh? Yeah, we're going to take one down. He's got almost a 2x 
lead on second place. We don't have a clock anywhere. Above, above you. Oh. We do. Oh, we do. Yeah. Triton has everything. <laughs> that you are right. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> yeah. That you are right. Yeah. Triton has everything, Randy. That's us. Has mystery bounties. Jack ten from Masashi. He's out. King nine. Looks like the stacks behind him aren't very short. He lost most of the short guys from those bust outs. Raise. 920 to start. Adam's got king queen offsuit on the dealer button. Thinks about making a big play. On. Yeah, Timothy Adams, he plays his bounties very fast. He knows the value of half the prize pool. He's trying to bust players. And he knows if they just keep folding to him, he's going to chip up and maintain that stack that covers everyone. <laughs> What's DD? Munching on there. Is that Snickers? Some protein bar. Who do you knock out? What? Who do you knock out? Yeah. You you know his name? Nah. Who who do you win this from? No. You don't know his name? No. <laughs> Why? No, just wondering. Is it the Malaysian guy was here just now? Uh -oh. Raise, 60, Jow's active, ace 10. Solid, but Adam's got ace queen suited. Deep stacks though, 50 big blinds effective roughly. Don't know. Adam's gonna take the same approach against oh. a player who's got more chips in him. You see the difference in strategy based on who you're up against. And Laszlo as ace jack, and we've got we could have a pretty crazy pot coming up here. Jao, the original razor, could re iso ace ten. Don't start, Randy. It it's very reasonable, don't you think? I I do. What you're alluding to is a 3.9 million chip pot. I think it's very plausible. Well, we're about to find out because Boytash has jammed his remaining 23 bigs on the button and action is background to an under the gun player. Jao Vieira, the chip leader of the tournament with 40 left. And is Adams waiting to pounce off of 50? Should Vieira make a move here with the ace 10? I would think so. Yeah. But let's back. worry about Vieira's decision first. No, a while ago he's the sit better and then like one hand and then. I mean, if you're going to commit more, he's going to get away from it. Wow, very well disciplined. Snap from Adams behind and Laszlo Boytash in a rough shape here late in the evening. Day three of this Triton Super High Roller Series from Vietnam. Need some help from the deck. Gonna tie this 5% of the time, but for now, we're looking for some clubs, diamonds, or a jack. Ah, okay, 17 players. Ah, Adams seven five seven. cards yeah. away from his third bounty, by the way, and well, Ace ten. Vieira, <laughs> Vieira would have flopped top two, would you believe? King 
of diamonds on the turn. Boytash now looking for a queen. Ten would also chop it as would a five. Three of spades on the river. No dice as the headless teddy bear is going to hit the showers. Just look at Jal's face. <laughs> you were going to call him. I know. <laughs> I know you know. That's why you just shove and close your eyes. What could have been? Mr. Vieira. <laughs> At least 40k if he had made that play. I went. would be in his pocket. Uh, I don't know. There's I have 41, 20, and 29. I remember just said 250k bounty out there. Three 100ks. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. 250k. Okay. Come on, behave. Oh, we know that Timothy has cashed for at least 60,000 thus far, given that he's collected three scalps. A couple of bust outs on the outer tables. Eric Seidel, Ape Styles, Victor Kudinov, Punat Punsri, all out. Spring pocket saying Adam's having a blast. He is indeed. Jal's got his chance for a scalp. Are you going to be? It's the perfect spot. Small uh, blind's going to jam into 40 you. Minutes. Ace 40, X. 42 minutes. You've got Ace 10. Okay. They're telling him about that last one. Send it right back. Ace 10. Uh, Victor I'll Chong in trouble. 60. From Malaysia. Are you going to be hungry after? You, no. It's taking some time. I'm not too sure why. I fold. Fold. What did fold? What, what happened here? <laughs> what what happened? Did he just open fold the small blind with ace three offsuit? I think I'm calling. Hi. I think I will call. You wouldn't Henry. think about it? <laughs> 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 Maybe just Next knows. Last time I pulled the ace I would get two bounties and and like a, two another chips, so yeah, another two million chips. Yeah, that's, that's just fine. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say maybe just knows that Vieira is calling Danny too. Randy, I'm I'm lost to be honest. Huh. <laughs> Unlucky hand. It's weird because he's the shortest stack, so he needs to find a way to start building some chips. Does he cover anyone at the table, possibly? I don't know. Five, five players five. left. 27 paid, that by the way. That is a problem, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually closing in on the money side of the tournament. How far are we? Eight away. Eight away. It's still... High 50. Still some distance. I agree. I agree. But if you're ever going to make a tighter fold, the soft bubble, if you will, would make sense. Is there again? <laughs> hmm. I mean, I know Victor's got experience, so it's just surprising to me. Eight hundred, yeah. Uh, seven, uh, yes. Go 
only play 16, right? The two, one more level, right? Regardless of one more level after this, yes. Doesn't matter bubble, doesn't matter anything. I have not been informed of anything different. I think Poles. I think no. They just play. Doesn't matter Poles. regardless. Uh, of Ciao. He's been jamming. Depends on the stacks behind him. Don't know how many chips the big blind's got. Well, 800k is quite a big amount of chips to be open jamming into. Raise makes a lot of sense. Easy. What a grinder. I'm going to give you a free alpha, Randy. Go for it. Red Bull and pizza at 1am. Not a great idea. <laughs> kind of pizza, though. But, you know. You know what? It, it was mid. It was mid. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to write... A five star review, let me put it that way, but you know. It's the Italian in me. Jow's got pocket aces. Wow. Chip leader gonna be opening super wide as he has been. Because you would shovel on him pretty wide. I mean this guy. Just knowing he's opening a lot of parts to play with people. Chip leader. He's gonna get a defend. Check four clubs. Tom Moore saying Red Bull and pizza at 1am is what Friday nights on GG Poker are all about. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds, I forgot it's Friday. Lose track of time over here. Tavoris with the Robbie. Oh, the big. 25 behind going to this flop. Oh, well, what do you know, Randy? Top set. For Vieira, flush draw for Dvores. Maybe a flush draw that he'll opt to check raise given how wide the perceived range of Vieira is in this spot. Possible. But there is merit for Dvores to keeping pots small. As the stack is reasonable that he could still cover some of the players at his table so his tournament life has quite a bit of meaning at this table draw Forrest just check calling has quads daily quads you know <laughs> just standard things here 35 left overwhelming chip lead turning quad aces 265,000 in the middle I was like, wow, how do it's really hard to get the rest of the stack in if you're holding all of the key cards. That's a great point, Randy. He is going to check it back. Let Dvoris potentially get there, which fortunately for Dvoris, Queen of Spades rolling off on the river. Had a club rolled off, Randy. May have been showers for DD. Still some trouble here. Jack four clubs. To easily put another bet in here. You might expect Zhao to keep firing away with an ace because of the stack sizes, right? A made hand would bet the turn a lot to try to get that bounty by the river. So he might think Zhao Vera's hand is not, you know, unpaired or like a weak pair. I, I know what you mean. Try and fold out some king highs, maybe some deuces through sixes. I think. That's a disciplined check right there. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure how he sniffed it out or if he just wants to maintain his stack to kind of cover those opponents.
Which I was thinking that most likely hand my opponent has that can call peace is the 8x, 7x. Got size pretty small. You're blocking so much You're of blocking what? the calling range, right? <laughs> like all of the calling range. 70,000. Perfect size. Will he show it? Show it. Come on, Vieira. It's 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Oh. Mystery bounty. They're going to know soon. 35 left. Come on. Do it for the fans, Vieira. Running well and playing well is the most accomplished Portuguese player, João Vieira. Way out in front with 32 players left. Event number three to 20k mystery bounty here in Vietnam. And you know, Randy, I didn't even mention it because it completely went over my head. 166 entries in the 25k GG Super Millions Live Edition, event number one. Yep. Smashed the previous record that was set in Cyprus late last year of 132 entries. The very next day, the 15k beat the record, 172 runners in that one. Nacho Barbero taking that down earlier on today for 600,000. Just glanced up at the clock. You let me sleep on this. We've gone three for three this series. 179 runners. How much do you have, Nasa? You have so again, breaking you have the previous record, which was set just yesterday. Rough, roughly is OK. Yeah. You don't have to. Three, three. And this buy-in is bigger than the last event, too. Back to back to back. Back to back to back, pal. Cool. Cool. Yeah. What about you? Try to one seven from strength one nine to strength. Two, 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 over two so unfortunate four. about the producing team that they yeah. bring in. Maybe that is the only weak link in the Jump chain. Trip deuces. <laughs> Talk about a dry board. <laughs> That one going straight over producer James Dempsey's head as Adams Ambicier. slides it on over to Vieira. Slides the rope over to Vieira, who's going to nibble Randy. Deep stacks in this hand. Top two stacks, literally. Call, check, raise. Five seconds. I'm a slow play. Five off the money now, by the way. About 1.1. One. Not from me. Closing in on that mm. money bubble. Late. In the evening here as Vieira mulling over his options. Try and get this king high to showdown. Well as if about to say, as if trip deuces wasn't enough. I've started seeing things late in the evening here, Randy. I saw the two clubs. I saw the two clubs in Adam's hand and completely forgot that you need five clubs in order to make a flush. How do these people get these jobs? How do you? Hey, listen. All right. How dare you? Adams firing out a big shell on the river. And Vieira, no messing around. Does he say, can we see the Lord leaderboard, please? You can indeed. If you check out the pinned comment by the moderators at the top of the chat box, download the Triton Poker Plus app. Not only can you see the leaderboard for this event, but 
during the day you can get involved and sweat along with your favorite players and talking of sweating along randy sweat along in the triton qualifiers that had several qualifiers over 10 i believe into the 25k you also get a hundred dollars in rewards or a hundred percent up to 600 matched deposit over on gg poker as well as the continuous triton poker daily free rolls that you get to play alongside this stream victor chong shortest stack at this feature table just six big blinds as we head into the last level of play nice. Nice. Twenty thousand, forty thousand with a forty thousand big table. blind ante. I, I know. I, didn't, I saw you. Does he saying love you, cast and mods? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I saw. We I feel you. very <laughs> fondly. So that's why I was like. About you guys like, at I home. Saw you, and then you won the tournament. I'm like. Not all of you, but. You. Majority. Because like, I'm sure you were annoyed. Yeah. Sounds like Webster joining the table. The Webster the limb. No, the winner of event number one. The two-time Triton champion, Webster Lim. Yeah. You know he's good. Nine six suited. Actually lays it down from the big line. And it's a byproduct of we're being close to the money as well as maintaining that million chip stack so that he can collect some bounties. It was just like my first hand, I think. It was the first hit, yeah, yeah. The, guy, the guy had like not that bad a hand, but he was playing like super loose. Mm. But like not three bidding, just calling. I mean, he squeezed ace jack actually, so that's a lie. But yeah. Stretch Russell saying big shout out to the commentary yeah. team. Long old days for you guys, and you're all smashing it. Very entertaining and insightful. Great all round team this tour. So, do appreciate the kind words, Stretch, and appreciate you talking so kindly about myself and Randy. I do apologize for those of you that have had to listen to R. Lee. Fortunately, he's, uh, well, He's in bed right now. I do chest, obviously, Ali Najad. Really, really is the, the A-team of poker commentary. Webster Lim, decision here. Six big jam from Chong under the gun. The second you cover both players, it's an instant. Go for against six blinds. Not detrimental to your stack. Unless Webster's got some something I'm not thinking about. Oh, time bank going in. Hey, he's going to mull this one over. Randy, take his time. A few options available. Does he want a flat? Or does he just want to ISO? The sham and get it in against Chong. Wow, he's laying down two sixes. That's a big lay down. Well, did not expect that. 20k. <laughs> did not average. expect 30. that one, Randy. 33 7, average bounty. 33 7. Average bounty is 33 7. You heard it from Victor Chong himself. Oh. Did the <laughs> math for us. Thank you. That's why they're out there and we're in here, Randy, is because they're good at math, <laughs> and you and I... We need someone to tell us. ...are good at talking nonsense for hours on end and occasionally saying something somewhat insightful. Well, that's just by pure mathematics that we get something right occasionally. Jack-10 suited for Tommy Kim. Do apologize, Jane Winston saying is... Sorry, I missed something. Is Ali okay? He he is okay. Maybe not in the head, but <laughs> I can promise you he's he's fine. Fine. 
It's being Lately. called in to shoot some content tomorrow morning. So he's getting an early night. Also wants to be refreshed and energized for you guys. Tomorrow's obviously tomorrow. We're going to be bringing you back coverage 2 p.m. local time all the way down to a winner in this one. And there'll be obviously the announcements of the bounties as well at the end of the tournament. If That's what I've heard. That's yes. what Randy's heard. That's going to be a lot of fun. That is, that's going to be a ton of fun to sweat that one. The best hand. He's out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You guys, honestly, I just love it. One day, many years from now, when we're all living in a virtual reality world, instead of coming to these live events, you know, we're just going to log in from the comforts of our home randy with a vr headset and the viewers at home instead of opening up twitch and youtube they too also log in and we're going to finally get to see the faces or at least the avatars of some of these people that are watching that are currently behind twitch handles and youtube handles i'm just going to have seven thousand lunatics all watching high stakes poker can't wait on your bike saying happy birthday, Henry. Thank you, mate. At least someone remember Chong may be in trouble here, Randy. Six big blinds knows that Adams is going to be opening. Not wider than usual from the hijack. Another discipline laydown from that's Chong. A, that's, a, that's a very big laydown, especially against a guy who's an opening 9-7 offsuit and cut off. 32 left, 27 places paid. Hey. Those of you just joining us is the final level, event number three to 20K. Mystery bounty, top bounty of 250,000. And there are 300k bounties, 550,000 bounties, 11 30k bounties, and 33 min bounties of 20,000. Kim picks up King Do suited. He's gonna lay it down. People are really tightened their big blind defending range as we approach the money. Well, we're approaching the money. We're also approaching the end of the day as well, Randy. I know. You have far more experience than myself when it comes to, I don't know whether I'd necessarily call it a bubble, but something that maybe comes into effect. People start mentally checking out just 25 minutes left on the clock. Yeah, it's always annoying to bail out right at the very end. But you know, there's just a lot of factors, right? If you're not the shortest stack, your tournament life has value in covering that shortest stack. Adams feels his frequency has been a bit high, lays it down. Victor's got ace-10. 
in the cutoff, six blinds. You would think this is a slam dunk jam. It's made some tighter folds. Yeah, and feels like he's not deep enough to just pass up on a spot like this as he does announce himself, Randy. 5-3 into the mark, and wow. Masashi covers him, but lets it go. Yeah. It's the 50% stack increase for Victor. That's huge. In a spot where feels like he should never get that through. Yeah, that's amazing. Really good for him. Six fifty five? Six fifty five, yeah. Crowned two time champion Webster Lim. Pop it up from plus one, King Nine of Clubs. One of Philippines' finest, six club of clubs, thinking about it. Truly is one of Philipp the Philippines' finest, Randy. Tank with six five of clubs, interesting. Yeah, um, is this maybe a byproduct of two six? Well, I was about to allude to a bit of stalling, wanting to get to the end of the day, but how about a three bet to two hundred and sixty thousand from Mike Takayama? That's how they play in the Philippines, pal. I've he heard rumors. Well, that's probably gonna get divorced to lay down Ace Ten. Looks strong. Nicely executed with six five of clubs, just recognizing the situation, how people are reacting and playing right now. Just stole that one. Right in front of our eyes. Well executed three bet there. From Mike. Timothy Adams, I think a very healthy 2.8 million chip stack. Good for 70 big blinds. That chip count brought to you by none other than Poker Steak. So again, don't forget you can head on over to Poker Steak and buy a small piece, sweat along the stream. Some of your favorite poker players here in Vietnam selling action over there. Another USP of poker stake that I was unaware of is that you can actually buy action from players that you don't like. <laughs> so I buy action of Henry. Wow. And then Henry he's turning into Ali Najad. This one he's been hanging out. Well, I mean, I, I would buy Ali's action too. <laughs> Stack, big stack. They got so much stack to play for where they don't have to worry about getting put to the test for all their chips. Post flop. Play as normal. Top pair, monotone. See what he comes with. 55. 55. 55k. Small bet, monotone. 85? I said 55, but 85 it is. Just north of one third from Vieira. 
this just to just a one and done here, Randy. Typically, monotone boards, you do get a lot of folds. But once you get called, feels like your opponent's got a decent piece to continue. Four flush. Oh, is this a potential opportunity for Naza to take this away from Timo? Yeah, he's thinking about what hands he would bet to turn for value. Of course, Ace of Hearts. What about those medium hearts? Would he bet those hands for value? For you to bet the turns of bluff, you need to be betting these medium hearts as well. Seven's got showdown value. It does. It does. Now beating some of... A6, A3, right. King6 suited. Yeah, these types of hands. See what Adams comes with. The flopping top pair. A pair of eights is still got good showdown value. Notice four flush, so checking makes sense. It's going to check through Randy and Adams... Picking up a nice one, and more importantly, if I'm not mistaken, tying the chip lead mm -hmm. after winning this 390,000 chip pot. So now tied at the top of the counts with Vieira. A couple of bust outs from the outer tables, just for you viewers that aren't sweating along on the Triton Poker Plus app. Anna Marquez, David Peters, Alex Podokovs. Brian Kim all out, just shy of the money. 31 players remain, 27 places paid. It is Timothy Adams and Jao Vieira out in front. See a late surge of Brazilian Pedro Garagnani. Currently sat in third, Ben Heath. Moving up the ranks as well, late in the evening, sat in fourth. Keep you guys updated. 